Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Yes, after last week's absence, I'm finally back. That was unexpected and I apologize for that, but you know, every once in a while, life happens. How are you guys doing today? Ah, over here where I am, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yep. And we have a lot to do on the stream today. Ah, AZBZ is here, and Kionis is here, Patty's here. Yeah, really nice to see you guys already filling the chat slowly but steadily. Yep, Gabriel is here as well, and we have Carolis. Hello, everybody. Ah, <laughs> oh, I can see my memorial. Yes, that is most definitely Elfie Wolf's memorial right here. We lost one dupe in the last episode. But Elfie, of course, got her spot back on our roster. So that is oh, very, very nice. We have Croc here. Very nice, Croc. Welcome. And we have Waka here as well. Finally on my weekend off. Awesome. Hey, that's great. Love to hear it. Glad you can join us. Uh, time to play Oni, finally. Uh, going to play with your voice in the background. Hell yeah. Uh, there were things, I would assume. And... What do we have here? Kionis says, graduated with BSEE in two weeks. That is amazing, Kionis. Go for it. Ah, love to hear that kind of thing. FIFO says, good luck. We will need it today. That is definitely going to be uh, an interesting one. Um, something that I have never tried in an actual game. I made tutorials about it, but I have never actually done it. So we will take my Niobium Tamer if you have uh, watched that video. And we will try to implement something very similar for this minor volcano right here. I did look at my own stream, at my bot, better to say, and I did notice we have something over here. And that thing over here, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Probably nothing important. It's an infectious polluted oxygen vent. So it is just in a very close proximity to our minor volcano and the rest of our base is over here on the right. So we are a little bit restricted in space here. But that is okay. I think I may have a solution for it. And we will see if that works out. Life. Hey, this is my second time on your life. It happens very early in the morning here. Very early in the morning. Where are you located? Is that like um, Australia, maybe? Um, that could be. It's good. I'm about to end cold crushing my meat. Ooh. I hope to bottle it at the start of next week. Hey, a good meat never ever hurts. That is for sure. Before we do anything else here, let's uh, mop all this stuff here up though, because I did notice we have a tiny little bit of brine in here. Not that it matters, but might as well uh, keep that from happening while we are at it. We are also once again lowered with our water supply here just a little bit, so we will have to dig up a little bit of ice. Thankfully, we have plenty of that stuff laying around. And then, of course, over here on Smelina, which is a uh, very, very fitting name, as a matter of fact. Uh, we still have this Volcano Tamer here that we have to finish eventually. It's not really that high on my priority list, but I am trying to get this here done today at some point. So, during today's stream, I mean. So, oh, you're in the Philippines. Holy cow. You may be the first viewer from the Philippines. At least the first viewer that says hello in chat. <laughs> um... Over here, we are going to do the absolute bare minimum. We are trying to keep those dupes here alive and keep them somewhat happy. And then we more or less going to leave them alone. We have a tiny little bit of water right here, which is very good. But other than that, uh, we are probably just going to feed some seeds over here. So to have some food, we are down to 7,000 kilocalories. So we are running low. But other than that, I am kind of going, uh, going to ignore this side right here. Because I do want to focus on this minor volcano right here. Uh, if it's a minor or major, shouldn't matter for this build here in any way, shape, or form. So that's a very good thing. But yeah, we will see how it goes. It may be a complete failure and we may end up uh, just uh, blocking off this volcano right here and calling it a day. We will see how it goes. There is no telling until we try it. At least give him an actual bathroom. Did we never even give him a bathroom? Well. I mean... It counts, right? It's functional. <laughs> uh, let's see. First of all, on Cold Deal, we need to find our... Um, Convail Loader. Here it is. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, what are we going to do here? We need some seeds that we bring over there. What do we have here? In agriculture? No. We need a seed, please. Uh, thank you. And we're going to go with the cheapest stuff that we have. Let's see. Mealwood seeds. Let's plop a few in here. Let's bring them over there. They can live off a of mealwood for right now. So they have at least something. We have plenty of dirt over there, so that is going to be helpful for sure. Uh, taming for what? Power, rocks, petroleum boiler. We are not going to build a petroleum builder, uh, boiler. It's going to be for rocks as well as power. That is the idea. Uh, petroleum boiler. Maybe we will try to do something with this one right here. Later on here we have more space available. There's nothing really in the way that will stop us from putting a big old build in here. But over here it's more like... Uh, how can I save as much space as possible and still get power and rocks out of this thing? So we will see. I'm quite curious, apart from what you're going to do here, do you have other builds for taming volcanoes for igneous rocks? I do have a couple up my sleeve, uh, for sure. This one here is just one that I have never tried. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting for sure. But first of all, Let's get just started here, I would say. We need a bunch of space right here. Let's dig over here, uh, four high all the way through to right there. Eventually, it should have a box around it, of course, so that's going to happen. But let's get digging first. Let's make us a little bit of space here, and then we will go from there. One step after the next, I would say. Also, are we getting some mealwood seeds in here? We don't need a hell of a lot. That should be more than enough that we have right now. All right, very good. Just need to get them over there. And then on Smelina, we are going to make our life once again very, very simple in, uh, not oxygen, in food, of course, we need our farm tile. And we're just going to plop some farm tiles along here. And I'm not even going to count them. Better too much than not enough. Doesn't really matter too much. And we're going to plop all this here full with mealwood seeds. Simple. Just as simple as that. Should work. No problems at all. And over here... We also have plenty of food going around with our three farms, where this farm here is slowly but steadily dying out. Those hatches here are dying. We are not feeding them anymore. We don't need them anymore. And then eventually, we're just going to go only with those stone hatches right here. But again, one thing after the next, we do need to turn up our priority here. Just a notch sure these dupes here will never get it done. So we will see. Are you going to do the tamer with the pitcher pump, like the Niobium one, or what else? Not with the pitcher pump. Uh, we are going to try to put in a normal pump without touching the lava. That is going to be the general idea, and we are going to pump out the lava. And we are going to feed it into a steam room. And in the steam room, we are trying to condense it into wonderful debris and get it out of here. Since this is just a minor volcano... Shouldn't be a problem at all. And we should actually be pumping out more than we are putting in here. We don't have the numbers yet. Uh, we have to analyze it first. But shouldn't be that big of a deal. I've never learned to tame temperature in this game. I hate the mechanic with a passion because it ruins the game for me. Uh, you mean temperature in general or do you mean volcanoes? Because taming temperature all by itself is really simple in this game. Uh, all you need is a steam box, kind of like right here. You have a thermal aqua tuner in it. You have a steam turbine or two above it, depending on what you're trying to build. And then you're just cooling down your water. In this case here, it's polluted water to whatever temperature you want with the help of a liquid pipe thermal sensor. And then feeding it to whatever place you want to cool down. It could literally be the entire base, uh, kind of like we are doing right here. Um, we are actually heating our base because it is bloody cold in here. Slowly but steadily we are getting there, but we are just doing the exact same thing, just in reverse. We are heating instead of cooling. I used a Niobium-style tamer for major volcanoes. Well, then I, we, may have a good, uh, we may have a good chance to get this here actually done. Because like I said, I built it um, in a sandbox mode several times. And I have never actually used, because usually Niobium you don't have to tame. Um, you don't need a bunch of Niobium, thanks to um, going back and forth with the tungsten. So there's really no point in doing so. I just wanted to show it off that it's possible. But I have never actually used it for a normal volcano. So we will see. Okay, and let's go back to Smelina. You guys are building stuff over here. That would be nice. Mealwood seed can plant it because we have a bloody ladder in the way. More ladders right here. Let's get rid of those as well. And then we can plant our mealwood seeds. 
Oh, we need three high, don't we? Ah, keep forgetting about that. One higher, please. Thank you. Plop it in here. Rip these here out. And then while you're at it, rip all of these lettuce here out as well. We won't need them anymore. And now we can also plant our mealwood. Now that we have a three high space right there. Very, very simple. I mean, using the steam turbines, I never seem to get it set up without cheating in build mode. Well, maybe today's stream will be able to help you out then, because we are going to build exactly that. Um, potentially even twice, we will need it once down here to tame this gold volcano. Uh, which again, I'm going to try to put a little bit on the back burner because it's not too important. Um, and we will also need it without actually having the volcano in it up here uh, for our minor volcano. So we will have steam turbines probably somewhere in this general area right here. Exactly the measurements, we got to come up with those as we go. Um, but yeah, they will end up somewhere right around there. Let's put it on a seven priority over here, this farm tile, and plop a few in. Just so slowly but steadily, we can get this here going. All right, let's get this here built. And in the meantime, we will take a look over here. So we will go ahead and we will plop in some insulated tiles made out of preferably a down on the bottom obsidian. Uh, the reason for obsidian is that the melting point is 2729 degrees Celsius. Yes, those are insulated tiles, but even insulated tiles can and will slowly but steadily take on heat. And the heat of the magma right here is 1726 degrees. So if we now go into our insulated tiles and make it out of igneous rock, we will exceed that temperature. Will that likely ever happen? Probably not, unless you play thousands and thousands of cycles. But, you know, it is good practice, so we might as well do it right, especially since we have plenty of obsidian laying around. So everything that is touched by the magma, we will make out of obsidian, uh, out of obsidian right here. But, first of all, we will get started on the top. Um, probably just going to come straight down here. I, I don't see a reason why we couldn't do that. Let's come over here. Um... What is a good measurement here? Maybe around 10 high, something like this, maybe. That should get the job done. And what are we going to do in this length right here? Um, let me think about it for just a second. Let's pause it real quick and put a wall in here. Again, I need to change the wall right here to a different material later. Um, but yes, we will need to see uh, exactly how we are going to build this here, probably. Um right around here on the bottom we need one tile then we leave this tile here open and then we're going to come up something like this here that gives us a space in here of three by three tiles this is maybe a little bit too low yeah we got to come one lower we need one extra tile so let's rip this back out put this here back in and that gives us a four by three space yeah that's much more reasonable that's something we're going to go with here this here is now a 10 long, and from this tile right here, we need to come 9 over, which is not right here, but right there. Okay, let's see. Yes, this here should be the box that we need. So what is the reasoning for me doing this here? And sorry, I couldn't explain it while doing. I <laughs> can't think and talk about what I'm thinking at the same time. But what do we need here? So this here is basically going to be a two wide long, what is called in the community, a magma blade. So right here, basically, we are reducing the amount of uh, lava that can come in here or magma, whatever you want to call it. And right over here, we should end up with about, um, I think it's uh, after two tiles. Is it 800 kilograms? I believe we will see when it when it erupts. Um, but it just gives us a little bit of safety to have two of them. Theoretically, you can do it with only one tile, but two of them just is a little bit safer in my opinion. So all of this here will have to be dug out. Of course, we need to leave a little bit open here for the dupes. And once again, down here on the bottom, everything that we have here, I'm going to replace now with obsidian. All of this here will touch magma. There's no question about it. This one here as well. Once again, obsidian. All of this here can potentially touch it, so we are going to replace it as well. And over here on the left side, probably all the way to roughly up here, once again obsidian. Over here, that will never touch it, 
this here will potentially touch it, but that should be it. So everything else can be made out of igneous rock and these here we make out of obsidian down here on the bottom. All right, dupes, sounds like you have a hell of a lot to do once again. To reach all of this stuff, we are going to put ladders in here. And I don't know yet if you have time to get the ladders out. It depends on uh, the eruption cycle of this thing here. Um, but for right now, I'm going to build the ladders out of obsidian. The reason is I can leave them in here without having to worry that they will melt at some point down the line. So make them out of obsidian if you want to build them inside a lava and you will never have a problem. All right. Very, very good. Uh, should be sufficient for right now. Croc says, I like to place double insulated tiles when magma touches it. Definitely another very good call right there. Um, because the heat transfer from the insulated tile, let's say this insulated tile right here reaches 1500 degrees Celsius. There will be a slight heat transfer to the other side. It's uh, almost negligible, but it can theoretically happen. So it's definitely a good idea to double wall it if you have the space available. We will see at the end what we exactly end up with. I mean, I'm building this thing here freehand, so uh, not entirely sure what it's going to look like and what we have to do. There's a bunch of heavy wet and conductive wires down here. We will have to relocate all this stuff. There's no question about it. Just don't know exactly where yet. Uh, looks like Sin over here is trying to commit suicide once again. Can you please get over here back again? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, you're now stuck because you can't get out <laughs> because of this tile right here. Uh, that is a problem. Uh, how are we going to fix this? Probably by digging through here and already putting in a couple of ladders not out of obsidian anymore we don't need it and then probably just tell the dupes to not build those two tiles for right now there we go that should hopefully help them to get back out of there um iron says i have my own design for taming volcanoes i don't know if it's good or not because a part of it has magma coming in contact with steam but i haven't had any problems with it for 100 cycles I mean, who exactly desire or decides if something's good or bad, right? Um, I would say if it works, it's good. It's that simple, right? I mean, could you potentially build something that is more efficient? Maybe. But if it works for you, I mean, who am I to tell you that your build is not good? Uh, played 1050 hours, then gave up because heat deaths kept killing my colonies around cycles 300 to 500. Yeah, that is probably all down to uh, proper heat management. We will see that happening over here on Smelina probably as well. We have a hot planet here. Uh, so a very hot planet even. We have a bunch of very, very hot zones everywhere here with 36 degrees plus throughout the entire base up here. A bunch of volcanoes all around. So eventually we will most likely have to do something about that as well. But for right now, it's not that big a deal, honestly. Um, yeah, I think magma can touch steam if you're able to dissipate the heat quickly. Yeah, it's all a question of usually mass. The more mass you have, the better it is, right? Oh, the steam cooled my magma blade too low that it transformed into debris, but it was the last time since I increased the steam pressure. Yeah, those are certainly issues that you can have. All right, dupes. Uh, maybe we should, if we want to get this here done probably go ahead and set all of our builds to the highest priority we are not building anything else in our home base right now when we look around there is really not a hell of a lot going on currently everything is going its normal course the only project we are working on is this here so setting everything over here to a number nine priority is certainly not an issue at all just to make sure that they are not doing any uh yeah random tasks like picking up that stuff down here on the bottom you only do this if you are idle that is the general idea. Um, maybe we should keep on digging a little bit down here. Maybe that is not the worst idea, as a matter of fact. How about we let the dupes come through here all the way, just to fill this area here with oil, so we can touch this solid crude oil right here, and slowly but steadily melt it up. But that's about it. Ojin is here, greeting Beardier, greeting back to you as well. Ojin, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining. Croc says, John started on a frozen asteroid. You have a few hundred cycles more. Yes. 
If you start on a frozen planet, it looks kind of like this here. And yeah, your problem is that everything freezes to this and uh, not heats to this. So your problem is just in the other direction, basically. And Gremlin is here as well. Hey, Gremlin. Thanks for joining. Hope you're doing all right. And Jay is here, of course. <laughs> Lost track of the start time. Yeah, usually I start at 3.30. Today I started a little bit earlier, I figured. So it's not a problem. If I change my start time, I would say it's my fault and not yours. And Ojin with a $2 donation or better to say super chat as we call it here on YouTube. Thank you so much for the support, Ojin. Thank you very, very much. All right, dupes. Uh, while we are at it, how about you dig out this here as well so we can come in from two sides and we can get this here on the road a little bit quicker. We need to just be very careful that we don't have a stuck dupe that we cannot get out. It's always the same um, with the dupes, as we all know. And they are pretty uh, suicidal. So yeah, we got to do something about that. Okay, they're super excited to see your alternative volcano taming technique. Uh, technique, And I think I can see what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you are versed in oxygen not included or have watched uh, most of my tutorials, you can probably tell what the general idea is. Like I said before, I have never actually tried it in a live game, so it may be a complete failure, and we will see how it goes. Croc says it's better for me if you start the stream earlier. <laughs> well, you know, somebody's loss is somebody else's gain, how that usually is in life. Septimus. Life? What? I swear you're never live when I'm on the net. Well, today's the exception to the rule. Alright, let's take a look down here. What do we have going on? We need to relocate all this stuff. We need a bunch of space down here. And how much that is, I don't know yet. So we are trying to compress this here as much as humanly possible. Uh, the conductive wire here may not be a problem. We will see if it is a problem later. But for right now, this heavy watt wire right here has to be uh, relocated. We don't have a choice. So we're going to deconstruct the middle piece. We are going to put a bridge in and we're going to run our wiring like this here to get this area here clear. And yes, we also have a water line coming through here that also has to come. Yeah, where are we going to put this thing as far down as we can? Let's give us the best possible or the most possible space that we can have here. And then we will see what we actually end up with. Have you played Captain of Industry? I think I have um, at least heard of it. it. It rings a bell. If so, it has been a while ago. I can take a quick look at my Steam library if it's in there. Hold on one second. Captain of Industry. I do have Captain of Industry and I have a whooping 19 minutes played. So <laughs> uh, I would say no. And Ojin is celebrating that he's a member for one month, a level 2 engineer. 56 viewing, but only 10 likes. Ojin is 100% correct. Guys, come on, leave me a like. It costs nothing, and it does help the stream out greatly. Thank you for reminding the viewers, and of course myself as well, Ojin. Highly, highly appreciate it. If I make them wear Atmos suits 24-7, how many times can they pee in it before it becomes a problem? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is there a maximum? Does it ever uh, run out or, or overflow, I guess you could say? I don't know. I don't have an answer. Are you stuck here? No, you're not stuck here. So I'm just standing around here and complaining about low oxygen. What the hell? Yeah, FIFA. FIFO. I do not have an answer. I have not tested that, but uh, we can certainly give that a shot in, in some way, shape or form eventually and see uh, if there is a maximum or not. It's not necessary to deconstruct it. Why you can snip it once the bridge is built and then build the heavy watt wire right over it. Yeah, you're right. That would have been a better mouse trap or an easier way better to say. I keep forgetting that that's an option, not going to lie about it. 
not gonna lie about it in the slightest. But this year, we are all going to rip out for sure. And if six, we are going to rip it out as soon as all this year is taken care of. Um, maybe you go ahead and at least get the top here done, please. So we can uh, select the bottom here as well. They cannot leave. Oh, they cannot leave. You're correct. I forgot a piece of ladder. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. Good call. AZ, very, very good call. Come on, guys. Somebody bring me something. What do we have laying around in here? That's igneous rock. Why is the ladder built not out of igneous rock? I don't know. Let's see. Get rid of it. Build it again. This time out of igneous rock here, here, and there. And you can free yourself. Here we will need it momentarily. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff right here. So There we go. Now they should be able to escape whenever they want to. All right. Uh, Captain of Industry is a good game. Pretty sure they just got an update for maps before there was only a few maps. I'll give it a shot. Like I said, I already own it. So I should certainly uh, be able to just press the install button and give it a shot and see what happens. But yeah. Any more issues over here? We are down to 5,000. The body temperature is a, a little bit on the cold side. Oh, that's because the seeds were so cold, isn't it? Yeah. That's a problem that will solve itself, though. Uh, we do have a bunch of sedimentary rock and dirt around here. If I would have dug everything out all the way to the abyssalite, it may be a problem. Most of it is abyssalite, but we should be okay in the long run. Uh, yeah, that should sort itself out here in no time. All right, let's copy the settings once again. Let's fill up the rest and let's get it done. Most of them are working. Well, up here, we are just on the border. Is there anything else we could really quickly do about it? The problem is that everything that I ship over from Cold Yell is, well, very cold. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So that is going to be a slight issue. And it should be okay. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be. Worst case scenario, we can always, at least to jumpstart it a little bit, bring a tiny little bit of food from Cold Yell over to Smelina right here. So the dupes are not co completely dying. But yeah, other than that. I'm not too concerned about it. And speaking of the devils, we have even some omelets right here. I'm going to take those without even looking at the rest. Just so we get another 8,000 kilocalories in here and call it a day. It's going to be very simple. Uh, do we have any place that is better for this ration box right here? Yeah, we do. How about right here? Let's build this ration box down here on the bottom. Yes, the dupes have to go a little bit further, but it is cold enough to be a deep freezer. So our omelets, for example, should not die. So that should be totally fine. And while we're at it, let's take this wire right here, pull it through the floor and hook it up right here to the party line phone so the dupes can use it for a, a little bit of a morale boost. Other than that, I think we are fine over here. Let's keep on going right here where we are needed. So uh, let me think about this here for a second. We need to come with our magma right here. Our pump is going to sit right here. So let's take care of the plumbing real quick so I know where to build the rest. The liquid pump right here should never take really much heat on other than the heat that it generates. Still though, for safety reasons, I am going to build it out of steel. And just in case you are not familiar with the technique that I'm about to use here. Uh, the liquid pump, you can see this uh, these uh, five green tiles that are around it, one in the middle and then one in each direction, left, right, top and bottom. That is the actual area that the pump can take liquid from. The only place where there has to be liquid is the one on the right side. I cannot put my mouse on it because, uh, yeah, that's not how it works. So if I have a tiny little bit of liquid right here in this area, it will take out from here whatever it is. And that is precisely what we are going to do. We are going to have the magma down here in this tile right there. And we are going to drip in a minuscule amount, uh, amount of either crude oil or petroleum, something along those lines to make the pump turn on. When the pump turns on, it will suck up these few grams of, let's say, petroleum. And then it will also take out 10 kilograms worth of magma from here with every single pump. That is what our pump here is going to do. And then at some point, we are going to feed it 
somewhere out here, probably down there. And then we are feed it, uh, We are going to feed it with a radiant liquid pipe uh, through some kind of uh, steam room that is going to be down here in this area um, to cool it down. We just need to make sure that we are below one kilogram per um, per tile inside of our uh, liquid pipes. I'm losing my words here. Inside of our liquid pipes, we need to have uh, less than one kilogram. Otherwise, it will break. Uh, that's the important part, but we will go through all of that. The most important thing right now here is this liquid pump, and the liquid pump needs to have access to this tile and access to this tile right here. It makes a hell of a lot more sense once you see it, I promise. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our pump right here, what else do we need? In plumbing, we will need a liquid vent. The liquid vent can just live uh, literally right above it, something like this. And for this here... Our insulated liquid pipes right here, we are going to do the exact same thing. We are going to build them out of obsidian, at least the ones that will have magma in it. Once again, it comes down to the melting point. We need to make sure that our um, liquid pipes cannot overheat. So we need to make sure that that works the way it should. Okay, so with this thing right here, we are going to come probably just out here. And then with one built out of igneous rock, we are going to come through here. Out of here, we need, we could build a mechanical filter or whatever, but I'm just going to make my life very easy and I'm going to build a normal liquid filter. You know, it, it is what it is. It'll do just fine. Um, we need a, a liquid valve. The liquid valve is going to live right here. And then again, an insulated pipe. The insulated pipe goes through here into there and then out of obsidian, we're going to come here and there. So this here is what the entire setup is going to look like. That is the workhorse right here. So what are we doing? We are sucking up the petroleum from here and the magma from here, both going through this pipe right here into the liquid filter. The liquid filter separates it. The petroleum is going to come back down into the liquid valve and then back out of this liquid vent. While our magma is going to travel down here and then we are going to do, well, something else with it. So let's get this here built. We will need one more piece in here, though. Um, do we even have that yet? Uh, yes, the conduction panel. I don't know if you guys use that a lot. Uh, I sure... Uh, I, 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 for one, know I don't. But uh, today is one of those days we are going to try it out. Because it has a special ability. The special ability is that it can cool down stuff, or heat it up for that matter, I suppose. It can exchange heat in a vacuum. That's what it comes down to. And we are going to plop it... Point A made out of steel and point B right here. We will need insulated liquid pipes once again made out of obsidian coming through here and then made out of igneous rock coming probably straight down here. Something along those lines. How exactly we connect these I don't know yet but we will get there in time. Oh, and I'm just seeing Sin is here. Of course, boom, spicy entrance, Sin with a $2 super chat. Sin, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. And of course, thank you very, very much for your $2 super chat. Valve will not be in vacuum. Uh, this liquid valve right here? No, this uh, valve right here will not be in vacuum. There's no reason for it. Uh, because we are, in fact, going to cool down our petroleum that is going to be in this tile right here with this um, uh, conduction panel right here, which we will then also use to cool down our pump. So, yeah, we do not need uh, to have this liquid valve here in vacuum. It should be totally fine the way it is. How are you doing, you crazy German engineer? You were focused. It's all good. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yes, I had to think about what the hell I'm doing here. I said I have never built this here in an actual game, at least not in this way, so... It's staying spicy. We will, we will see how it goes. Uh, I was also talking about our water reservoir, though. Our water reservoir is getting a, a little bit onto the low side, so... How about we take this ladder, and this ladder here, we're just gonna come all the way to... Yeah, somewhere right here. And we're just gonna steal some of this ice here. That's totally fine. We can dig it up. It's not like that we need it that badly. We still have plenty in here. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but the tank is also really big. So these here alone are about 42 tons. It's not like that we are um, almost on the brink of dying or anything. Uh, 
<sighs> okay. All this here is built. In F2, we will, of course, also need some wiring. And once again, for any mishaps of any kind, I will build all of it that is inside of this chamber right here out of steel. Is that necessary if it works? No, it is not. But again, we're better safe than sorry. If we can avoid us some headaches down the line, then uh, we will try our best to do precisely that, I would say. So at the bare minimum to right here, it needs to be out of steel. And then right here, we are probably just going to connect it and run it down here. Something like that should be totally fine. Not entirely sure where we're going to plug this in yet, but we will find a place for it somewhere, I'm sure. All right, we're going to keep on digging. This stuff here can go. Let's plop in a few more ladders right here so the dupes can get around. Uh, right over here, we're going to dig all the way over. Right over here, we're going to dig all the way down. There's a little bit of chlorine gas right here. I'm not worried about it. Let's just let it out and call it a day. Uh, but this seems to require no space, uh, space age material. It's just steel, obsidian, and I'm guessing ceramic. It doesn't even need ceramic necessarily, even though ceramic would be a viable option. Of course, you just need a kiln right here with clay and coal, which we both have plenty of. We could build us as much ceramic as we want, but it's really not necessary. It really isn't. Especially since this here is a minor volcano, um, we get the average output here soon once we actually analyze it. So um, we don't exactly know, but in my experience, we will pump out more with this pump than this uh, volcano here will erupt. Therefore, there will be some dry spells where this system here is just going to turn itself off. Um, shouldn't be a problem, but no, no space age materials are required. Should have mentioned that. It's probably pretty important for this build because as soon as you get steel, you should be able to build this. If it works, that is, right? <laughs> All right, turn the speed up a little bit. And while we are at it, now of course, I did spend some time in the sandbox again. So uh, the blueprints are already unlocked. I would say, let's take a look at the first one. Did we get something good today? Of course, a lavender Atmo boots. Soothing space booties for tired feet. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily my color, but I'm sure somebody will be happy about it. We will need to extend this ladder right here. Probably have to rip a bunch of this stuff here on the outside, at least back out later. Because once again, I do not know yet exactly what it's going to look like. We have to take some measurements. I just want to get rid of most of this rock right here. Because, yeah. Don't forget to set the filter up. Yes, that's highly important. We want to set it to... Well, I don't know yet what I'm going to put in here. Probably petroleum. Chances are high it's going to be petroleum. So, yeah. going to set that up to petroleum to be safe. I wish you could analyze a vent geyser volcano without encapping them, but I get why it doesn't work without mods. Yeah, it, it does kind of make sense, right? Um, you need to see what it's doing so you can analyze it. If it's doing nothing, not really much to analyze. So from a logical standpoint, at least, it does make somewhat sense. <laughs> if it works, if I was a religious boy, I would start praying. <laughs> Uh, you noob should, for sure. Better than gloves, I guess? Yes, AZ. 100% better than gloves. Check out Smelina again. Yeah, like I said, it's going to solve itself here over time. Uh, we put 400 mealwood seeds over here. Uh, maybe I should have checked that a little bit earlier. I guess it's not that big a deal. Hello, I'm making uh, your video tutorial about, about just this thing. It is okay if I put a conveyor bridge behind the auto sweeper. People say uh, sometimes the metal is stuck in that point and the bridge fix it. Are you talking about the volcano tamer? Uh, you talking about uh, uh, this bad boy right here? I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. You can't put a bridge in here. Um, people say sometimes the metal is stuck in that point. What they are probably talking about is the micro packet. So what can happen is that you have a packet that goes around here forever and forever uh, that has like a few micrograms of mass. Uh, that can most certainly happen. 
Uh, that is not anything faulty with the design, and the bridge won't fix it either. Uh, what can fix it is, well, at least temporarily, you just take this conveyor rail thermal sensor right here, and it happens, and you set it from above to below, it will empty out, then you set it back to above, and you're ready to go. So, yeah. I would suggest a simpler solution using a pitcher pump and a vacuum instead of pumps for minor volcano. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but that A requires dupe labor, and B, it's not that fun, right? <laughs> I kind of want to try this here. I want to see if this here works with a standard volcano, and if it is actually feasible to build it in a normal game. So, is it overkill for a minor volcano? Oh, absolutely it is. I mean, there's no question about it. But, I mean, if you play everything safe, right, where's the spice in life here? Uh, I'm going to have the dupes clear all the stuff here out because we will need a vacuum in here very soon. So let's see what we need below here. Uh, let's pause it real quick and let's take a few measurements once again. Uh, we're going to take the tile right here. We don't need obsidian anymore. We are going to go straight for igneous rock once again. Here is where I want to put my uh, steam turbines, and I'm probably going to put three in here. Yes, I know it's a minor volcano, and I know that three is going to be overkill, but I think in this case here, it may be sensible to do so. Let's just build a few right here and then see how much space we need. Can you not use an auto sweeper with a pitcher pump? Yes, you can. Yep, that would be a uh, uh, good idea. Uh, power, where is my steam turbine? Right here, built out of literally anything. What do we have most of? There we go. Three of those things. Take the space up all the way to right here. So this here is what our chamber is going to look like eventually. There we go. Now we have this here mapped out. All we have to do is cancel those two and open this here up. Uh, you can use auto sweeper, bottle emptier, and drop lava to a diamonds connected to a steam room. Yeah, I mean that is the standard solution more or less, right? Um, you can do it either with a lava, uh, with a um, with a what is it called? Damn it, a bottle emptier. Sorry, there it is. Um, or you can just do it with a standard magma blade that comes over, drops it down into where are we at a mesh tile. And then have uh, something like a mechanized airlock above it, right? Something like this here is the standard method of taming a uh, minor volcano, of course. But I figured something along those lines would just be too boring. I want to try something different. But I do know exactly what you guys mean uh, with your solutions. I'm not saying you guys are wrong in any way, shirt or form. As a matter of fact, you're 100% correct. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to see if a system like this here can work as well. Which theoretically, there shouldn't be a problem from a, well, theoretical standpoint. But building it, building it is the hard part. And how feasible that is in a real game, I have never tried. Like I said, I've never tamed an Iobium volcano. It has never been necessary. So that would be the only place where I would usually use this here. So we will try to make it happen today without having Niobium available yet. Up here on the top, we will need, eventually at least, a, um, a liquid lock of some kind. We will also need some petroleum up here. Yeah. Do you need to move that power line and pipeline out of your steam room? Uh, didn't we do that already? Um... Right, yeah, this one here has to move for sure. This one here has to go lower. I forgot about this one. Let's see, the steam room is only going to be too high. We don't need any more than that. So right here is going to be... I just need to move it down one. I can do two. That's totally fine. We can just bring it along here. Back up to right there. And that'll fix it for good. Good call, though, Jay. I thought I did them all. This one here I just have not deconstructed yet. So, yeah, let's get rid of this thing. Uh, this pipe right here, when we follow it along, is just connected all the way up here to this water geyser, and it is still dormant. 
next activity 8.4 cycles so nothing's going through it right now it's not like we're gonna have any kind of um, interruption in our base so that's always a good thing <sighs> what's niobium uh, niobium is a very, very endgame material that you can only find on the volcano or the magma planet, whatever you want to call it. It's um, extremely rare, but the nice thing is uh, you don't need to tame the volcano for it. You can just get more and more and more. Different. Dig up this one tile, add water and, add, and steam turbine above it. How fast does the steam turbine delete heat from igneous rock moving in a rail? Very slowly. From uh, igneous rock moving in a rail, it does it very, very slowly. Uh, because igneous rock, even if it's in debris form, when we take a look here, is a very low thermal conductivity of only two. And we compare that to anything else. So what do we have sitting around here? Um, any kind of metal, maybe. Nothing's really doing anything right now. Let's take a look here. What do we have? Like right here, we have gold. Gold has a thermal conductivity of 60. So the heat dissipates really, really quickly. So if this here were a gold volcano instead of an iron volcano with a 60 heat uh, thermal conductivity, it leaves it very quickly. It gives its heat to the steam, which then gets sucked up by the steam turbine. So yes, steam turbine will take a long time for igneous rock. With pitcher pumps, you can tame very hot volcanoes, no need to use fancy materials. Very true. But uh, also, again, here, liquid pump is the only thing made out of steel, and even that is 100% unnecessary, as I said earlier. So, as long as you have those 200 kilograms of steel right here, or 400 kilograms of steel right here for uh, safety, that's all you really need. And a little bit of obsidian. None of it requires any quote-unquote fancy materials either. But yes, again, I'm a big fan of the pitcher pump method. Don't get me wrong. Um, we can do, for example, we can do the pitcher pump method on this one right here. We have plenty of those volcanoes sitting around. As a matter of fact, we have so many minor volcanoes and major volcanoes, we don't know what to do with them all. I'm sure there will be a petroleum boiler at some point somewhere. Uh, we can use this build right here. We can do a pitcher pump build. I mean, we have, <laughs> we have so many of them, we don't know what to do with them all. Pick up your blueprint. I will throughout this, uh, the stream. We only have three blueprints that we can get. So doing all three at the very beginning makes it a little bit boring during the rest of the stream. So we're going to wait a little bit. And later on, we're going to open the others. I got a telescope print. I didn't even know the telescope has one. Good grief. But that's nice, though. That's definitely better than the uh, lavender boots we just got a moment ago. If you send small packets of igneous rock, it'll take uh, way lower time on the amount of uh, 500 to 1000 grams. Yes, it, that is 100% true. And that is what we are going to use here in this build as well, because we are sending it through a pipe, a insulated a liquid pipe right here. So we are going to reduce the amount that's going to be in the pipe down to 999 grams, just below one kilogram. We could do a thousand, but you know, better have an extra gram of safety built in, as I like to do. It's always better to be safe than sorry in a build like this here, because it can cause a lot of damage in a, a very short amount of time. So I, I like to go with the safer route wherever I can. Okay, we have this here built. So next on the list is, of course, the um, uh, steam room. It's going to be right below it. It's going to be as simple as something like this here. Um, yeah, and then we need one third layer that's going to be right around here somewhere, probably over here on the left, since we barely have any space over here on the right. And that's going to be the entire build. And we can squeeze it all in here without having to mess with this thing right here. So, yeah. Cancel these here? Nope, I actually uh, like that they're there because we can use those. Well, theoretically, we can put them anywhere. But what I am going to put right there eventually is going to be a liquid reservoir. 
can put it over here, can put it over there. It doesn't really make a difference as long as it's in, well, one place or another. But since we already have those insulated tiles, I'm just going to plop it right there. What else do we need? Anything else that I can think of that we need immediately? Just so we have it available. All this stuff here can get dug out. That's, of course, five high. How else would it be? But let's put us a ladder right here so we can reach it all. Very, very good. We will need... Let me think about this for a second. We need a vacuum in here and we need a vacuum in here. We could just fill it up with two different materials or, you know, water and brine, for example, could work or uh, water and polluted water. Whatever the hell we wanted to do, we could do. Or we could just close it off and then eventually generate a vacuum. That's probably what I'm going to plan on doing here. Let's see. Over here on the left side, could we just do something like this here? Is there anything stopping me from doing that? Absolutely not, I would say. Um, we could build it one further over, because right here in utilities, we need a thermo aqua tuner. The thermo aqua tuner is going to live. Um, in which direction am I going to send my water around? Does it matter? That's the question here. Um, probably this way around here. Coming in, I'm sending it over, out, and through the left side. Sending it up into my... Um, liquid reservoir and then from the liquid reservoir through the steam pump room the steam pumps here are going to pick up a bunch of heat in this area we got to cool that through here come down and then down here on the bottom we need to cool it down so probably it makes sense if our water is coming in from the left side so yes right here we are going to build our thermo aqua tuner and then when we have this here built we can get rid of those two tiles we don't need them uh, let's get all this here dug out uh, can put a pump right here and pump it out. Yeah, that's probably the easiest solution to get this here done without having to put two different kinds of uh, fluid in here. How do we get around here? Um, not entirely sure yet because we need something very similar right here. Let's try that out. Right there. That should get the job done. Let's dig a few more things up right here. We will need a pitcher pump here eventually. A few more ladders, not you. A few more ladders right here. Let's build this here out a little bit longer as well. Uh, maybe we can bring our power in from this side. And then right here, we're just going to come down with a ladder. There we go. That makes sense. Okay, yes, the dupe should be able to go all around this thing here now. Well, except right here. But other than that, they should be able to go all around however they please. And that should work. I hope. Is there a way to make airlock without using liquids? Um, not really. Uh, there are some mods that can do it, uh, but you always need some kind of liquid to help you out. Theoretically, you could do it with um, gases as well. Uh, I would just not recommend that at all. But you could do it theoretically with gases. If you have, for example, carbon dioxide, you could fill it into this hull right here and fill this entire area here up. So whatever is on this side, um, it just doesn't help you because usually if you want a liquid lock-in, I would say 9 out of 10 cases, you want a vacuum in here. So if you have anything but a liquid in here, for example, a gas, you are screwed. So for our case, at the bare minimum, it's not going to fly. Let's rip these two tiles out right here so we can get in and then we can close once this here is all done we can close everything else off and start creating a vacuum everything that needs to be in here has now been built so that is a very good thing and as soon as we have a vacuum reached we can also go ahead and actually unleash this minor volcano right here at that point they can't do us any more harm so that's also important I know with doors, but I don't think dupes can go through it. If you're talking about the mechanized airlock, for example, right here, um, if, if you build a mechanized airlock, the moment it opens, gases can pass through. So the moment the dupe goes through, it's it's not an it's called an airlock, and but it does not really stop any gases from exchanging. So that is not a solution, no. 
Ricky is here, says hi. Hi, Ricky. Thank you for joining. How are you doing today, Ricky? Hope you're having a great day. Glad you could join. Uh, a little bit of maintenance around here. How much of this? Now it's brine ice, of course. That's why it's not up here in our tank. How much do we have up here? Still not a hell of a lot. We're going to dig out a little bit more here, probably. Uh, let's dig all the way over to right there. And once this is dug up, actually, let's dig one deeper. We're going to get all of this snow here as well. Just so we can put it into our storage bins and fill up our tank a tiny little bit. Airlock door mod, but you need always use uh, steel to build it. They can vanish without a warning when overheating. Really? <laughs> I didn't know that part about it. I have used it a long time ago. It's a pretty decent mod, but, you know. In my opinion, it should be built into the game that you have something like that. I'm actually surprised that uh, Cly still hasn't put anything in there. Are you building a Visco Shell magma pump system? Yes, but without Visco Shell. <laughs> so, more or less, that is going to be the uh, general idea. I love how you immediately recognized what I'm what I'm trying to do here. You just went with the fancy route. Visco Shell would be the preferred method to use, of course, and the safe method. Uh, but in this case right here, uh, petroleum will get the job done for us. All right, guys, come on, get it built. Are we in Smelina? Are we getting slowly but steadily food in? Yes, it looks like it. We are harvesting. The dupes are not dying. That's always a good thing. Um, and slowly but steadily, while we're at it, let's take a little a bit of a side look here. Frozen hair is here. I hope you're all having a good, uh, a great weekend. I hope you too here, for sure. Um, right over here. Oh, what is this here? Unreachable tiles. Oh yeah, that's right. We had slime up here. Kind of forgot about that. We will need to get us some uranium over here. So we can take care of the slime right here. Just so we can dig through here. That's all we need, really. Uh, it's not going to be that big of a deal. As a matter of fact, we could probably just do something very simple here. Ah, the dupe's going to get a little bit dirty, though. We could build us a wash basin. Mm, where are we going to put that thing? kind of hard because we don't really have a space here hmm maybe up here it's not gonna be optimal but we're gonna put us a wash basin right here and instead of having radiation kill the germs we're just going to dig up the slime um and we're gonna pull this somewhere down here where it's really cold the cold will have the exact same effect it will just kill off the germs without a problem ah using petroleum you're living dangerously hell yeah <laughs> yes but as you said visco shell is definitely the better solution but we're only in circle 346 we just in the last uh, stream got over to our second planetoid uh, you're just taking our sweet time here really uh, so we have not access to visco shell yet but i know what you're saying we are most definitely living dangerously without using visco shell you're 100 percent correct about that we have a pipe that comes up here. Where are you going, pipe? Oh, you are going all the way into here. Maybe, just maybe, we could repurpose you a little bit. Um, how are we going to do that? How do I get just a tiny little bit of petroleum? I could make my life extremely easy. You know what? That's exactly what we are going to do right here. You're going to build us two tiles. You're going to come in with a pitcher pump. Very, very simple. As simple as it can be right here. And then an F6. So we're going to build us right here. A liquid vent. And we're going to hook it up, as a matter of fact, to automation with a hydro sensor. Down here on the bottom. And then a automation wire up here. Just as simple as that. So in this case here, we can get in with our pitcher pump some petroleum, which we can then use for liquid locks all over the place. And then we can just control how much we put in here. We just need like a couple hundred kilograms at a time or so that comes through here. And as soon as this here exceeds those couple hundred kilograms, we're just going to close off our liquid vent. Very, very simple solution for a very simple problem. We need a big disaster to entertain the viewers. I have a feeling the filter and liquid valve will overheat. You'll see. 
We will see. The liquid valve is definitely not going to overheat. I, 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 I'm willing to guarantee that. The liquid filter, on the other hand. We will see. <laughs> Trial and error. Empirical testing. Whatever you want to call it. Okay, of course. The petroleum comes before everything else is built. How else will it be? How about molten lead? Uh, would that be a better alternative to petroleum? You can keep the lead liquid with some uh, steel metal tiles. I guess that would work too. Is that something I've ever tried, truth be told? No. But I don't see why it wouldn't work. Let's see here. Let me finish this here real quick. We have some uranium ore here, some sandstone. Come on, dupes, get it out of there. At least the ice is gone, so it doesn't matter anymore. The other stuff can't stay in there. And we're just going to say, grand, uh, send a green signal if we have below, I don't know, let's say 400 kgs. If you have less than 400 kilograms, then you send a green signal. Uh, then get us some petroleum in here. Here's the pitcher pump. The dupes can get to it, no problem. Um, if you need petroleum anywhere, they will just come down here and grab it. We don't need a lot out of the pitcher pump, so the long distance away from everything else in the base is really not that big of a deal right now. Let's see right here. Shouldn't be that big a deal. Let's see. 300 kgs. Oh, I said 400, didn't I? Of course I did. Speed it up. 400 kgs. And a red signal works like a charm. Very good. Okay, up here. First of all, we're going to once again go ahead and get rid of all the debris. That's going to be important. I, well, is it really important? No, it's just an eyesore. Let me be very, very honest here. It doesn't matter in any way, shape or form, really. If it's here or not. As long as it's not down here in the lava, that could cause some trouble if we on accident to melt some other material. But other than that, it shouldn't be that big a deal. We will need a pitcher pump, or better to say a bottle empty here. Sorry about that. Right here. And eventually we will also need one right here. Should also be fine. Yes, it's going here into the insulated tile, but it's still going to work without a problem, I believe. Actually, I do want to change this bottle empty here because right here we are only going to have a tiny drop down here and we are going to have a tiny drop down here. Uh, this one tile here is literally going to hold our vacuum together. Uh, we don't need a full-blown um, um, liquid lock here. We don't even need a full-blown liquid lock here as a matter of fact. It's not something that we keep permanently because as soon as we have a vacuum created we are going to put two tiles in here and we are done. We are never going to enter this area here again. So... Um, we don't need a full-blown liquid lock in either of those two cases. We're just going to use a tiny little bit of material. So I need to change my laddering system here. Three high, come all the way down here. And then get rid of these three tiles right here. Did I do three? Yes, just looks a little bit odd. Now we can put our bottle emptier right here. And now that it will work. All right. Uh, I use it to create glass tiles and it always overheats. Uh, that would overheat the steel pump. I need to read more of your comments, guys. <laughs> I lost you guys somewhere here. If I use crude oil for the thermo aqua tuna, it's the same thing for any cooler system. Yes, you can use, as a matter of fact, any fluid that you want inside the thermo aqua tuna. You just need to make sure that you don't cool it down below its freezing point. Um, so if you take a, look, a quick look here at crude oil, crude oil has a very bad thermal conductivity and also a pretty bad specific heat capacity. But it doesn't freeze until negative 40.1 degrees. What these numbers here mean is, right, the thermal conductivity, it only exchanges heat at a rate of 2. Um, that by itself doesn't tell you a hell of a lot either, but if we find us another material like what we like to use, polluted water right here, has a, a thermal conductivity of 0 0.58. So it's a hell of a lot lower and the freezing point is negative 20.6. So usually what's used is polluted water. When we take a look at water right here, we are at 0 0.6 on the thermal conductivity. It's basically the same as polluted water. I mean, there's basically no difference, but the freezing point of um, polluted water is a lot lower than the one of water. So we can cool it down a hell of a lot more. Um, yeah, 
it's just crude oil can be used petroleum can be used for example i have seen that many times i've done it myself many times you can even use something like brine right here with a freezing point of negative 22.5 degrees whatever you have available uh for right now uh, the nice thing is we can see it right here this liquid pipe thermal sensor is set up to negative five degrees so it will cool down our polluted water by 14 degrees uh, as long as it's above negative five so that can never get us any lower than negative 19 degrees plenty for any build that you will need up until you go completely crazy in the very end game uh, what else do we have if it's okay to ask about the icons in your video which fonts are you using um what icons do you mean exactly not entirely sure what you mean Doesn't bigger uh, thermal conductivity mean faster energy exchange? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it means. And it depends on what you want to do with it, right? Uh, I used to create the last house and it always overheats. I still don't know how this comment fits into anything else. <laughs> oh, I see. About the molten lead. Steel tiles and glass tiles. I got it now. And of course, Sin and Jay got themselves stuck again. How is it always Sin that gets himself in trouble? I really don't understand. And usually Jay is not that far from Sin either. Get out of there, guys. Let's build this here up. And then right here, or this ladder here, we're going to get rid of it. Because we need this space right here in a second. So we can put in our in ventilation, our gas pump right here. I need to tame a polluted water geyser. Have a video for that? A polluted water geyser? I do have a video for every single um, tamer or every single volcano. They're rather old, uh, not necessarily as up to date, but all the builds in there should still work to the best of my knowledge. So yes, I do have a video. It's uh, my uh, tame every geyser in oxygen not included series it has literally every single one in it uh, to do something with them two of them are stuck how did we both get stuck <laughs> oops are not too smart sorry i found your channel today oh wow holy cow oh no you're totally fine you are absolutely fine as a matter of fact I don't expect everybody to know all my videos. <laughs> um, why then is polluted water better than oil? Let's see. Let's go over it one more time. We have a specific heat capacity of 1.69 and a thermal conductivity of 2. And up here we have polluted water with a specific heat capacity of 4 and a thermal conductivity of 0 0.5. So you need more energy to heat the water up by one degree compared to crude oil. Um, but at the same time, it also takes longer for that to happen. So for something like a steam turbine, a room right here, where you usually go through only the bottom and have either fluid in here or in my case, gases, it's just a better mousetrap because you're using your thermo aqua tuna less, but you're still keeping your steam turbines low. All a steam turbine, for example, and that's what you usually are trying to cool, right? Uh, needs it needs to be below 100 degrees Celsius or sorry um, is it 125 or is it 100 I can't recall what exactly the overheating point is I think it's 100 degrees if I'm not mistaken um, so that's all you need if you can keep this thing here steadily at 99 degrees Celsius you are totally fine that's all you ever need um, and of course crude oil is uh, available comparatively late usually like we built our metal refinery here very late in the game. We just waited because we didn't need it yet. We are on a cold planet. But on a warmer planet, I would have probably found me some kind of cold area like this one right here. And I would have slapped it in here and I would have just made me enough steel to build my first aqua tuner uh, without ever making it down to oil first all the way on the bottom. So your uh, polluted water is usually much more readily available uh, than your oil. But later on, you can do whatever you want.
Okay, so capacity, got it. Basically, yes, heat capacity and thermal conductivity. I mean, both of them, you need to always take both of them into account. Only to look one of them and completely ignore the other is never going to get you where all the information that you need because both of them are crucial uh, values for everything in the game that you want to use. Maybe insulated tiles, maybe radiant liquid pipes, whatever it may be. Uh, you always have to take both into account. And Che brings up another important point. Um, also, the thermo aqua tuna subtracts a fixed temperature of 14 degrees uh, from the liquid that goes through it. So for any given amount of cooling, the speed power efficiency of the thermo aqua tuner is a linear function. And that is 100% correct. It does not matter. So I mean, once again, <laughs> for the third time now, look at our specific heat capacity right here. You are removing effectively from crude oil way way less energy than you are removing from um, polluted water with a, a specific heat capacity of 4.1 compared to 1.6 because no matter what the thermo aqua tuna will always remove per single drop that goes through it so every time a drop actually goes through the aqua tuna it turns on it removes 14 degrees no matter what liquid it is so having a higher specific heat capacity is much more efficient in terms of removing total heat. Oh, we went pretty much in depth with that one, didn't we? But that's totally fine. Now, I hope we are definitely all on the same page. I just noticed my cobble volcano almost on the surface with negative 40 to negative 60. Pretty cold. That is pretty cold. Come on, dupes, get all this stuff out of here. And then we can go ahead and ventilation. Grab us a gas pump made out of literally anything. It doesn't make a difference. We're going to plop one right here. We're going to plop one right there. Um, and we are just going to suck those two rooms here empty. Uh, FIFO asks, why do you create a vacuum in the aqua tuner room? Does the oxygen in there cause some sort of issue? In here, you always want to have some kind of vacuum. How you get there doesn't really matter, but there are two main methods. One of them is you build, for example, a gas pump room, uh, a gas pump inside of the room with some kind of liquid lock below it. So you can just pump it out um, after you fill it up with water. Or you can fill it up with two different amounts of, or with two different liquids. Like for example, I could put a very thin layer of water on the bottom, and then I could put a, another thin layer on top of it made out of, let's say, brine or polluted water or salt water or something along those lines. Uh, preferably not polluted water though, because our dirt that we get once our polluted water evaporates can turn into natural tiles and we do not want that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, you do want the vacuum in here because if there is, let's say, oxygen in here and the oxygen blocks one of those outputs right here or those inputs, better to say, for our steam turbine, it does decrease the efficiency of our steam turbine. And that is most definitely something we don't want. Uh, I just uh, realized I have another small problem. Is it actually a problem or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter once I have petroleum in here. Let's say petroleum 9 enable auto bottle. Um, and then let's copy those settings up here to the top as well. Let's make us uh, two liquid locks. Down here on the bottom, we are going to fill some water in from the top. It's just going to run over here into the oil or to the petroleum, better to say. But it really doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal. You can also build blocks inside the steam room with a liquid lock and then deconstruct them. Definitely, we could also have here a liquid lock and then just literally build blocks uh, the entire length through all the way and then slowly but steadily deconstruct them that will also effectively create a vacuum most definitely also very viable what is that neutronium on the left of the reservoir this is a polluted uh, what is it called an infectious polluted oxygen vent that we will outright ignore at least for right now maybe later on for some clay or something but right now it's easy to get the vacuum, but question is, what if I don't? Well, like I said, if you don't, you will have most of those tiles here filled with steam eventually. Uh, but the other tiles that are not filled with steam are probably going to sit right in front of your steam turbine inlets. And if there is anything, then steam at 125 degrees or higher in front of it, uh, it will be basically blocked. 
and you more or less lose one of your five inputs. So basically a 20% reduction in efficiency. That's what it comes down to. Today's stream is very tutorially. I like it. Hey, the stream is always what you guys make it. Whatever the hell you guys want to talk about, I'm game. All right. So now that we have this here, let's uh, take another look here. In F2, we will need some power and we have, surprise, surprise, none <laughs> available anywhere near here. Uh, yeah, of course. How did I not see that one coming? We need a large power transformer. We're going to put the large power transformer right here. We're going to come with this heavy water wire straight through, straight down, back over and into here. And then we are going to provide us with some wonderful power to our pump. This pump here, actually, both pumps can already be powered. We're just not going to turn the one on the bottom on, at least. Um, one on the top right here can be turned on. I just have not seen this thing here do anything, which is kind of scary because it says idle and not dormant. So it could erupt at any second. Um, when I start pumping here, I should probably send a dupe up here to get this thing here checked out. But I need to keep an eye on it like a hawk. Because if this thing here erupts and a dupe stands in, in front of it, uh, you're going to be in for a bad time around here. And if it erupts, while we still have gases in here, it's going to be another problem. Let's see. We probably want to go into uh, ventilation and grab us a vacuum pump and probably build it. Doesn't really matter too much where. Probably right here. And try to speed up that process drastically. Down here on the bottom, I don't care. But up here on the top, it does need to be somewhat quick, I would argue. So let's come out to here and let's come out to there. And let's plop in some uh, gas vents here and there. Let's... They got another tile right here, just so the gas is somewhere to go. Yeah. And it's gonna be, that's probably going to be the most dangerous thing that we are going to do here. Unearthing this volcano here and hoping it doesn't erupt when a dupe stands right in front of it. Um, I still want to see someone use the deodorized teleportation trick. We could do that over here. I know exactly what you mean, Jay. Uh, we talked about it last time, I believe. So we can most definitely uh, give it a shot. I mean, uh, nothing wrong with that. This one here is uh, now a liquid lock. And this one here, we're just going to let it finish its uh, 200 kilograms here. There you go. And then we're going to deconstruct it as well. So when we look right here, we have petroleum right here. And we have petroleum right here. And this one here is the important tile. Those 334.7 grams are going to be what's holding back all the vacuum that we're going to have in here. Or better to say, since the vacuum is a low-pressure system, it's going to hold back the gases on this side that are trying to rush into the low-pressure area. So that's all we need. Um, I would not recommend to leave it like this here for a long period of time. If you want to continuously use it, then you better have a full-on li liquid lock. Um, but for what we are doing right now, that is more than sufficient. Uh, and let's bring these here out as well with another gas vent. There we go. Can we not reach this here? No, we can't reach it because this is only three high. We are good. Does the reduction in efficiency reduce its ability to cool? I don't care about the power output. Uh, the reduction in efficiency does not reduce its ability to cool. The material that you have inside, though, will increase or decrease its ability to cool. The thermal micro tuner always does 14 degrees per tile. It, it doesn't matter what you put in there. So there is no change no matter what you use. But the material that you use will make a difference on the cooling ability, yes. Have you ever made a video about a base with the most ideal efficient builds? Albeit with sandbox mode on. It's actually kind of funny that you mentioned that because no, I have not. But I thought that something like that would be potentially a, uh, a nice dream idea once. Maybe we could do something like I turn on death mode, uh, not sandbox mode, but, but death mode. 
And I can, with death mode, I don't know uh, how familiar you guys are with that. If you don't use it for like making tutorials, I don't know <laughs> if you ever use it for anything. But you can, for example, just go uh, G, press here, and it immediately becomes debris. Like no dupe has to do it. You can build something and it immediately just plops into the map. And then let's say we set a time limit on a random map for, let's say, two hours, or an hour, three hours, whatever it may be, with death mode on. And just for the fun of it, what is the best uh, possible base that I can build with death mode on within that set time limit? I was thinking about something like that. How do you guys feel about uh, an idea like that? All right, dupes, get all this here done. I do have my power over here, right? Yes, can't forget about that. Anything else? Let me double check real quick. In F2, we have uh, power right here and power right there. In F6, we come in with obsidian and we come back out with igneous. That is correct. Our insulated pipes here are all made out of obsidian. All that is correct. Uh, right here, we are igneous rock. That is totally fine. It is not going to hurt uh, uh, harm anything. Right here, it's igneous rock. And right here, it's once again obsidian. You are made out of steel. You are made out of steel. You don't matter. Um, the conduction panel is also made out of steel, even though that doesn't matter. And the liquid vent is not made out of steel, which also doesn't matter. Okay, we're good. Everything's good. Um, is the vacuum pump a modded one, and how efficient is she? Is the vacuum pump a mod? I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. I, I do believe it is. It's something that I have used forever. I'm pretty sure it's a mod. And one of you guys help me out here? I, I honestly don't remember if that's actually a mod or not. Am I going crazy? Maybe. Probably, actually. But I think it's a mod, yeah. Yes, it is a mod. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think it... Does the vacuum pump come with the um, filtered liquid pump and the filtered um, gas pump? Is that the same thing? Not sure. It's not a mod, it's on the expansion. Uh, vacuum pump has more tiles to work with than small pump. Yeah. It is very efficient. Like, if you built this thing, it puts a vacuum in here in no time. In my experience, at least. Gremlin says that would be great to watch. Yuriuno says, obviously, I want in on that. <laughs> uh, Chase says, or if it's a thermo aqua tuna as the only source of heat, less efficient cooling increases the risk of overheating. Yep, very true. But you have to be running the tuner pretty hard for that to be an issue. It's steel. Yeah. Yeah. Or you have a very low amount of steam in here. That would be the other problem that you could possibly run into. But that is really then independent of what liquid you use. Uh, Croc says, if you're building in sandbox mode, it's probably a, uh, it's more about showcasing rather than utilizing it in the game. A lack of danger for the colony will make it boring. I mean, there is still some lack of uh, some danger for it, I guess. I mean, not really much, though. I guess they could run a food if I don't pay attention, but that's probably the most of it, <laughs> quite honestly. All right, we are starting with our vacuum. We are going to say analyze this thing with a number nine priority and dig up this tile here. And that, like I said, is going to be the most dangerous thing because if this thing here erupts while we have still gases in here, we are going to be in a world of hurt. So we will see how that goes. Elfie Wolf says not in my game, so it's a mod. Gabriel says I'm completely wrong. It is a mod. <laughs> okay, I think the conclusion is it's a mod. There we have it. Now we know. So yes, apparently I did mod this thing here in. It has been so long ago that I don't even remember myself. Under filter pumps mod? Yeah. Smart pumps? Okay, so it is the smart pumps mod. That's where this thing here is coming from. I use it mainly for the uh, filter liquid pump here. So we could, for example, right here, um, instead of a liquid pump, we could put in a filtered one. Unfortunately, it doesn't work here because we still want to pick up two different things which the filtered one can do. So in this particular case right here, we still need a liquid filter. Or once again, we could have built us a um, mechanical filter to accomplish the same thing. 
All right, so here we are pumping it out. And down here in the bottom, we are pumping two, but clearly we are not ready for that. Uh -huh. So let's uh, get rid of this nonsense here. We need to dig up one insulated tile. We need to come down and close this here off. We will need one piece of a ladder right here. And then we will need a bottle emptier above it. Unless, do we have water nearby? We do have water nearby. We're not going to go with bottle emptiers. Hell no. Um, let's see. Could we maybe already combine it with something that we need anyway? Probably so. Um, how much longer is this thing here dormant? Uh, status. Not a 5.3 cycles. You know what? Let's be safe. We're just going to say send a green signal if above 5,000. There we go. The 2,000 doesn't matter. It will never turn on. We can just take this pipe here and extend it up to right there. Snip this here off temporarily. Um, and then come with the pipe over here straight in. And we will build us. Uh, let's get in here once again with insulated pipes. And let me see real quick here. Um, we're just going to come. Am I going to build three? I'm probably going to build three. So it's a little bit more out there. There we go. So let's get rid of this ladder right here. We won't need it. We are going to stop this deconstruction here real quick, but we are going to get rid, rid of this ladder right here. And then on the bottom right here, we are just going to go ahead and build us three liquid vents. And then we're just going to connect this pipe here so we don't have to come in here anymore. That's the fastest, easiest solution to get water in here uh, without having to use pitcher pumps or dupes or anything like that and have to mess around with the debris that's left over from the ladder and so on and so forth. Um, the rest of the infrastructure in here, though, we need to take a look at this as well here in a second. Put three pipes to one vent. I would usually do this. In this particular case here, though, I am going to build three of them. Because right over here on the, on the right side, our magma is going to enter. And I want to have it somewhat evenly distributed, the uh, somewhat cold water at 98 degrees that is going to flow back here. Um, so yeah, usually I would do it exactly like you say, Croc. But in this particular case, you actually have a reason. Also, where exactly is our magma going to enter? Probably down here on the bottom. We should probably try to build as much infrastructure in here as we can before we add any water. That's probably the easiest thing as well. Now that this is done, copy it, bring it over here. We can build us our last turbine over here as well. So I've been a lurker... Potamus Rex. Lurker Potamus Rex. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Hope everything has been working well. Well, so far it's working pretty good. We have Deer Guard up here. Um, let's take a quick look into skills for Deer Guard. Yes, we have a bunch available. Reason is that we don't need them. Um, where's Deer Guard? We can give you applied uh, sciences research to get your science up a little bit higher. Uh, so you hopefully can get this here done a little bit quicker. That would be nice. I'm really worried about this thing here erupting. Yeah, there we go. Look at this thing here. Just sucking it out like it's nothing. <laughs> Only on the bottom, once again, we are going to go ahead. And we are going to pick up all of our debris right here. And then, okay... Let's take a look at this here. This insulated pipe right here. We're going to bring it down all the way to right here. Here we're going to have a wall. And after the wall, we are going to switch over to radiant liquid pipes. Um, here we can go aluminum. We can go iron. In this case right here. So aluminum is obviously the best. We all know it because of a thermal conductivity of 410. Whereas iron, for example, has only 110. Iron is safer. Because we have a melting point of 1537, where aluminum is only at 663 degrees. So we can go with aluminum. It should be fine. But if we make one a little mistake, it will become a problem. Uh, just got in. Is he taming a major or minor one? This here is actually a minor one. We don't have a uh, major one. So, But for this build here, it does not make a difference in any way, shape or form. Um, a major volcano would work the exact same way 
it wouldn't make a difference. I would build it the exact same way if it were major. So let's come in here with our radiant liquid pipe made out of steel. I'm going to start with steel because of the higher thermal conductivity. Actually, no, it isn't. My mistake. We are going to go with iron, but not very far. Uh, probably just to somewhat like right there. And then we're going to switch over here to aluminum for the later tiles. And we're just going to snake this thing here through as far as we can to right around here, maybe, maybe one further. It probably doesn't make too much of a difference, honestly. Um, that is going to be this. Then down here on the bottom, I'm going to come over here with our liquid bridge. And we once again need insulated pipes, not obsidian though. We can go igneous rock, that's fine. We're going to come straight up here and into there, and then right out here. And then with a liquid bridge, straight across here. Um, and then in here. Uh, we could just put a little bit of liquid on the ground, and that's probably what I'm going to end up doing probably over here once we get rid of this um, uh, liquid lock right here. I'm just going to open it up and let it drop in here. Probably the easiest solution um, to cool this here down. Yeah, we will see. But eventually, where I'm going to end up with my pipe is going to be right here. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come back down. And once I'm coming back down, it's going to be as simple as it can be. Uh, just across here. This here will not be there in a little while. So right here, straight over, into there, and to the left. That should be the entire build, I believe. I don't think there's anything else missing. Here we need a bridge. Here we have a bridge. We, of course, need in plumbing. Our trusty old liquid pipe thermal sensor. Again, it can't overheat, it can only melt. And if we have a thousand degrees in here, we have bigger problems. So we can just build it out of copper, that's totally fine. And the same is, of course, true for our automation wires as well. There we go. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting? Well, I'm not forgetting it. I'm talking about piping specifically. Of course, we somehow need to get our igneous rock out of here. So all that needs to be done as well. I just like to do things in phases. Um, I like to complete most everything in F6, everything in F2, usually as close as possible to one step after another, like right here, we just have this disconnected, this here will come straight through and over, and that'll be done. Uh, but we will need some more stuff in here. Once all this here is built, though, we will see what that looks like. Better safe than sorry, use iron. Once again, I 100% agree. And that is also what I would give as a recommendation to, well, you guys, my viewers, 100% of the time. If you have to choose between efficiency and safety, go with, uh, go with safety. I almost said efficiency. Go with safety every time. Because at the end of the day, what does it matter if you lose 5% efficiency over the course of your 500 cycles? Um, if you don't even get to those 500 cycles because you accidentally spilled a bunch of magma all over the place and now you don't know what to do about it. So safety is always uh, definitely what I would recommend. Sin is right, though. Dangerous is more entertaining, though. <laughs> so I should probably go for the stream, the dangerous route. <laughs> but I will still recommend for you guys to always do the safe thing. How are we looking in here? So far, it's still not erupting, which is a good thing. Come on, Croc. Get your shit together. <laughs> we need you in there. And we need to see what this thing here is made out of. We need the analysis done. ASAP. Reiki says, I started watching your series. Really nice jobs. Hey, I truly appreciate that. Thank you, Reik. Thank you very much. Um... Kilburn says, that mod that shows melting points and other thermal info is a damn lifesaver. Yes, this is a very great mod. Uh, you can always see it like if you tap on it once it's built. But yes, it makes it so much easier to just click on the different things and it just shows it right there. Is that by now built into the game or... Or, uh, or is that still a mod? I don't even know anymore. Maybe it was added in some kind of uh, quality of life update. Who can tell? Alright, getting there slowly but steadily. And guys, 
I just happened to see we have right around 80 people watching and only 37 likes. So I don't want to be a beggar or anything, but a like would really help me out greatly and it doesn't cost you a dime. So if you feel like it, press that like button and help me out. Thank you. You can always load an autosave. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. Uh, will you be using danger soup to tame the volcanoes? It will be a dangerous soup. There is no question about it. <laughs> it will most definitely be. I'm pretty sure that this size here is actually slightly overkill now that I look at it. And it's just a minor volcano. For a major volcano, this size here would probably make sense. But I could have probably built it slightly more compact since it's just a minor volcano. But, well, here we are. Um, what else do we have here? It's called Thermal Tooltips. Yes, it is called Thermal Tooltips. By the way, if you are guys ever wondering what mods that I am using, uh, there's a full list on my Discord. Uh, it's just a pinned post inside of the Oxygen Not Included uh, sub forum or chat or whatever the hell you want to call it in Discord. So if you are ever interested in that kind of thing, you can see the uh, you can see all that on Discord with one click. Um, this thing right here. We can now bring this down all the way, bring it over to here. We can hook it up to the Thermal Aqua Tune. It's not going to do anything because we don't have any fluid in there yet. Um, yeah. Other than that, power-wise, we are looking not too bad. Eventually, we we'll do it right now, actually. Going to come all the way up here to hook these two up as well. They're also not going to do anything. There are no liquids yet, so we are golden. Yeah, slowly but steadily, it almost looks like uh, something that could potentially work without destroying everything. So yeah, we will see <laughs> if that ends up being true. Uh, down here now, everything is built. So we can take a look into shipping now. In shipping, we will need a few things. And I don't know yet what an appropriate space for all of those things is, I suppose. Uh, we will need an auto sweeper. It needs to be made out of steel. Um... Let's see, it does have the range. By the way, in case you're wondering, those uh, green outlines right here, that is also a mod. It has, it's called Show Building Ranges. So this here shows you the range of where the auto sweeper can actually grab stuff. Um, if I build this thing right here, it should be able to grab everything at all times. That should be fine. Conveyor loader also made out of steel. Once again, that is actually important. Um, and where we built this here will actually at least slightly matter. Um, probably, um, does it matter though too much? Probably not. So we will have, let me think right here. We have the, uh, thermal sensor for the aqua tuner. We will need a thermal sensor for the, um, debris. Uh, then we need a two wide space right here for a filter. And then right beside that. So we have one space, two space, three spaces right here. I should be able to build it. Um, with the tile being right there. Yeah, that should work. Well, let me make sure that makes sense. Uh, we're going to come something simple like this here, all the way over, all the way up, all the way back, all the way through here. And then right here, we're going to have our sensor. Then right beside it, we're going to have the conveyor shut off. That's what that thing is called. Uh, the conveyor shut off is going to live right here. Not right there, right here. Then with a conveyor rail, going to come straight in, going to come down, going to come straight over and back into there. We may need a bridge somewhere along this line right here so the debris knows where to go. I keep forgetting about that. So we're going to just plop it right there. The no, actual location of it doesn't actually matter. And then right down here, now let me see if that is a appropriate location with an appropriate length. We're going to come down. We will have a meter, a conveyor meter, probably sitting right there. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces available. Six should be sufficient. All right, good. Yep, that's what we need. There we go. So I apologize, guys. <laughs> I'm just trying to somewhat say out loud what I usually think if I would be playing uh, by myself. Um, so right at the moment, here we are just going to build a very simple loop-de-loop -loop for our debris, which should already be coming in here very cold. So theoretically, it should make one loop and then most likely make its way out. 
uh, that would be my expectation. If that's going to work out or not, I guess we will see you very shortly. But for right now, I believe that should do. That is not the right place. That shutoff will not work. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, my shutoff will not work, of course, because it's uh, I built the uh, conveyor rails right here in the long location. They, of course, don't belong over here. They belong over here. Now it will work. No cold box to finish cooling the debris. That is exactly what's going to be down here in the bottom. And it's going to be only one tile long. Very, very simple. We are going to use the exact, uh, exact same system that I'm using right here. Just here I'm using three metal tiles. Uh, up there we are going to use double dead. Six metal tiles. Should work. I hope. Because, as usual, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I'm entirely sure we're going to come... Let's see, how much space do we have here? We have seven tiles right here. We could even go directly to the right over here. We don't have to go back to the left and then feed it back. Is this a spaced out size map or classic? This is a classic size map. I'm Personally, I'm just not a big fan of the smaller maps. I like to have my space. I, I enjoy the building aspects of this here, as you guys all know, right? <laughs> I like to build a bunch of fancy stuff. Well, fancy, quote-unquote, I guess. But... Um, on the smaller um, air, on, on the smaller maps, I, I just don't enjoy it so much, honestly. But we have both available, so to each their own. There's nothing wrong with either way, in my opinion. So let's bring that over here. Very good. That should get the job done. A locker item gambling, please. Uh, how long have we been here? Let me take a quick look here in my OBS stats. We're here for a couple hours. All right, Kilburn, we're going to take a peek. What's hidden behind door number two? Let's print it. And now we got the gloves to our boots in a wonderful basic purple. A good solid pair of purple gloves that go with everything. Yeah, I know about that. Questionable. Yes, Jay. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Oof. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Um, come on, finish this volcano. What you doing, dear guard? And also in here, uh, our vacuum pump. Can you please uh, vacuum a little bit harder? That would be highly appreciated. We still have a single piece of bloody uh, hydrogen in here, really. We need to get that stuff out of here. Come on. We have 3.7 cycles. 3.7 cycles. We should be able to get a vacuum in 3.7 cycles. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, that actually works in our favor. So right here, all this here needs power. We can currently see that we do have a uh, potential power a load of 1,890 watts. If I now hook all this here up, it's not going to be very happy, will it be? Probably not, but at the same time, we're losing 240 and 90 up here, which in turn makes it totally fine. Yes, all of this stuff here can be powered with one single wire. Very good. And I, can, I can't even tell you that's at least not gloves. <laughs> Sadly, can't relate. I haven't bought the game yet. Look, you don't own oxygen not included? Wow. I assumed that just people that actually own the game would watch me play it. But I mean, that's even more amazing, I guess. You can dismantle some, uh, dismantle some tiles to speed it up a little. Yeah, I could probably get the dupes in here and uh, and have him like tear these two up. That's probably a smart idea. As a matter of fact, that is a very smart idea, Croc. Thank you for that. Didn't think of it. Uh, that's exactly what we need. Because right at the moment, all of this gas here is trying to escape through this one hole. Obviously, it's going to take forever. So the moment we open this here up, it balloons out like nothing. So yeah, there's that. Other than that, let me go back to the bottom right here. Like I said, I need to be very careful. One wrong step here um, and we could have a problem. Um, in F2, everything has power now. With the exception of these here, ignore them. Uh, it's totally fine. Um, right here. Um, probably should put that in before I forget it, the heavy watt wire. Let's bring it in. And you know what? Let's bring it out the back, actually. Let's not bring it out the front. Let's bring it out over here. 
Um, over here, we will need, of course, a heavy butt joint plate. There is no question about it. And with a heavy butt joint plate, we can cut, uh, we can just come out of here. Heavy butt wire, bring it all the way through, and then just connect it back up there. And these here will then be ready to roll. In F6, uh, how are we going to do this here? Should I put in a long one? How is our material looking? Not very good. And our metal refinery down here on the bottom. We're going to make us more aluminum ore. Um, sorry, more aluminum out of aluminum ore. I mean, of course, let's make 50 of them. Not like anything's happening. Let's see. Still too poor to afford a legit game. Hopefully I can buy it someday. Do you actually, uh, do you have a, uh, a computer that could run the game? Let me ask you that. Uh, snip the power cable running through the joint plate and add a bridge. Uh, is that actually connected now? Yes, we do need a bridge here, don't we? It's, that's, but this it does count like a bridge, right? Or am I crazy? Because uh, the heavy uh, heavy bar train plate is a bridge by itself. Well, we will see in about one second here, because when these here are connected and this here doesn't work, it will immediately overpower. So, there's that. <laughs> Let's see. Totally fine. No problem. So yeah, the heavy bar train plant is a bridge all by itself. As Croc said, I just read it. We don't need it. It's like a bridge. Yep. It counts as a wall, says Kilburn. Jay says, not a bridge, it's a wall. And wires go through it. No need to bridge. The train plant is a bridge. The smaller wire is not connected. No bridge. It's connected. <laughs> Thank you guys for the immediate and instant confirmation. <laughs> oh, I love it. So good. Uh, down here we have a little bit more ice in here. Uh, just making another uh, quick check over here on Smalina. How are we doing? Everything good? Anything that we can do over here in the meantime. I mean, these guys are just running around and uh, basically just taking care of their crops and doing nothing else. And as a matter of fact, I kind of forgot that I wanted to do this here, didn't I? Um, is there anything in here? We have a little bit of food poisoning on our swamp charred heart, but it doesn't matter because the cold will just kill it. Um, so let's deconstruct it. And then right here, we're going to put all of our food in. Uh, that is, is a self-solving problem. Let's see. Right here, we have the liquid reservoir. It's made out of gold. Over here we have igneous rock. We don't have igneous rock over here, really? Apparently not. We do have a little bit, but apparently we haven't dug out enough to actually build everything. All that we can reach right now is uh, sedimentary rock. Yeah. Yeah, questionable. Questionable, questionable. Down here on the bottom, we have a bunch of it, but I don't want to dig into there because I don't want to compromise our cold area even more than we already did. I need to ship some igneous rock over here. I can barely believe it myself. Uh, iron is what we're missing. No, that's actually gold right here. We do have cobalt, though. What's the difference? I don't think there is really one that matters. So how about I go ahead, I go into this overview... And I just kill all of them. And I'm going to build them out of cobalt. Just the same. We're going to come all the way over here. All the way into there. This one here we should not build yet. That would be a problem. Here we're going to come up and over. Here we're going to come up and over. And here we're going to come down. So now we can build all of these rails right here. Just out of a material that we have available. Um, at least the dupes have something to do and are not completely falling asleep. We just need igneous rock that I will ship over here. We actually need a lot of it for our insulated tiles and everything. So we are going to uh, go back to cold yell and right here in a conveyor, a loader. We're going to say igneous rock and we're just going to turn this here on for a little while so the dupes can bring some over. Let's take a look. How much do we have over here? We should have more than sufficient available. Oh yeah, right there. 
249 tons. It's it's actually right there. I'm blind as a bat today. All right. Back to the main thing. Um, I have it. I have it in my game in the background. I always check my post before I give an advice. Ha, <laughs> Croc, of course, I'm, I know you do. The heavy bot wire was my biggest annoyance when I was still learning the game. Um, Alex says we will find out. Just an easy evaluation to sort out uncertainty. But we will find out for sure, one way or another. Um, hello there, somebody's name that I have no idea how to even start pronouncing it, so my apologies there. <laughs> uh, my, uh, what is this here, Kyrillic maybe, is not that good. I'm still too afraid to open Oni. I haven't fixed my in inexplicably broken Hydra. Oh yeah, we did talk about the Hydra a lot, didn't we? And it's still not fixed. 2.7. We have the hydrogen gas right here, oxygen. It'll easily do it in 2.7. I'm not afraid about of that at all. We're going to set this here to everything. There's nothing in here that we don't want to not get out. Um, so we are fine. In here, we can get rid of the last piece of debris. And I do think the next thing is a little bit of cooling in here. Um, I'm pretty sure it should be sufficient to literally just do this here. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be. As a matter of fact, we can come all the way up here with it. Kill it. Bring this here down. You're going to leave those last two here also. Um, um, radiant liquid pipes, no problem. And then liquid bridges here and there. So in F6, uh, let's check our loop again. We're going to come out through here, all the way through along there. Up all the way to the top, through our wonderful, what do you call it again, conduction panel, that's the word. Uh, straight down, back here, and then into here. The only thing is right here, we will have to break it back open in a minute, and we will have to change it. Because we do, in fact, want to have some kind of cold, uh, cold box down here. And the cold box is going to start right here. So we are basically setting this conveyor rail thermal sensor here up to send a green signal. So a green signal means our debris goes around again if our temperature is above 200 degrees. If we are below 200 degrees, we will send a red signal and our material will come out of here. Just as simple as that. It's Greek, I think. It looks like mass and physics ladders. <laughs> that may well be, actually. That may actually well be. Okay. 2.5 cycles left. We're down to 25 micrograms. 31 micrograms. 52 micrograms. We're doing okay. Um, not it. I always want to press F6 for some reason when I want the conveyor overlay. I don't know why that is so hardwired in my brain wrongly hardwired in my brain to be precise um right here we need insulated tiles made out of igneous rock that's totally fine and let's see how far do we need them i need two tiles one two three four five six i would have to block off this entire pathway right here i would prefer not to do that how about we go the other direction now let's try that out once again we're coming down here so i need them right here I need two tiles right there, and then I need, once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And a seventh to close it off. So we need to build literally uh, this box right here. With a total of seven tiles, plus the eighth is going to be right here eventually. So yeah, this is what we're going to build. We're going to build it in this direction, just because I don't want to close off this pass here for the dupes. Because if I close this here off and somebody comes from up here and wants to go to down here, we'll have to go all the way around eventually. Trying to avoid that. So yeah. I propose to build one insulation pipe out, out from the ceramics in the lava chamber. Uh, which one? This one? You're probably referring to this liquid pipe right here, right? And I'm pretty sure I know why you want to build it out of ceramic. Uh, because it's going to be sitting in lava most of the time. Um, we can do that. We don't have any ceramic. We can just grab it. Um, at the moment, we still have access. That's a good idea. I like it. We're going to do it. We're going to make us 10 ceramic down here. Make it a number 9 priority so stuff actually happens. And we should be fine. 
even though this year is Obsidian, and Obsidian still only has a specific, uh, sorry, a thermal conductivity right here of uh, 0 0.063 in an insulated pipe, ceramic is still going to be better. So we are going to do it. You can build it in two rows, not one. You can build it in two rows. Um, not entirely sure what you mean, but two rows. But either way, in material, we're going to say change material. And once the ceramic here is available, we are going to build it out of there. And how will you add more tiles inside of a closed box? Yeah, you're right. I got distracted. We, of course, need to have this here open on the bottom so I can first put the tiles in. Not only those two here, actually. Um, let's see. How exactly can I do this the easiest way? I can stop this cancel, but I can cancel or better to say deconstruct this one and this one. Put ladders everywhere and the Duke should be able to reach all of that. Oh, that should be fine now. Up here on the top, as I said earlier, we will need a couple of things. We will need in shipping a conveyor meter. The conveyor meter is going to live right here. And then once we have that, we are going to build us metal tiles made out of aluminum. And we are going to plop them all along here. Plus this tile right here as well. Uh, that one here we definitely need as well. Can actually do that. We just need to make sure that this one here has a, a lower priority than all the others because I don't want the oil to escape uh, once they're deconstructed. So let's build this one here first, please. This specific one here I would like to have. Did you ever build a liquid valve to limit the flow of the magma? No, that one's still missing. We will get that here in a sec though. There we go. Now we have our six metal tiles, the one uh, that I wanted, plus our two extra spaces right here. Very, very nice. Uh, we're going to go back into shipping, going to grab us the conveyor meter, plop the conveyor meter right here. We're going to go ahead and grab us a automation wire, plop it into there. Then we need two more things. Once again, in shipping, we will need conveyor rails. So we're going to let the conveyor rails just come over here to the left. Um, and then all the way back through. We're not going to build a loop or anything fancy here. We will not need it. Um, what do we have the most of currently? We have iron ore. Let's use iron ore to come all the way through, probably here, and then we just got to come straight over and feed it into our main line. Something like that. And we have Goof with... 10 euros, first time live, been binging your content. Some thanks for all the entertainment. Greets from Belgium. From Belgium. Hello, former neighbor. And thank you very, very much for your 10 euro super chat. I truly appreciate it, Goof. Um, and I'm glad you could join today. That is awesome. That is really great. Um, I'm trying to have my Saturday streams at a reasonable time for both my American and my European audience. Uh, that's why I started 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in the United States. Um, so in over in Europe, it's uh, right around nine o'clock in the evening when I start, which should still be reasonable for anybody who is around to be able to join. So that's really, really nice. And I'm glad you could make it. <laughs> Looks like there is a bunch of unreachable builds on the bottom of the spawn. Yeah, of course, all these here, right? Yeah. Because we need some ladders in here. Um, you can't just build a row of ladders through here. Just temporarily so the dupes can reach it. Here they can come from the top. Here they can come from the top. But here obviously they can't go into the spawn. Therefore they can't do anything. AZ says I'm going to log off. See you in the vault tomorrow. Hey I'm glad you could join live today. At least for some time. Truly appreciate it AZ. I hope you have a good one. Is Belgian beer better than German beer? Absolutely not. We all know that. Those are facts that are undeniable. <laughs> hey, beer, what happened that you couldn't stream last week? Uh, my girlfriend made us an appointment to take some uh, uh, professional pictures. 
uh, right during my standard stream time, about an hour away from home. So, and I wasn't aware of that until it was too late. <laughs> so, yes, uh, that is exactly what happened. And then on Sunday, um, honestly, I just didn't feel good. Um, on Sunday, I felt all day long like a dog. Uh, so I was like, I wanted to repeat the stream on, on, on or I wanted to do this, this this stream that we're doing right now on Sunday. But I was like, I, I cannot sit here for five hours. So I spent most of my those uh, most of my day napping on the couch. Um, these wires right here, I can still get in there. Let's connect it right there. This one here, we're going to set up to and that's going to be trial and error. I'm going to start with the same value that we have down here. Actually, we have five down here. Usually I do three, I guess uh, we decided on five. Is it erupting? Erupting in 1.1 cycles. Good call, Croc. Thank you very much. Um, we need to finish this here up right, right away. Uh, we have a vacuum, therefore it doesn't matter. What's going to happen is the magma is going to flow along here and it's going to fall down here on the ground and it's not going to heat up anything. Um, the only problem is with what's going to drop in there. So in F2, we need to get rid of those wires here right away. Number nine priority, dupes. It's your job right now to get this here done ASAP. Um, in F7, we need to also get rid of all of these. We need to get especially rid of the vacuum pump. Because if we de uh, deconstruct the vacuum pump too late, the vacuum pump has actual plastic in it. The plastic is going to melt under our asses like it's nothing. So... Let's put all of this here on a number nine. We still have 1.1 cycles plus a countdown timer. So, so far, it's not the end of the world in any way, shape or form. Also, dupes, please do me a favor. Before you build this here, get rid of the subsidian because you're not going to use it anyway to build those tiles. We all know it. That's, of course, not happening, is it? Ah, it happened in the last second. Good. And now get rid of all this here, please. Do it now. Especially the stuff that's laying down here. And that should be it. One last check. Power check. Piping check. Um, automation, we don't have any. Therefore, there is no check. We literally have only power and piping in here. Everything's a check. Everything's good to go. The only thing that we need is... Petroleum up here. I already have a solution for that as well. Um, the petroleum, just thinking of where to do that. Do I need to do anything before I close this thing off? You can't just feed the petroleum straight across here into right there. The pump will, or the filter will filter it out, put it in here, and that will immediately turn on our pump. Um, we will need polluted water in here though. Where do I get polluted water from really quickly? Probably from right here. Yeah, let's see. How are we going to do this? We're going to come up, We're going to come straight over to here. We are once again just snipping it off. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't matter. Um, We're going to bring this pipe all the way through here, all the way down, and then probably just screw it right into there. That'll do. All that we need is now a liquid bridge. That we can plop into here and then we're going to snip this here off we're not going to put the water through here right now um we are just going to chill and we are going to put it straight over into our liquid reservoir temperature don't matter none of that matters this here now that we are going to pump water in here our thermal aqua tuna will eventually turn on so we need to be careful therefore we need some kind of fluid in here rather earlier than later in f2 everything's connected in F3, not at F3, in F6, our piping, we do need, I uh -huh, almost forgot about it, a liquid vent right here built out of literally anything. At that point, our magma should be cold enough. We were talking about the liquid valve earlier. That needs to live right around here. I'm going to probably build it out of steel just to be safe. Shouldn't matter, though. Um, this way around, please. And snip it off. Then right here is this pipe. As soon as I connect this pipe right here, we will have water flowing. You see anything else that we need? Nope. We can close this here off now and we should be good. 
And then temporarily, I'm going to build us a, another insulated tile right here, just so we can contain the water and it doesn't go all over the place. I think we are fine. Right here, let's put in those two. And we are golden. Backup save sounds like a good idea. I will save it. Okay. Um, not going to override it, though. I'm going to make a new save and I call it... Eight. Let's see here. We can plop this in. Now we can get the water up there. Of course, this here will never do anything for right now. Um, even though it is now connected to an output because of our bridge right here. It will always go through the bridge first. So yeah, thankfully we don't need a lot. Right here, we got to come up. It's, it will dry out our spawn here. But again, we don't need a hell of a lot of water. So it's uh, going to be... Uh, as a matter of fact, one goes up, one goes in. That works like a charm. Is the steam chamber vacuumed out? No, it's not. Uh, we are going to start with vacuuming it now, though, now that the walls are built. I'm just going to put the appropriate amount of water into this area right here, then send a dupe in again to get rid of this insulated tile right there. Uh, that's the entire idea. Um, for right now, though, I'm just going to accumulate it because it's much easier to do it on six tiles and then do the math for the entire length of this thing here. Um, but yes, our pump right here will now have to be turned on. And now we can pump it out. Thankfully, it shouldn't be too much gas in here. The area is rather small compared to what we had up here. So it shouldn't take very long either. Yeah, the one thing I forgot, of course, was this one um, piece of pipe right here. We wanted to make it out of uh, ceramic, which we now have. Um, should I dare? Should I dare do it in 0 0.5 cycles? No, the dupes can't even reach it because I would have to get rid of this insulated tile right here. So they can reach this tile right here. Then um, redo this tile. Uh, rebuild this insulated tile. Get rid of the debris and come back out. Uh, this one will, this one here will have to stay obsidian for now. Can't help it. Is what it is. So let's see. Right here we have a total of 34 tiles. Um, which means I want about 100 to 150 kilograms of uh, steam per tile. Which makes about 34 tons, uh, sorry, 3.4 tons worth of water. The insulated tile doesn't matter. Just build ladders and climb over the magma. Yeah, it's just... If the magma falls down when a dupe runs through, he's still not going to be happy about it. <laughs> We're just going to leave it. The, the, the thing is... Let's take a look real quick. Um... An insulated pipe right here has a thermal conductivity of 0 0.019, where with obsidian we have 0 0.06. So effectively, it's uh, worse by about 66% or so. It's still not going to be enough to really do any damage to our um, polluted water that's going to be flowing through here. It's going to be okay. I'm not too worried about it. Not too worried about it. Is the steam chamber vacuumed out? No, uh, you already asked that. Check your new blueprints. Uh, we have one more left over for today, I believe. Uh, so we are going to wait a little bit longer because I, it's only 5 o'clock here. I only started streaming about two hours ago. So it's um, we still have some time to go today, guys, to make sure that all this here works out just fine. What is entombed? Of course, what else would it be? Thankfully, nothing that matters. And get rid of this here before a dupe gets stuck again out there. I may have missed it, but did anyone ask how the pictures turned out yet? You mean the pictures I took with my girlfriend? We don't even have them yet. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell you how they turned out. I also don't know why I don't have them yet, to be very honest with you, because uh, that was last Saturday. Now it's a week later. So, uh, How much water do we have in here? We have 200 kilograms. Let's take another look once again. Not this area. This is the appropriate area, which is 30 tiles, actually, because we are going to have the wall right here. So it's going to be 30 tiles. If I want a 100 kilograms per tile, 
I want a total of three tons of water in here. We currently have 200 kilograms in six tiles. That makes 1.2 tons. We need a little bit more water. That's what that means. So, we're good. I checked replay. Pipe is from Obsidian. Which pipe? This pipe right here? Oh, it's Obsidian. Oh, yeah. The only relevant stat is melting point of the pipe. That's very true. It is the most uh, significant one, but uh, not only. Also, the thermal conductivity is somewhat important because the magma will give its heat into the water, which just increases the runtime of our uh, thermal aquatune and therefore our power usage. So, um, what Croc says is absolutely correct. Uh, we just need to be a little bit careful here. Um, the melting point here is 1800. Our magma comes out at 1700 so we could definitely do ceramic right here i just missed it i just missed it rails are not finished rails are not oh yeah this rail right here yeah i'm not worried about it we're gonna dig in here in a second it's not that big a deal uh but yeah i saw that this corner here is not done i thought i missed one in here that scared me for a second that would have been bad <laughs> I totally saw you meant you guys went and took pictures like nature photos. That's my bad. No, no. We went together with our dog and we got some professional pictures of us done because she uh, really wanted to have some professional pictures done. So that's what we did, you know. A little bit more water. Let's turn up the speed here a little bit. What are we actually waiting for? Not entirely sure. So right here we have it. Our volcano is actually erupting. Our magma is coming down here. It's coming down here. And nothing should happen quite yet. It should just sit there. No heat transfer should be occurring in any way, shape or form. This here is still nine long as it should be. It should never ever, no matter how much there is in here, get above this tile. Even if it's filled all the way to here, it should never come out of this tile. And it should never touch our pump. Uh, so when we take a look into our F3 overlay, we can, of see, uh, we can of course see our insulated liquid pipe right here is immediately shot up to 1722 uh, degrees. But other than that, we're just sitting here. We're just sitting here idle. Um, and the next time we are erupting is in 16 cycles. So this year is going to look exactly like that for quite some time. Um, I was talking about the petroleum, right? That I already have a solution for that as well. The solution is right here. We are literally just going to use the petroleum that we used for our liquid lock. It's only 200 kilograms, you think? But the truth is, we need way, way, way less than that. Um, other than that, um, let's see. Didn't I turn this here on? Apparently I didn't. The petroleum, or better to say, the polluted water is coming along now. And it's going to fill our piping. Can't forget about this here. We have now 400 kilograms uh, per tile. So we had 1.2 tons. Now we have 2.4 tons plus another 100 makes 500 kilograms. Yep. X3D already said it. I just see in chat 500 kilograms. Yep. Is what we need in here per tile to get 100 kilograms. Probably going to do slightly more than that just to be safe. Uh, like I said, between 100 and 150 is what I'm aiming for. It's not an exact number that we need in any way, shape or form though. So let's bring this here through. I really hope that our water here is not instantly going to explode. It shouldn't. Um, right down here on the bottom, we're going to set this here to negative five as usual, though. Anything else that we need? A rail thermal sensor. I did connect this thing here, right? Yes. And I actually set it already up as well. So let's see what happens when our water goes through this pipe right here. Not a hell of a lot. Oh yeah, of course. At the moment, I'm still having water come in here. That is now a big problem, as a matter of fact. Can I just go ahead and do something like this? Like this? Um, like this and like that? I need to keep the water flowing. We don't want to have it sitting here. That would be a massive issue. Um, so how much water do we have? 511. That's exactly as much as we need. Perfectly fine. And we can let our water here rotate around and around. 
Very, very nice. Yeah. That's what that should look like. 13 degrees. So our liquid pump right here is currently not getting any heat transfer, I believe. Not until we actually get the petroleum involved. Now we can get rid of this tile right here to have access to our petroleum. Put a pump in here just temporarily. And then come back with the same pipe that we already have. And feed it into here. And that is then basically the moment we are going to start up the entire system. So that is going to be the very, very last thing that we do. Yeah, the Thermaco Tuna is uncooled. You are right, Jay. We need to wait a little bit of turning this thing here on. So, we gotta wait a tiny little bit until our vacuum here is actually completed. How much more do we have left in here? Shouldn't be that much. 58 milligrams. We're getting there. Let's see. We could replace this pump here with a vacuum pump, though. Does that make sense anymore? Not sure. It's so low. We are almost done. There's no point in doing that. It's totally fine. Not entirely sure what my dog is seeing. In case you guys can hear him. I think the polluted water stopped. It shouldn't stop anytime soon. We got plenty in here. Four tons per tile. I just want to have this tank here maybe about halfway filled. Uh, about 2,500 kilograms or so. Should be fine. He turned the speed up and even the dog barks faster. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's funny, though. Can you send a kiss to your dog for me, Beer? Oh, believe me, he gets, he gets plenty of kisses. I love that thing to death. Alright, 2,500 are reached. It's actually more than I wanted. In F6, we can just go ahead and turn our pump off right here. So, pump is off. Turn up the speed. We are already all the way up, actually. There we go. Let's get let it get past right around here. That's all I need. Then we can pause it. There we go. So now we can just do something like this. See if we can snip it off right there. We can snip it off right here. We can snip it off right there. And then we can get rid of uh, most of it, actually. We don't need to uh, deconstruct this here anymore. All of this can go. This pipe is now for nothing. This pipe we can hook back up where it belongs. Uh, this pipe right here, we can deconstruct all the way. Right here, we can bring that back together and get rid of all of this here, including, of course, our wonderful liquid bridge. There we go. And that should bring everything instantly, more or less at least, back to its original state uh, without any major issues. Reusing pipes that I have just laying around in my base is something that I love to do. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, one more thing, though. I don't like where this insulated liquid pipe here is going. Let's change it up just a notch and make it something like this here. Why that is, you will see later. All is made out of obsidian. Still, once again, that is where our um, uh, magma is going to come through. And then this here, before I forget it later, though, that's going to be highly important. We got to set it to 999 grams a second. F6, everything's working fine. The magma is going to come through here. And we have vacuum achieved from the looks of it, which means, in other words, we can get rid of this uh, pump right here. Right away. In F7, deconstruct everything, including the gas vent. In F2, get rid of this here. We don't need it anymore. Um, then right here, we're going to build us a tile. And then we're going to get rid of this tile right here in turn. There we go. The aqua tuna will be cooled by the steam, yes, but not up until we get rid of this insulated tile right here. Um, so now the water is going to come over. And now that the water is going to come over, we can uh, actually, this is just going to get sent out. Or not, because we have it still not connected yet. Um, but we can take care of it very simply by getting rid of our debris real quick. And once we have done that, we can clean it all up get it all done here there we go let's see all this here will be just fine uh, i guess you'll be in your garage just standing around in there will you please walk out there thank you what are you doing in there jim get out of there everything else 
should be just fine, I believe. How do you get your dupes so fast, in the sense of how fast they run? Uh, it's a mod. Um, usually you have up here, slow speed is one time speed, medium speed is two times speed, and fast speed is three times speed. I have it set up that slow is one, medium is three, and fast speed is actually ten times speed. Alt and Z. What does Alt and Z do? Not entirely sure what the shortcut Alt and C is for. <laughs> but no, that is definitely not it. It's a mod. Um, it's called Speed 13, 0, 17 or something like that. Um, not entirely sure where exactly that's coming from. Or better to say what it's called. Yeah, it's called Speed 13017. If you Google for that, or better to say, look at it up in the Steam Workshop, you can do that and you can just do it. It's a debug option for X Speed. That's why I don't know it, because I never use it, because I have it already modded anyway. Um, you know, especially during the time when I made um, quote unquote normal YouTube videos, I, I guess you could say, um, it came in really handy in between the cuts. Uh, because one of those videos that takes on YouTube 20 to 30 minutes was in reality uh, playtime of like four hours, you know. So um, having the 10 times speed available for something like that was a lifesaver for me. All right, let's bring the ladder down. Let's dig into this chlorine gas here. I really don't care what you do, chlorine gas. You can just take over over here. It doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, the last thing that we need, of course, is the actual way to turn this entire thing here on in plumbing. Croc says, I'm a bit sleepy, but I'll wait for the liquid valve to overheat. It'll be fine. Trust me. It'll be okay. <laughs> uh, let's hook this up. Let's come over here. And we're going to just hook it up right there in a second. Actually, we don't have any power yet, so we can do it right away. Did you ever run coolant through the debris cooler? Shit, that is what I forgot. I never ran any coolant through here, did I? Good call, Jay. Yeah, I did forget about that. How are we gonna fix that in the easiest way possible? Probably. Uh, yes, the aqua tuna can be turned back on here in a second as well. Probably going to deconstruct these tiles here once again. Just like we did before. Uh, that should make everything reachable, I hope. If I can just come... How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? We're going to come through here. And then we're going to switch over to radiant liquid pipes in here. We're going to come all the way along. Uh, then with radiant or with insulated liquid pipe back out over. And then we're going to have a bridge right here. And the bridge is going to go back up which we are then going to snip off eventually. Let's see if we can build it like that. But yes, the Aqua Tuna can now go back to life. That is very true. All right. I really hope we can build it like that. I don't think anything should be unreachable, except maybe this one tile over here, which should also be reachable latest now. There we go. Oops, just gotta do it, and we should be golden. But they're currently building, of course, all of those uh, liquid pipes up here. I think it's looking pretty decent. I think we have a pretty good chance of survival here, let me put it that way. This error message is really highly annoying. I really don't care about this damn um, carbon dioxide engine here. <laughs> Let's just get rid of it, probably. Because next time we are going to go to space, we're gonna go with a real rocket, that's for sure. Okay, almost ready. Oh yeah, earlier I did. Uh, do remember, I, I thought it was 800 kilograms that we were going to have in here. 
and it turns out it is 800 kilograms at the uh, third tile over. So just in case you guys are interested, these values here um, are always the same. And that's why it also only flows for a total of 10 tiles before it stops completely. And the last tile after those 10 is going to be at 50 kilograms, if I'm not mistaken. And look at this here. The cooling loop has been built. Thanks for the reminder, Jay. I'm telling you, with a build like this here, to forget a minor part somewhere is extraordinarily simple or easy to do. No matter how long you play the game or how often you play the game, you cannot tell me that you have built a build of this magnitude with literally everything you can throw at it and you don't forget a thing. It's just going to happen. It's totally normal and not a problem at all. As long as you know how to fix it, that is, of course. <laughs> so right at the moment, this thing here is set up to uh, an insanely small amount. So let's go faster. Let's empty this entire chamber here out. Perfect. Let's set it back to three. Okay. Last but not least, everything should now be done. With the exception of uh, this one tile here, of course, we will need that as well. It's deconstructed. Um, to be ready to turn it on. What else can we do? We can get rid of this pipe here. We don't need it anymore in F2. We can already go ahead and hook up our pump. Once it's hooked up, we need one single lob of 10 kilograms of um, petroleum. That's all we need. So let's see if we can grab that. Right here, 10 kilograms, all we need. You're done. You can bring it up. Let's see. We're going to let it come down a little bit further. And we're just going to snip it somewhere right there. And we're going to hold it in limbo right here. So we can use it whenever we need it. And at that point, once again, we can get rid of all the stuff that we have sitting around right here. We don't need it anymore. And at that point, I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this petroleum right here. Um, which is not a lot, down here into this area to help cool down our steam turbines just a little bit. Uh, I really don't have no other place to put that petroleum, so I might as well use it for something somewhat useful, I guess. Uh, that's the general idea here. All these pipes right here, we don't need them anymore either. And let's get rid of all of them. There we go. I'm still bought up out of debris behind the ladder next to the pump. All this here will go. All this here is absolutely not necessary and will disappear, including that piece of debris over here. <laughs> so, not to worry. We will get rid of it. John says, okay, I've reinstalled the game. Gonna start a new colony and see if I can get over that... Um, over that damn cooling loop. There it is. I'm just blind as a bat. I'm telling you guys today. It's crazy. I am sure you can do it. I have absolute faith in you. John, you got it. It's the same like with everything. Once you figure it out, the most complicated thing in the world is going to seem easy to you. You know, it's, it's just that simple. It takes a little bit of training, a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of empirical testing. But once you get there, it's going to become second nature like everything else. Now, let's clean up a little bit here. I want to wait a couple more seconds here. Like I said, I want this petroleum, and preferably even this petroleum here, maybe. Um, might as well. Yeah, how much do we have here? We have 66 kilograms down here on the bottom. Not a 66, not a 66. Up here we have 84, and here we have 83. Um, so we should have roughly a total of 400 kilograms for this entire room right here. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Um, since we have everything nearby, it's just going to take a few seconds. Might as well do it. We're just going to grab a pump. We're going to plop it in here. Um, any kind of pipe. Don't care what it is. Just bring it up here for God's sake. Right there. Um, actually, let's bring it higher so we don't have to mess with our um, ladder right here. And let's put in a liquid vent real quick. And we're going to pump this stuff up here, and then we're just going to let it drop straight down. It's going to be easy. And yes, you're right, the petroleum bottle right here. Can I please select the petroleum bottle? Are you the bottle? You are the bottle. You're just going to empty it right here. You're going to cancel the sweeping. 
So all of the stuff is going to be right in here. And of course, power. Gonna hook that up as well. Our thermal micro tuna is already getting rid of all the water. We can see the water disappearing, and we can see that the steam is getting more slowly but steadily. So it's going to be nice and ready for the magma to arrive. My colonies will be glorious and infinite. If I can cool water for infinite food and oxygen, oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always those damn if questions, aren't they? Maybe I should build another ladder here so I can actually get there. That would be nice, maybe. Um, but other than that, yeah. We're good. Matter of fact, don't even need this here anymore. Oh, the speed is on one times on accident. Yeah, we don't want that. I was like, why is nothing moving? Mop, move bottles, then empty. The move to command is a game changer versus building a pump. That would have worked too. I keep forgetting about it. I'm not going to lie. This whole move to command is something that I outright ignore. You guys know it from the last streams. I barely ever do it. And I don't know why. That is not on purpose. It's just a function that I have not used before because it didn't exist. <laughs> and now I just can't get myself to bloody use it. Even though I really should because, of course, Doc, you are 100% correct. That would have been about 50 times easier than the entire structure that I just built. Even though it was still relatively simple. But yes, true, it would have been much easier to do it your way. That is something I really, really need to actively think about and, and use properly. Crazy. It's new. We've learned how to solve problems without it. Yeah, that's, that, that's literally it, you know. It's really hard if you've been doing one thing for so long to then get used to another. It's, it's like the same thing with everything, right? Um, like if you work for a company and you get a, a new piece of equipment and with new technology, and you're used to doing it a different way. It will take some time to get used to it, even though the new way is much, much better. But once you are getting behind the new way, um, you will never even think about the old way again. All right, let's uh, rip out those insulated tiles right here. Those two right here, we can get rid of it. This one right there, we can get rid of it. The ladder can uh, die a horrible death. Hey, beer, your system works. Now I have infinite cold cobalt. Awesome. That is great to hear. Um, yeah. Always love it when a plan comes together. Let's build us one tile right there. Uh, so we have our petroleum, preferably only in one single tile. Uh, that is the plan here. There we go. Let's build us another one right beside it. And we're going to get rid of our debris. There will still be one piece of debris down there, and there's a uh, not a damn thing I can do about it. I mean, I could theoretically open this here back up. This is not a vacuum or anything. I will probably do precisely that, actually. Just to make it all look nice and dandy. There we have it. And here we have 389 kilograms. Again, that is just a random number. That just happens to be what it is. I didn't plan for that in any way, shape, or form, though. And there we have it. Of course, there's a piece of carbon dioxide that we won't get rid of, but that's totally fine. We could just build like a, um, uh, at least temporarily build a uh, airflow tile to get rid of it, but I don't care about it. If this one tile here doesn't have petroleum, it's not going to be the end of the world and not worth worrying about it at all. Let's get rid of those two tiles, break back in, get rid of the debris, close it back off, and we are done. Brandon says, Guten Tag, Guten Tag, Brandon, how are you doing? And with Brandon arriving here, I'm just seeing we have reached 90 viewers. 90. That is an absolute new record for my stream. So guys, I truly appreciate you guys joining in and uh, witnessing this insanity. We are literally seconds away from turning this thing here on and we will see if it explodes or not. Uh, 
well, it's going to be one or the other. <laughs> Either it's going to work like a charm or it's going to blow up badly. So we will see uh, which option we will have here at the end. Your guess is literally as good as mine at this point. And Jay says, but only 55 likes. Jay is 100% correct. Guys, if you enjoy what you're seeing, and of course, if you want to help me out a little bit, uh, press that like button. It doesn't cost a dime, and it helps me out greatly. You know the game. You have definitely been long enough on the YouTube if you happen to stumble across my stream. Alright, everything's good. Everything's fine. Two more insulated tiles, and we are once again ready to roll. Not out of obsidian, though. Um, not that we have a shortage of anything, but it's just an unnecessity. It's not a real run without some sour gas and scalding. Speaking of sour gas, I do actually have some plans for this oil down here, even though it currently doesn't look like it, but um, I do plan on using this magma down here um, to create our own version of uh, somewhat of a petroleum boiler. Uh, we will see how that works out. Uh, that's not going to happen today either, though, but uh, it's definitely going to happen in the future. Um, unless we are going to try to make this minor volcano into a petroleum boiler. But I think I'm going to try the uh, the bottle emptier option that we talked about earlier. So yeah, we will see. There is definitely a lot on the horizon uh, that we can do with this uh, map right here. Um, our home base is not going to run out of things to do here anytime soon. All right. <laughs> Sin, another five gifted memberships to the channel. Sin, you are an insane animal. I keep telling you that. You know it, I'm right. Thank you so, so much for those uh, five gifted memberships to Logan, to Papa, to David, to Charles, and to Benson. Thank you very much for that, Sin. You're nuts. New high score, screw commercials. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope you guys don't get too many uh, commercials. I have it turned down to the lowest possible thing. And Caesar says, liked. Appreciate that, Caesar. Thank you very much. But okay. Let's go through it one last time before we introduce the petroleum, because the, the, the petroleum is going to turn on our entire system. In F2, we have power coming from this large power transformer right here. It's going into this conductive wire right here, coming all the way through. Uh, into our thermal macro tuner down here to our conveyor meter we have a conveyor shut off a conveyor loader a auto sweeper a liquid pump and a liquid filter all of it combined 1820 watts of potential load so one wire is more than enough uh, other than that of course we just need to come out here out of, out of our steam turbine so yeah no problem um in f6 right here we can take a look at our uh, piping our piping right here looks a little bit insane, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Here we have our thermal aqua tuna. From the thermal aqua tuna, we're going to come out and straight into our liquid reservoir. Back here, we're going to cool down all of our steam turbines. And then right here, we have a conductive panel. And this conductive panel is going to keep our liquid pump here cold. Uh, the liquid pump is not going to heat up from the magma, but it is located in a vacuum. So we need to cool it somehow because just from running, it is actually generating 2 kilo DTUs of heat per second. So eventually it will overheat if it just keeps running constantly. And that is exactly what we are going to do here. We are going to run this in here 24 seven. It will never turn off. So then we're going to come back out with our water. We're going to come back down here, going through our cold box and then back into our thermal tuner. Just as simple as that. And then over here on the top, uh, we are Picking up our petroleum that is going to be in this tile and our magma in this tile, slapping it into this pipe, into this filter. In the filter, we are going to separate the petroleum back out into right here, uh, this liquid vent. And our magma is going to come along this pipe right here all the way through into this liquid valve here. This liquid valve here will reduce the amount of magma going through the pipe from 10 kilograms all the way down to 999 grams per second. And then we're going to come through here with the radiant liquid pipes. Going all the way through our steel chamber. Oh, sorry. Not steel chamber. Steam chamber. And we're going to drop it right there. Uh, yeah, literally this simple. Um, what are we going to do when it, when it drops right there? By that time, it should be cold enough to come out immediately as debris. Uh, once it's debris, we're going to pick it up with this auto sweeper right here. We're going to plop it right into our conveyor loader. The conveyor loader throws it out to the right. It goes around here through this conveyor bridge. This conveyor bridge here is only here 
to actually um, tell the debris in what direction to go. And then we're going to come back over here to a, another conveyor shutoff. And this conveyor shutoff right here is controlled. If the temperature is higher than 200 degrees, we are going to go around again. If it is below 200 degrees, we're going to come down to this conveyor meter. This conveyor meter here, I don't know yet what the value is. We will have to check that out. Currently, it's set to three uh, uh, units as a limit. Maybe we need less, maybe we need more. Probably more than less, so we will see how that goes. And then we literally just bring it all the way through to our main storage area, which happens to be right here. Yeah, that is the entire system. Uh, we can take another quick look into the automation overlay so you can see it all once again. Right here we have our liquid pipe thermal sensor, negative 5 degrees into the thermal aqua tuner. And then right here, the conveyor rail thermal sensor, more than 200 degrees, goes into our conveyor shutoff. And that's the entire automation. There's nothing else here. That's all it is. All right. Uh, good grief, my throat, I'm telling you guys. That was a lot to talk about. Uh, don't you need automation for the steam turbines? You could do that and we may implement that later. Uh, we will see how it goes. It's going to be a little bit of a trial and error here with those steam turbines. Maybe I will implement a smart battery and automate them here. I don't know yet. I just don't know yet. We will see. <coughs> uh, what's the volcano still buried to the left of this soon to be tamed volcano? Uh, that is an infection. Well, I need to get me a drink here in a second, guys. Um, this here is an infectious polluted oxygen vent. Uh, completely pointless. Only had two short ads since we started. That's not disturbing at all. That's awesome, goof. Uh, like I said, um, I don't want to turn it off completely because I'm pretty sure that YouTube is going to show you ads anyway. And I won't even get those three cents that I usually get. <laughs> um, so I have it set to the lowest settings in ads. But let's stop stalling. Let's connect this here. Go down with the speed. And let's see what happens. Uh, this one here is set to 10 this one here is set to petroleum, and this one here is set to 999. That should work exactly as prescribed. So, our drop of petroleum is coming through here. It's going into the filter. The filter is going to throw it into right here. And right here, we have 10 grams coming out. At this point, we're going to snip this here off. Let's get rid of everything that we don't need right away. Now that it's coming through here, it will be dropped onto this panel right here, where this pump here is picking it up immediately. And we can see uh, we have now petroleum right here, 20 grams, followed by magma, followed by petroleum, followed by magma, followed by petroleum. Um, let's leave this here open so we can actually see it. The magma is now coming down. The dupes are deconstructing um, insulated liquid pipes right now. That's why it was uh, lagging a little bit. So yeah. All right, right here. This here is going to come into this liquid valve right here. And then it's going to come in here. And this here is going to be the moment of truth. Yes, it works. Because if it would have broken, it would have broken right away. Let's see what is going to be our temperature once we get all the way to the back. Why is it picking up magma? Well, that is the interesting point. You see this green outline right here? This is all the places the pump can reach. But the pump only cares about what's here on the right side. As long as there is liquid right here, the pump will pump. And it will also pump out from this magma right here if it is inside of this green circle. So this here has a name which I can't remember for the life of me right now. Am I crazy? Sure one of you guys in chat knows. Um, I will remember here shortly. It's laying on the tip of my tongue, as you say so nicely. Um, it will pick up the magma right here and the petroleum right there. That's all it's going to do over and over again. Okay, very nice. All this here looks good. Our auto sweeper is picking it up, throwing it into the conveyor loader, which sends it around. Again, this here is set to... Uh, above 200 degrees Celsius, which we are going to be far away here for a good while. Uh, the system here has to run for a while, I would assume, to get up uh, full force. But yeah, that's how the system works. And theoretically, we should have never, uh, we should never have any kind of heat exchange here if it works properly, because the magma does not actually touch the liquid pump. But we are basically exploiting more or less the liquid pump. 
even though exploiting is a somewhat harsh word for what we built here clearly this is an intended way because this here is how the liquid pipe uh, liquid pump has been designed for a very very long time and the devs have never changed it so i'm sure they did it on purpose let's take a look right here oh yeah our igneous rock is coming out at a negative degrees who is starving Elfie is starving. Why are you starving? We have 148,000 kilocalories. Uh, you should be doing just fine. And why do we only have 150,000 calories? And why do we have polluted dirt here? What is going on? You are not cold enough. That's what's going on. You are just refrigerated. You are not deep frozen anymore because we are only at negative 7 degrees. Uh, Croc player, can you check the temper on the magma valve? Yep, we can do that here in a second. I'm just trying to find me a different location real quick. Probably up here. Uh, let's put those in here. Um, and let's relocate our food. I didn't pay attention to it because I was so focused on building this here without killing everything uh, that I did not notice that right here our, our fridges are not in a cold enough area anymore to actually be deep frozen. And that is of course an issue. That's why our food here, even though we have more than enough food coming in, is not going up. So yeah. I'm actually glad that Elfie was just starving. Uh, so we could actually catch this here really quickly. Can you check the temp? Yep, yep, we can check the temp. I don't know exactly what you want to see. I'm pretty sure you meant this one here is going to kill us. Um, not likely. It will eventually, if we are running 100% of the time, which we will not. Um, that is actually a um, benefit of being on Rhyme, because our outside temperature here is so nice and cold, uh, that it will take a lot for this liquid valve here to overcome the outside cold. It would do that with a major volcano, and it would do that probably um, if it's running 100% of the time. In this case, I would actively cool it. But I don't foresee any problems whatsoever right now. Same here goes for our liquid filter. I don't foresee any problems here anytime soon. We are going to erupt one more time in 11.1 .1 cycles. And then we are going to go dormant. As a matter of fact, on top of everything else. So yeah. We shouldn't have any trouble here. And we will see where we end up. There is so cold, but I saw the temp. Oh yeah, the temperature is rising. I'm not gonna deny that. It's actually rising right now on a higher speed quite drastically, but it's not going to go to a temperature where it's going to hurt anything uh, before we run out of magma. I doubt it. I don't think so, at least. Again, I've never tested it, so there's no telling. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, do you have a deep freezer single tile automatic kitchen? I do not. Um, that's not something I have built yet. Could I build it? Of course, but no, I have not done that yet. Um, so at the moment, I'm just using my environment to my benefit. I have these fridges up here in an area where we are at negative 34 degrees. I don't have to do anything. I just put in the fridges. And no power, no nothing. I'm going to let them bring the food up here. And that should probably be good enough for a good while. Uh, to keep it cold. Eventually we will have to build something like this here, yeah, but it's uh, not really that important. <sighs> Let's see. All good. All good. All good. And down here. We are slowly but steadily getting there. What I'm more concerned about than this liquid valve crock is honestly those insulated liquid pipes right here because you can see it rising and if we wait long enough um we can actually kind of see it already it will heat our environment here drastically um i knew this uh this would happen it would be much much worse if it wouldn't be on rhyme of course so on rhyme it, it doesn't really show up right now even though we are at 128 degrees if that would happen if, if we would build the same thing over here on smelina we would have a problem really quickly. So what we could do is, we could rebuild them instead of obsidian, out of ceramic, as Jay says, 
Or uh, we're just going to make our life even easier and literally just build tiles over him. And that is exactly why I relocated them to the point where they are right now. We're just going to put insulated pile, uh, tiles over him and we will never have a problem. <coughs> oh, I do need to get me a drink real quick, guys. Give me uh, a couple seconds here. And you know what? While we're at it, probably going to head to the bathroom real quick as well. Um, I guess you guys can just watch the uh, glory of uh, this build right here. And um, if you're lucky, it will break while I'm not here. <laughs> I guess we will see. Give me about uh, two minutes or so, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, and I'm back. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Damn it, Sin. <laughs> Talks about Smilina, then needs a bio break. Sus. <laughs> uh, that is hilarious. Okay, let's see. Everything's still good? Anything broken? <laughs> Be your jump scare. God, I got scared. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Um, uh, let's take another look into our F3 overlay. Yeah, we can slowly but steadily see it. So even though those are insulated liquid pipes and made out of obsidian, they're still going to release a ton of heat into the environment. So we got to stop that from happening. And our liquid valve is now at a comfortable 12 degrees with an overheat temperature of 275. So we are still doing fine. Evaporating water under the magma pipes. Evaporating water under the. Uh, uh, not entirely sure what you mean. Where are we looking at? <laughs> Good night, everyone. It was fun for me to play with all of you. Croc, appreciate it. You know it. I always, always appreciate your um, uh, your input. Thank you very much for that. Just above the spawn, bottled water. Just above the spawn. Oh, right here. That water is not going to evaporate. What's the temperature of it? Negative 15 degrees. Oh, that's brine right here. Okay, we just need to uh, um, mop it up a little bit. We really need to find a storage solution for our salt because we don't have anything for brine or salt water. Yeah, that's brine. Okay, so the igneous rock right here is coming out at negative uh, 4, negative 5 degrees. It's all good. This is more than sufficient. It's actually too cold if you ask me. Let's increase it to like 6 and see what that does. Gotta pause the game for that though because it will not take your value otherwise. So let's see what we get at 6 kilograms per... Um, is it actually going to go that high? Apparently not. It's just random values anyway. That's funny, actually. It can hold up to 20 kilograms, but it doesn't. 
makes sense because this year is not all the way filled up. Once this year, once this looper would fill all the way up, uh, we would put it into our conveyor loader. But yeah, there's no point in doing so. Let's get it out of here as quickly as we can. Negative five degrees still. Still no issues whatsoever. <clears throat> Poke shell area for the brine where you plan to build that mold farm. Yeah, that's probably something like that that we're going to do. I do want to build a um, um, a poke shell farm where we feed one of them and starve the rest to death. Um, it's going to happen. I think I talked about it briefly in the uh, last um, stream. There's a lot of things that I want to do. It's just a matter of in what order do I do it. <laughs> and it usually it doesn't really matter too much. Like, why did I build this here? Because I wanted to test it. Do we need igneous rock right now? No. Do we need power right now? Definitely not. So, it's really just a matter of what I feel like fits pretty much into the stream right now. And especially what would be somewhat interesting to you guys. And I think this build here is uh, certainly on the more interesting side. And I think I like what I did here. Uh, the only thing that I would do differently is I would build this chamber here a little bit smaller. There's no point in having it this big in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't need to be this big. It doesn't give us any benefit or nothing. So, yeah. Um, for a little bit of uh, last cleanup right here, we don't need any of these walls right here. Um, let's go to buildings and let's get rid of all of this stuff here. We don't need any of it. With this ladder here, though, a ladder, I said, we're going to come all the way straight down. Oh yes, yeah, Melina needs Igneous. Thank you, Goof. Oh wait, Smelina is getting Igneous. How much have we already put over there? Didn't we have like 147 tons earlier? No, it was 247 tons, wasn't it? I think we put Igneous Rock over there the entire time, didn't we? Oh god. Let's see. Yep, fair enough. Igneous Rock. 100.7 tons. Yeah, I, I think I think we have more than enough now. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's not going to be an issue anymore now. Oh, God. Did you at least do something with it? Why and, and not die in the process? Apparently so, yeah. Okay, good. At least something. So right here, I'm just going to come down. I'm going to get rid of this snow right here, probably. And we are going to build us a... Where are we at? A storage bin. We shouldn't need more than one. Best case scenario is it's freezing cold and we have a V's word here. I mean, literally, we have literally the um, 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 radiation directly built in. I mean, what else could we ask for, right? We're going to set this here to left. And then up here, I'm just going to go boldly ahead and dig through the slime area right here. Because I don't care. Then down here on the left side, we've got to come down. We will need a ladder, of course, so we can go up and down here. Oh yeah, that should be all. Uh, down here, once we have the storage bin, we just need to make sure that we set it to slime. We're going to put the slime in here, and we just don't care about it. Simple. Does radiation affect food? It will kill the germs, but it does not harm the um, uh, food itself in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, no, we are, we are totally fine. Side note, how is research going? Uh, the answer is not at all. I don't think we have anything to research right now. Um, we will need to research some stuff eventually, though. We have the small petroleum rocket. Isn't that the last thing we did? I believe so. Um, but we can take a look. We can definitely get our space program ready to roll. We have the basic nose cone. We have the space for a module. We need that. All that's actually fine. It looks like we have everything that we need. Eventually, I want the drill cone, uh, but that's not needed right now. At the moment, we first need to get us uh, more research here. That's going to be the next rocket, something that can stay in space a hell of a lot longer. Um, so, yeah. I don't think we need anything right this moment. That is the truth of it, though, sadly enough. Uh, the wall toilet. There we go. Now we have something that we need. And as a matter of fact, let's go all the way through here. We are going to grab the desalinator while we are at it. The wall toilet is needed. Um, 
large liquid fuel tank will also be needed eventually. Anything else here? Large gas cargo um, canister. Definitely something that we should have. And the solid oxidizer tank. So, okay. So we need this. And we need the catalyst. We need the uh, caffeination. And advanced sanitation. That should be everything we need. There we go. Pirate Software finished streaming. Cool to see you streaming. Uh, sorry to say, but I don't know who Pirate Software is. <laughs> but I'm glad you found your way here. So let's finish this here up. And then we will see. So here we have actually two volcanoes right beside each other. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with those yet. And here's another full-blown... So th those are three full-blown volcanoes. Not even minor or anything. There's just full big boy, uh, three big boys sitting here. And up here on the top, we have another minor. So our entire base is basically on three sides encased in uh, volcanoes. Isn't that something? Pirate Software broke all the Twitch hype train records recently. Huh. Really? I can't say... I mean, I have barely time to make my own content, so I don't really have much time to watch other streamers, truth be told, as sad as that is. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't been on Twitch for a long, long time, honestly. Can we please treat this area down here with a little bit of respect? Thank you. I'd never heard of him, and now he's everywhere. That's fascinating. Like, uh, what does he stream? <laughs> Is he a gamer, or IRL, or uh, what are we talking? Every time I remind you, you end up seeing something you need. You're not wrong. Um, where? What? How? Why? What? There's nothing even up there. What are you doing? And why are we not pumping anything out here? Oh, we are still at uh, 1,000 kilograms. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, the water from our uh, water geyser right here is going completely uncooled straight down this pipe all the way through. We are using it itself, actually, to cool down our cool steam vent right here. Um, and then we're going to go straight down here into this infinite storage, which currently has no other purpose in life than to feed our spawn. Um, currently, it's really hard to tell. 8,000, 4,000 kilograms per tile. I guess you can try to figure out the average yourself here, but it's plenty. It's plenty. But back to over here. I would really like to get the storage bin in. Uh, let's turn the speed up so the dupes wake back up. He's a gamer developer, supposedly. But as I said, he was uh, just streaming the hype train itself. Okay. If there was anything else going on, I'll have to stream before it resumed, okay? <laughs> no, no, I, I've never heard of him. But I guess I will have to take a peek and uh, see what the current meta is. What else do we have here? Uh, that's still Igneous right here. Um, that they're waiting for. That right here is going to be Diamond, which we don't have. That's going to be Gold. And we're probably just going to replace everything that's made out of Gold, including our piping with Cobalt. That will be fine. Pirate Soft is a bit overrated. He's 20% substance and 80% internet culture. Again, I cannot say anything about it because I have no idea. <laughs> Not the slightest idea. Uh, can I set it to slime? Yes, I can with a number nine priority. Let's plop it all down there. And let's see if we can get the uh, roundabout here done a little bit quicker. That'd be nice. I mean, what's more meta than a stream which is 100% dominated by excitement about how popular and successful the streamer is? <laughs> I guess so. 
I guess that's a way to look at it. Oh. I mean, if that's the only topic of the stream, though, I don't know about that. <laughs> <clears throat> Claim to fame is he worked at Blizzard and became an indie game developer. I mean, I would assume that being an indie game developer is probably better than working for Blizzard, but... <laughs> I mostly enjoy shorts, lots of cool life advice. Yeah, again. Never heard of him in my life. That's the first time ever that somebody mentioned that. I have never seen a YouTube video like the YouTube algorithm. Never, ever recommended uh, him to me or anything apparently it's not my content at all <laughs> at least not according to the algorithm let's see here of course everything up here is now full of slime lung that was expected and that's also okay we are going to build us probably though i do not want to lose that much heat out of this area right here if at all possible so what am i gonna do here um Going to build me some insulated tiles right here. Um, probably not all the way up there. Here we have abyssalite. The abyssalite doesn't matter. Probably straight along here and over. And then where the abyssalite stops. Once again. Just so we can contain the cold. Just a little bit. Uh, once upon a time, I worked at Activision Blizzard King. I miss it from time to time. Really? I wonder how that is. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm personally not that big of a fan of Blizzard as a whole. I mean, their company culture and overall. Obviously, I've never worked for them, so I don't know if it's completely different on the inside and everything that goes to the media is just all garbage. I mean, who knows? But just from what I can see with my outside eye, I cannot see say that I'm impressed by, by Blizzard. In really any regard, honestly. Alright, let's take another look at our mini pod here. Not looking for another dupe. I'm also not looking for a vault pup, though. I mean, if everything else fails, we can feed on it, but... Eh. You know what, I'm gonna grab it. And I'm just gonna eat it. If we need one, we can always get us one later. I'm not too worried about it. Today's Blizzard is not the same company we grew to love back in the day. Those are some true words there, Doc. I think that back in the day, they were a great company. I think today, there is nothing there that I'm impressed about anymore. To be very precise. <clears throat> like the days when World of Warcraft came out first and whatnot. Oh my god. I think, uh, I think that was the high time for them. And ever since, it just, you know... It's like Wrath of the Lich King. It just went straight downhill. I mean, Diablo 3 and all the other games that they have. They're just not that good anymore. They got too comfortable on their success. He was in the Spiffing Brit video a few days after the re record stream. Not Spiffing Brit's best video either. And, well, I'm not a giant fan of his work to begin with. <laughs> well, we're not here to hate on other streamers, guys. No matter... Uh, how big or small they may be. Um, doesn't really make a difference from a principal standpoint. <clears throat> I was on a COD team for five years. Uh, the group of people I worked with were great, but uh, so -called, but SoCal being SoCal had to move. Um, Call of Duty. Here comes a hot take. Ever since Call of Duty 2, it went straight downhill. Call of Duty 2 was still the best Call of Duty that was ever made, in my opinion. I love that game. I still pray today. Blizzard seems to push more microtransactions than anything else. That's literally their entire um, um, business model, yeah. Reorder Diablo 4 despite knowing better. Never again. Well, nobody can help you on that one. Sorry. <laughs> You knew better, indeed. <laughs> Finn says, here's a super chat, let's talk about squirrels. <laughs> Thank you for the two dollars, I appreciate that, Sin. And have you ever seen those tales of those squirrels, guys? Isn't that insane? 
<laughs> yeah, before it's just a hard grind mess. Yeah. And I haven't played it. I have watched uh, a couple of YouTube videos about it, though, but uh, yeah. Again, can't say I'm impressed. All right, so we have now our area that goes around. You are set to slime with a number nine priority. And what do we not have is slime. Why? Um, do we not have our parity set up correctly here? Apparently not. We have no supplying. We have no tidying. Um, you're set to researching. No. But you are a researcher. That must be a mistake. Uh, neither one of you can decorate. That's totally fine. We can give you here digging as well. Um, cooking low. That's fine. Tidying. Let's clean it out. Come here. There we go. There. Storing, supplying. Let's bring it up a little bit. You get building as well. Uh, farming for you and operating for you. There we go. You only have two dupes, so... The uh, priorities are going to be a little bit all over the place. There's not a hell of a lot we can do about it, but it should be good enough. Our slime line should hold itself uh, in containment a little bit. If we can stop this entire area here from heating up, the cold will eventually come back up here and just kill all of those germs here all by himself, so we don't have to be worried about in any way, shape, or form. Should be good. Now, other materials. Let's take care of it. Uh, we have our steam turbine right here built out of aluminum, which I'm sure we don't have. Can we see the F9 overlay? Um, F9 is slime long, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what it looks like right now. Up here on the top, we have some polluted oxygen at 30 degrees. Um, yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have to, though. You say sweep the slime? I, I would agree with that. I guess I will have to. Even though I shouldn't, it's kind of a little bit mind-blowing here. Um, I guess because I set these buildings here on 9, they're overriding the storing of the slime. That's got to be the only thing. But only these here are set to 9, not the rest. The rest are all number 5s. So as soon as these last few pieces here are built, it should be good. Uh, it should be good, no problem. And Brandon's a squirrel. Squirrels are tree rats. <laughs> uh. Are we going to clean this here? Or what? Can we not reach it? What am I missing? We can come through here. We can come down here. Yeah, we can get there. Here we need a couple more pieces of ladder. But other than that... I'm not sure why you are not doing what I'm telling you, dupes. Come on now. Seriously, though, I'm questioning everything right now. Slime. Organic. Nine priority. All. Not on sweep only. You should grab literally the slime first before you do anything else. Easier or set both to five. So why are you still doing that first? I'm... Aaron's task... I guess now he's bringing it, but that still doesn't really explain too much why everything else is more important than the slime. Now it's coming, though. Quite fascinating, not gonna lie. Okay, back to the materials question. So, the igneous rock in here. We have that, we are good. The steam turbine right here. Um, needs refined metal and plastic, which we don't have. We need to get some plastic over here. I need to be more careful, though, what we bring over here and how much of it, though. Um, right here, we have radiant liquid pipes made out of gold. We do have aluminum over here. We could do aluminum. Wait a second. What are you complaining about, then? Oh, you already have the 800 kilograms of aluminum in it. You just need the plastic. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, I could bring a little bit more aluminum over here. We could make the radiant liquid pipes out of aluminum. That is the most uh, sensible thing to do anyway. Um, our insulated pipes are fine. I need a little bit of steel, of course. Do I still have steel? Let's see. Um, no more steel available. So we need to get steel over here. We need to get plastic over here and aluminum. All right, let's do precisely that. 
We need steel, we have 375 kilograms, that's not going to fly. Aluminum, we have 7.2 tons, we're getting closer with that one. And plastic, we have 11.5 tons. All right, so let's make us some more steel. Let's see what do we have available. 39.1 tons of iron, 9.8 tons of refined carbon, and 4.4 tons of lime. So let's make us pretty. That should do it. Pretty easy and straightforward. Over here, we're still doing fine, temperature-wise. This thing here is at a uh, whooping uh, 50 degrees right now. This one here will erupt in 5.4 cycles. Should be okay. I still think that we are not going to get anywhere near, and we can see it. I need to build now uh, insulated tiles around these here, though. We don't have a choice. It has to happen before we introduce more heat than absolutely necessary into our base. Let me just kind of plop it over it. Yeah, very good. Brandon says, I'm not brave enough on uh, to play on Rhyme. That's no problem. I mean, you can always play not on Rhyme. And then, once you're brave enough, you can give it a shot. Um, a lot of people think that Rhyme is easier than other maps, but at the same time, I, so I just think the challenges are different. That doesn't make it necessarily easier. Um, Brandon says, is my dupe still alive? We have only lost one dupe. So theoretically, Brandon's dupe should still be alive here somewhere. Yes, sir, Brandon, you are, of course, on Smelina and you're doing just fine. Um, if someone is comparing you to Pirate Software, uh, to Pirate Software, they mean it as a compliment. Oh, no, nobody compared me to anybody. <laughs> Uh, somebody just mentioned they're coming from Pirate Software stream and ended up here. Which is great. I mean, I'll take it. The dupes have unionized. <laughs> right? That's fine. Unions, quick call the Pickertons. <laughs> uh, did you all see that Frostpunk 2 is finally being released? I have seen it and I did actually already play the uh, beta. For a little bit just to check it out um the content is a little bit on the low end yet um, especially without a story it's not really that fun if you just build for the sake of building something but yeah i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be fun i really do definitely gonna play that on stream with you guys it's gonna happen i know it someone made a mess somewhere someone made a mess somewhere i didn't see that I missed that. Must have been here, probably because this toilet here is not being taken care of. Let's see, do we have... Yep! This polluted water here all used to be clean, didn't it? Because this here was literally just polluted water. And now it has a bunch of germs in, uh, germs in it. That's gotta be it. Yep, most likely right here. Somebody peed right in this area right here. It ran over, and it probably made a drop along the way here. Because I don't think we had germs in there. I really can't recall that we did. And over here, I don't see any germs anywhere from any pee. In the bedrooms there is pee? Or you mean on uh, Smelina? Yep. Right here, you're correct. Okay, so yes, somebody peed up here, it ran down here, and made it all the way over to there. Great. Oh, you dupes. You literally have two bathrooms. Isn't that enough? How is it not enough? You would think... Yeah. I guess I played a game long enough to know better, but here we are, once again. Thankfully, it doesn't matter in any way, shape, or form, though. Um... The churns are not going to go anywhere because we have a beautiful oxygen atmosphere thanks to our deodorizers and uh, our sublimation station right here. More deodorizers right here. So literally everything here is now oxygen. Just a tiny little bit up here. You should be okay. And if you have to clean it, we can always bring over some uranium ore, of course. So let's try to find us some plastic here. Let's plop over there. Uh, some plastic. Um, 
I need to catch up in my chats here. Time to start a new game. Uh, going to toss you up. Uh, going to toss you up on my TV. See how badly I can destroy this asteroid. <laughs> Destruction is always an option. You know it. <laughs> um, that should be plenty of plastic. Let's uh, turn off allow manual use. We're gonna bring over what we still have here. We can always make more over here, so I don't really care how much we put over there. Better too much than not enough. And we can also always bring it back if we have to. So not that big a deal either way around. Um, we can pause it, allow manual use. We are going to turn the plastic off and we are going to aluminum. Not aluminum ore, but actual aluminum. Um, should have probably act a little bit more. There we go. Aluminum, we have 7.2 tons. So let's get a good amount over there. Probably let's try to end up with like four or five tons left over here. So we have plenty over there and we don't have to do it every five minutes. 5.8 tons. A little bit more dupes. Plop it in there. 5.3 tons. One more delivery and I'm happy. There we go. 4,940 kilograms left over. In case you're wondering where I'm looking, I'm looking right here, by the way. Here in the resource tab. And let's go to aluminum. Turn that off. Turn allow manual use back on. The next thing that we need is steel. Um, a little bit more though, preferably. 34. The nice thing is that that automatically heats up our crude oil down here as well. So that is always very good. Uh, what else do we have here? Slowly but steadily, this here should melt. So far, it hasn't done a damn thing. We can always help it along if we have to which I will probably do eventually once I actually take care of this area, because I do want to melt all of this solid crude oil. We are not going to dig up a single tile of that stuff. That is a, a guarantee right here. Um, that is all we're going to have, and that's probably more than we will ever need in the duration of the game, so we don't even have to take care of the oil reservoirs or anything along those lines, uh, which is going to help. Um, transport some diamond too. That is a good call. I forgot about the diamond. Uh, that film of clean water is going to block polluted oxygen from off-gassing if you care. You gotta mean Smellina with that. Um, I didn't even notice. Wow. Holy cow. Uh, insane. Um, attention to detail there, David. Thank you very much. Of course, that is going to be a problem. Even though, I mean, we still have more than enough uh, oxygen in here. But it's thankfully a very simple solution. All we need is some mesh tiles that we plop along here. And then we can mop it up. But right at the moment, I am just going to leave it as B. Um, because if our water here, or better to say, if our polluted water down here cannot off-gas, uh, we also cannot spread the food poison through the entirety of our uh, map right here, or our base right here. And our sublimation station right here is putting out more than enough oxygen, 660 grams per second. Um, then our two dupes over here need. So thankfully we don't need it right now, but again, thankful, uh, thank you for making me aware of that. I did not notice. Um, other things that we need over here. What's going on? Fertilization. Yeah, two dupes are not quite enough to run the space right now while we are building something as big as this here, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter. We have 76,000 kilocalories. When they run out of stuff to do with the uh, Metal Volcano Tamer, they will go back and fertilize. So it's not that big of a deal that I'm concerned about. But we were talking about diamond. We will bring diamond over. Let's see how much do we have of this stuff. 25 tons. Oh my god. We got so much of it, we don't even know what to do with it. But we do need it over there. So once again, you are correct, Goof. Thank you for that. Smelina is a mess. Smelina is a mess indeed. Usually I only really care about my first base. The second and the third and the fourth are really not that important to me. Um, they are usually just a method of getting something specific. Like in this case right here, we're going to get gold. And what is going to happen is, uh, on Smelina over here, we will 
connect this here most likely straight to our um, teleporter input and bring it straight back to where we need it. That is the most efficient way of doing it because if we need it anywhere, we will need it here. Um, the only thing that is a big question mark for me on Smelina is what are we going to do with those volcanoes right here? I wish we had these two in our main base. Like I could think of a few things that we could do with it. But, yeah. We really have one over here and we have one over there. And that's basically all we have found so far in the volcano department. But yeah, we will see what else we come across here for sure. Uh, let's turn this one here back off. Let's bring the rest of this diamond over. That should be plenty by now. Of course, you're going to bring a little bit more as usual. How else would it be? 20 tons left. So we brought about 5 tons over there. I should never need that much. Very good. The last thing that we need, we said, is steel. I'm just going to set it to steel. We don't really need a lot of steel. But I think everything that we have right now, I am going to just ship over there. We can always make more over here. Better too much than not enough. It's once again true, of course. So we will take care of it. We don't have any problems in the future. And there we have it. Um, as I said earlier, with a minor volcano, we will have these dry spells right here. The minor volcano is not pumping out anywhere near enough. It's only pumping out, on average, 562 grams per second. The average output does include dormancy, though. We always got to keep that in mind, right? Um, so we are only getting 562 grams per second. Um, yeah. That is a problem, but thankfully not a big one, because our liquid pump here will just keep on pumping. It will just be an endless loop of four hour petroleum right here, up until it erupts again, and it fills our magma here back up. Uh, this magma here will also just sit here basically indefinitely until it gets more or gets filled back up. It will run back over here, the pump will pick it back up, and then throw it back in here, uh, basically jump-starting our entire system from scratch again. Pretty easy and straightforward. And we can also see now our liquid valve down here is at 80, uh, 83.4 degrees. So we could actively cool it. Um, How are we going to do this? How do we actively cool this thing? Let me think. That should actually be pretty straightforward, shouldn't it be? We could come with this insulated pipe right here and bring it out to right there. Which then in turn allows us to deconstruct it right here. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Dupes, get it done. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, good job. And we will utilize once again right here our conduction panel. With the conduction panel, can I do this here? No, it cannot be put over another output. That would have been too nice, would it have been, right? Um, the only other way that I could come up with very quickly would be to just put a metal tile right here and then cool down the metal tile. Hey, Beer, do you know who is Andrew Tate? Yes, I do know who Andrew Tate is indeed. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do, yes. Um, but how do we solve this problem right here? Put it in water and oil. That's what I'm considering right now. We could literally just put a metal tile right here. An insulated tile right there and right there. This one here we don't really need. Um, but it'll do. And then we can just drop a tiny little piece of something in here. What that something is doesn't even matter too much. It could be salt water. It could be oil. It could be petroleum. It could be any of the above. And it would get the job done. I think that's precisely what I'm going to do here. Because the simplest method would be, and I don't need a lot. Um, the only question is, so I can't just bring my liquid bridge. I can bring this one one further out. And take the liquid bridge and put it right there. Um, come through here. And then continue with an insulated pipe right there. So we have one radiant uh, pipe right there. And then if I wanted to, if I make it even more efficient, I can put another tile right there. But I'm not even going to do that because it just doesn't matter. So let's try this here. 
I think that's the best thing. Did you see his last take? Apparently a guy kissing a woman is gay. That sure does uh, sound like the Andrew Tate that I know. Yes. Um, here comes my take on it. He's a complete moron. Period. <laughs> it's just nothing to discuss other than that. Uh, let's see. We're cooling this one here down. Do we even need a fluid in here? Because we have gas in there. Um, we're going to try it without. Screw it. We are going to try it without. Uh, simple and straightforward. Let's take a look here. It's coming in at negative 8.4 and it's coming back in at negative 7.2. And that should normalize here even more very shortly. Let's see. 7.3. Once we cool the liquid valve further down. Um, let's see, insulated tiles. We can, at least temporarily, I want to get rid of this debris here first. I think I'm just going to put it a drop in there. It just makes it so much more efficient. A drop of petroleum is going to be a life changer. So we are going to do that. Man, can we talk about anything but influencers? I'm on Synth's side here. <laughs> I agree. I'm open for any topic, really. I, I don't mind. I'll give you my opinion and whatever you want to hear about. But yeah, preferably not influencers. Especially since I don't uh, know most of them. I I'm not too... Even though I'm a streamer myself, right? And I have a YouTube channel and shit. I don't really care too much about what other people do. I do my own thing and call it a day. I just do this for fun, so... Moron is a, is a way on a statement. How is your night going over there, by the way? Hot, cold. And that directly leads to the next question. Did you move from Germany or just have German heritage? I uh, am actually German. Like, I am not an American citizen. I'm a German citizen and I moved to the United States when I was 21 years old in the year 2012. Um, and I have been here uh, ever since. Uh, uh, let's get rid of those tiles right here. Uh, probably also the tiles above it, to be quite honest. Uh, but before we do that, we do need to get rid of this tile right here with a much higher priority. So actually, let's cancel this one here again. I just want to get rid of this one here first. So the oil is just going to run along here. Just a few drops. That's all we are after, right? Um, when, with those two drops, you can get in here. I did turn that back off, right? Oh, it's still going to put just every piece of steel that we make in there. Oh, good grief. Almost forgot about it once again. Um, let's destroy those tiles right here. Let's let a few drops of oil come out of here. Or petroleum. And we're good. <laughs> Sean. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> uh, come back, bro. I'm Dutch, but live near Aachen on the border. It's nice over here. Highly recommend. <laughs> Um, you know, I may do something like that at some point or another. Uh, the thing is, um, I'm sure you guys are probably not too deep into American immigration law. <laughs> or better to say, German immigration law. Currently, I am not on a work visa. I'm on something called a green card. And a green card um, gives you basically the exact same rights and um, responsibilities as an American citizen. With the exception um, of you cannot vote. And the other problem is the permanent resident card or status can be taken away uh, from you for any reason. So if I would do something bad and I would get arrested or something, right? They would first throw me into prison into the, in the United States and then they would deport me back to Germany. Uh, that's basically how that would work in a nutshell. Um, thankfully, though. I am uh, going to be able to apply for a citizenship here very shortly in June. Uh, the reason that I waited so long for it is that it is a real problem uh, to get a dual citizenship if you're German. So right at this moment, if I were to uh, apply for US citizenship and I would get it, I would lose my German citizenship immediately. I get handed the American passport more or less. And that is the last thing that I want to do. Nothing against America, but there's a 0% chance that I will lose my Sherman citizenship, period. Um, so I waited a long, long time, and uh, the Sherman parliament, if you want, 
uh, basically just um, passed a law uh, not too long ago that will come into effect on June 24th, uh, I believe it is, which uh, just allows any German citizen to have a, another citizenship without having to do anything. You literally just apply for the American one and you keep your German one and you're done with it. So that's what I'm writing for. Um, and as soon as that day is coming, I will apply for my American citizenship. It should take between six and 12 months. And once I have that American citizenship, it's just like every American there is. Nobody can take it away from you again. So, and right at the moment, for example, another restriction with that permanent resident card is that I cannot leave the country for longer than the country, the United States, longer than I believe it's six months. So if I were to go to back, uh, to go back to Germany, let's say something happens with a family member, a friend, my dad, whatever it may be, and I would have to go back to take care of somebody, um, I would lose my permanent residency in the United States because I left the country for six months at a time. So yeah, there's a lot of things that have to be taken into consideration if you're trying to go to a different country, especially if it's the United States. Uh, because what I always think is funny, you know, in America over here, people are crying about illegal immigration. Well, the problem is not illegal immigration. The problem is that it's so incredibly hard and expensive to get into the country as a legal immig immigrant. Uh, even I'm thinking about illegally immigrating here. <laughs> Need somebody to sweep the melting brine too? Yes, I know. We really have to take care of that. We could just make our life extremely easy. Oh, wait a second. What do we have here going on? 65 degrees, negative 8 degrees. That's because you're just sitting here. We need to... Okay, let's see. We need to get this in there. I'm going to do this here. I could do it very simply. I could build me a gas bridge. I do want the gas bridge, obviously, to have priority. That is a given. That has to happen. And then I could bring a piece of pipe just over to right there. It's probably the simplest, fastest method. I'm also going to replace this uh, large power transformer thing here, so it's not just a tile. It looks a little bit better. But yeah, we are just sitting here, having these here over pressure, even though we have an unlimited amount of water available by now. Um, so we're just going to put it into this infinite storage right here. It's going to be a hell of a lot better in the long term. So let's see if we can make that happen. Snip this here off. There we go. There we go. How does it look now? What's the temperature? Our gas is coming in as long as it's not above 100 degrees. I really don't care. We can always cool it down later, so it's not that big a deal. Looks like it's going to be okay. We are literally just using this ice here right now to cool down our oxygen. Uh, what are you guys doing here, by the way? Uh, really? Get drowned, please. Thank you. Uh, actually, right here. We have all these eggs sitting around. We have those hatches in here. You don't even feed them anymore. How are you guys alive? I have so many questions right now. <laughs> We're going to wrangle everything and everybody. And we're just going to turn this here off. There we go. Just as simple as that. We're just going to leave this here empty right now. And we're going to drown the living crab out of all of those hatches. Uh, no point in having those around. They're just costing a bunch of work for no particular reason. But still though. How are we looking over here? Oxygen is coming. And exactly as intended. If those pipes here ever go empty. Then of course our bridge here. As priority. And if not, we're going to put it into the infinite storage. Nice. Our liquid valve is now properly cooled. Like I said earlier to Croc before he left us, um, I wasn't sure if we need to cool it or not due to the environment mainly. Uh, it turns out I have to cool it. But of course, that is a very simple accomplishment, so it's not that big a deal. We take a look at chat again. Um, David says, can you get the right to vote? I'm just curious. Yes. Um, once I become a U.S. citizen, um, I can vote in presidential elections or the mayor of the town I live in, whatever I want. 
uh, fully legally, just like every other American. No problem at all. I literally leave, uh, live five minutes across the border. I'm thinking about moving into Germany because house prices in the Netherlands are absurd currently. Really? Are they any better in Germany? <laughs> Not that I'm really up to date anymore with those kinds of things, but um, yeah. Um, look into state citizenship, not American citizenship. Um, what do you mean with state citizenship? Uh, it's not something I've ever heard of, honestly, Kyle. Uh, why is that magma not touching the pump? The magma is not touching the pump because it's just a mechanic of the game. Magma is basically so quote-unquote heavy and dense it can never rise if you put it into a single tile. So even if I fill this magma chamber over here all the way up, like literally every tile here, this tile right here would still not go up. Uh, and the pump is actually sitting in this area right here. That's the pump area. But the area that the pump can pump out of uh, goes all the way to down here. So one tile bigger than its actual size. Therefore, we can pump the magma. Uh, without actually touching the pump with it. Because if we were to touch the pump, it would be game over instantly. Um, okay, we were talking about brine ice and ice. I will still probably put it down here, though. At least temporarily. And we can use it just as simply to cool down. We are doing it right here already, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, in case you haven't noticed, our oxygen just goes through our water tank to be cooled down uh, to a nice 20 degrees. We can do the exact same thing right here with brine. And that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. We're just going to build us a little tank. No infinite storage or anything fancy like that. Not necessary in any way, shape, or form. We're going to leave three spaces. Um, then we're going to come all the way down to right there. Probably. Yeah, that should do it. I'm going to come all the way over to here and back up. I'm going to build some ladders so we can get in and out whenever we want. Like this here. Dig this up. Dig this up. Dig all of that up. Very good. Uh, what is that? That water with airflow? You mean this one right here? Uh, that is an infinite storage that happens to have three inputs and two outputs. Um, infinite storages can be built in two separate ways, especially for liquid right here. You can either have your liquid vent on the top and have a gas in it uh, to stop it from overpressuring, or in this case here we are storing water, you can have a, a, a much denser liquid on top of it, like for example in this case here I have crude oil over our liquid vent and water is coming out. I have 600 kilograms per tile, actually only 440 in the middle. Um, as long as it is not enough to overpressure our liquid vent at 1000 kilograms, uh, this here works as an infinite storage just as much. And on the outside I have insulated tiles because the water in here is bloody hot. So, yeah, this here is a uh, just a different type of infinite storage. I don't like to build the same thing over and over again. I like to keep it a little bit, quote-unquote, interesting if you want, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just more fun that way if you have uh, several different builds that accomplish the same thing but uh, look a little different. Since says, maybe one day people will realize immigration is fantastic for everybody. Yeah. I agree with you, Sen. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Obviously, I'm an immigration advocate. Since I'm one myself, how could I not be? <laughs> Would be like shooting myself in the foot. Uh, John says, I was offered a job in cybersecurity about 10 years ago in LA, but I decided not to do it because of immigration laws being so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's a literal issue. It's, it's a literal problem. Um, when I came to the United States first, I had a work visa. And then eventually, not here, uh, eventually I, I wanted to become a permanent resident so I don't have to like go to Germany every so often and renew my visa and, you know, all that shit. That is, it's just annoying, really. Problem is, um, I contacted a lawyer at the time. I was 23 years old. And I asked that, that lawyer said, how much would you charge me to do the paperwork for me and then, if necessary, go to the interview with me? And that was, I mind you, not today, right? That was in 2014, end of, end of 14, beginning of 15, somewhere there. 
And lawyer said to me, well, to do your paperwork, it's going to be uh, about ten to $15,000. And if you want me to go to the interview with you, um, it's going to be another ten grand at the bare minimum. So to get a lawyer to do it for you, which may be necessary if you don't happen to speak English perfectly, uh, because there's, it's a lot of forms, right? I mean, how many immigrants from, let's say, countries like Mexico have ten grand laying around to get a lawyer to help them out do it legally? Yeah, it's just not going to happen. All right, Joe, we will see. Um, let's get rid of the dirt right here. We have a pitcher pump. We're going to find us a bottle emptier. Uh, just so we can get rid of the briny. You know what, screw it. We're going to do two bottle emptiers for a good measure. And then we are going to grab us a storage bin. Not one, but three and plop it in here. And we're going to set it up to brine eyes. And we're going to put everything in here. That is salt water and brine. Um, don't think we have that much laying around that it will fill this here up. And if it does, we can always build it a little bit bigger whenever we need to. Anyway, the cooling loop is indeed easy to set up once you get the materials. Yeah, see, told you. <laughs> It's like with most things, once you know how it works, it's not that bad anymore. It's like that with most things in life, I would argue. I'm going to set this here to a number 9 priority. Um, it's going to have the dupes a little bit busy until they get it all done. But once it's empty, it shouldn't pop up very often. But, when, uh, but once it does, uh, the dupes should grab it right away. That would be the general idea here. Very good. Europe is about to find out uh, the choice of indiscriminate immigration. Well, you know, there is always also a, uh, a too much of a good thing, right? Um, am I saying everybody should just be able to do whatever the hell they want? No, uh, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying here is the immigration uh, should make sense. Um, where are you? And why are you starving? Oh, you're starving because you just have to get down here and get yourself some food, bears. Wait, you have yucky lungs, you're sopping wet. Oh, you have slime lung. How are we looking in that front? Now the slime lung is expanding. We are still relatively hot up here. Didn't expect it to take that long to cool this area down up there. I guess we have most of the area here blocked with some kind of insulated tiles. Um... Anyway, it's 045 here and uh, uh, in the motherland. I'll pop off and think about the choices I made today. Cheers and have fun, everyone. John, it was nice to have you around. Thank you very much for joining and I hope you have a good night. Um, let's see. We could always bring over a little bit of your uranium. We could always go ahead and just plop in a couple of deodorizers. I mean, we do have options available to us. If we just plop in a few deodorizers... Uh, temporarily in some strategically smart sp uh, spots around here. We should be totally fine because we're going to convert all this polluted oxygen into oxygen. And as we all know, slime lung dies on oxygen. So that's probably the easiest solution uh, for us here right now. I'm just going to bring a wire over. How exactly that wire goes doesn't matter too much. We're just going to bring it through here. Made out of any material, also that doesn't matter. And we're just going to run it through right now to all of those deodorizers that we have built. All right. There we go. Let's build us one more. You know what? Screw you. We're going to make you an airflow tile. And then we're going to plop one more deodorizer on top of here. Just so we cover this side here a little bit at least as well. Only thing. Can't forget about it. Three tiles. Very nice. Why are you still starving? Stop starving, damn it. But slowly but steadily, all this here looks pretty good. Um, we still have these radiant liquid pipes here actually built out of gold. That we don't want. Uh, over here we have igneous rock. We should have plenty of igneous rock over here. Um, let's take a look here. 120 tons. 
Why are we not building that, guys? Come on. Um, yeah. Radiant liquid pipes, though. We gotta get rid of them. So, let's rip them out here. Let's rip them out there. Of course, we cannot get in there anymore now. <laughs> it's the same as thing we had on the other side just a minute ago. They're gonna rip this these three here out. Um, gonna build us a ladder here, here, and here, just so we can reach everything through here. And then an F6, so we're going to grab us once again a radiant liquid pipe. We're gonna make it out of aluminum. And we're gonna bring it through here. And we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Just gotta cancel this one. You gotta cancel this one. And then bring it back over in this manner here, right here. Very, very good. Uh, the only other thing is we can't get over here, uh, on the inside at least, because we need to get rid of this one tile right there so the dupes can actually get above here. Because this thing here is idle and not dormant anymore. So once we get going with actually researching it, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, this thing here looks like a complete mess right now. But there is method to the madness. <laughs> we, only, we just have two dupes right here. Um, which is probably the main issue. Let's take a look here. We could send another dupe over. That would be an option. Or we could bring on a dupe. How about we bring on a dupe? Let's see if we have one. How about that? We have two dupes available. Other than that, we have Rust and Bliss Burst Seeds. Don't need either of the two. We have Farming plus nine. Allergic to Floral Scent. Don't really care about that over here. Um, medicine and Decor. Not really a good dupe. Rocketry, Doctoring and Operating. Not really a good dupe either. Um, I don't need Piloting. I don't need Medicine. I don't need Machinery. I mean, Machinery is okay, but that's about it. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to bring any of you on, guys. Maybe the farming dupe. If nothing else, I guess the farming dupe can keep us alive over here. I guess that would be the only thing. Who are we going to put in here? How about Doc? Uh, Doc number 27. I don't think you have a dupe yet. So how about we going to give you a dupe? Doc. You are going to be our farmer over here. Unfortunately, your uh, dupe is not the best. I'm not going to lie about it. You know it yourself. But it is what we got here. It's all we have to work with. So we're just going to bring him on. And uh, yeah, that's how it's going to go. Doc, right away, going to put you into improved farming. Going to go into priorities. Going to come down here in farming. It's going to be all Doc and nobody else. I mean, we are not going to disallow it. But at the same time, we're also not going to give it any priority whatsoever. Uh, cooking right here. Uh, don't have a cook right now. Don't need a cook right now either. Barris can attack. Farming. Operating. Building. Digging. I think everything's basically taken care of. And if you're not farming, uh, then you can always come over here and help Doc. And yeah, the liquid lock is broken. How did that happen? Uh, ye oh, because of the wire. Oh, I'm blind as a bat. Of course, because of the wire. Come on. Put an insulated tile there, guys. Of course, the wire is going straight through it. Gabriel says he's out. Gabriel, I hope I will uh, see you next time around. It was definitely nice to have you around. Um, uh, let me take a look here in chat. No matter what they claim, most of my life, the number on motivator in the US is fear. That's very true. Everybody's running around with a gun, but everybody's scared. That is a true statement. I can't deny it. And Doc even said it. Don't break your liquid lock with a wire. I should have looked in the uh, at chat. We did break it. Thankfully, it's not like we are trying to keep anything uh, too bad out of here. Um, we do have the slime lung, but it has only made it uh, up to here, so it's not going to get out. It's not that big of a deal. Thankfully, that's going to be okay. Try to warn you, of course, they built that first. You're 100% correct, of course. You know, why would we put in the wire here or anything if we can't just uh, dig up this tile here first? That's how the dupes are. We all know it. Uh, right here. 
I just don't know. It's just completely random behavior sometimes what these guys are doing. So we have one guy up here, that's Doc, who is doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, you're grabbing the meal lice now. Okay, yeah. At the moment, it's harvesting time, so they're going to grab all the meal lice and bring it down here first. It's probably a little bit of overkill. Let's give it a 7 priority. That should be good enough for right now. So we don't have to uh, watch him run around randomly with food the entire time. Uh, the building on your own lands is for insurance purposes. If you wire up your own home without knowing what they're doing, you could burn down, thus negating insurance claims. Not entirely sure where that came from, but... Of course, if you wire it up without having a professional license, then I would assume that an insurer says, are you out of your mind? You're not going to pay for that. <laughs> That's what I would do if I were an insurance. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Smalina almost feels like it's going to have to be encased in construction to stay safe. Yeah. I mean, with only two dupes, building a uh, Tamer version 3.0 is a slightly ambitious uh, uh, project. There is no question about it. It just takes forever. It's not like the dupes can do it or we can do it or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's definitely ambitious. You missed a few chats before that reply. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, it's um, <laughs> today. It's um, it has been flying at times. Certainly something that I uh, maybe, hopefully, have to get used to. <laughs> the first comment was about citizenship. My answering is a question he asked earlier. Ah, okay, I got gotcha, you, Kyle. Appreciate the um, clarification here. Hey, this throw me off. I was like, what? <laughs> Over here, we're still doing fine. Yes, our mana volcano is now going dormant. It's not going to erupt again. Up until then, our pump is running. And we are playing a little bit of fire right here. If you notice, we are going up with petroleum to about 180 grams. If you watch it very closely here. So you can see the petroleum on the bottom. Here we are at 100 grams, 140, 50, 180 grams. Thankfully, though, I did a little bit of testing, not yesterday or today or anything, but I did test it when I built the exact same uh, building right here for the Niobium Tamer. It takes, well, it's 340 or 440 grams. It's one of the two. Let's just assume it's 340 to be safe as usual. Uh, if you get to 340 grams, uh, the petroleum will move down here into the magma will evaporate immediately into sour gas and destroy the entire building right here. Because your uh, liquid pump will immediately overheat. And therefore, yeah, you're done here. So, as long as the petroleum stays below 340 grams, you are golden. Hi, Gunnar is here. Gunnar, morning everyone. Morning to you as well, Gunnar. Uh, definitely nice to have you here. Um, hope you're doing all right. Building permits are cheap and easy. I will stop. <laughs> Appreciate that, Kyle. Certainly, uh, not that I, that I don't mind political topics. If you ask me about my opinion, I will give it to you. But if I can avoid them, I'd rather would. It's that simple. Like, I'm somebody, I stand to the things that I say. I do it in real life just as much as on stream. I don't care about other people's opinions. I mean, I do care about them, and I'm happy to be proven wrong on points. But uh, if somebody asks me about my opinion, uh, you will get it. That's how I stand to most topics in life, at least. I guess that's maybe because I'm German. I'm, I'm way too direct. I've been told that several times. <laughs> All right, everything's working as expected over here. Uh, we still have basically nothing in here down here on the bottom. We can set these here up now to uh, liquefiable. We're going to say brine ice. Not crushed ice, not ice, not polluted ice. Um, so it's only brine ice, I guess. That works. I do want to have it on number 9 priority, though. Again, it's going to be a lot in the beginning, but once it's all gone, it doesn't matter anymore. Let's see. Is this here going to melt soon? 1.4, 1.7, 8.3. Yeah, slowly but steadily. And down here on the bottom now. 
The oxygen is getting hotter because we did remove the ice down here, so that is of course an issue. Um, should I just go ahead and make my life easier? Let's see, the temperature in here is negative 1.4 degrees. We are going to put all that ice in here. Let's see how much we end up with. Let's let it run for a little bit longer. It's not going to destroy anything. It's not going to kill anything. Like here at 88 degrees, we have only water in here. I didn't put crude oil in here or anything. Uh, so we just need to make sure uh, that our uh, input material doesn't evaporate our water. But I don't see that happening, so we should be going totally fine. Where that could become a problem, though, is potentially with our hydrogen up here. Let's take a look what is even going on here. Our hydrogen is currently erupting. It's coming out at 125 degrees, going along the pipe, and it's coming into right here. It's going first into our two gas reservoirs right here, and then those are full, or if those are full, better to say. Uh, we are getting all this gas here to come along all the way through here and then into our storage. And it's coming currently out at about 85 degrees. Yeah. I guess it's still totally fine. Not entirely sure where it loses all that heat. Right down here, we are still at 90 degrees. I guess it's actually the insulated pipe because the insulated pipe is made out of granite. Yeah, that is that would be it. Uh, the thermal conductivity is 0 0.06 on the um, igneous rock and on granite it's 0 0.1. You will think the difference is not that drastic, but you gotta say the pass it takes is extremely long and it goes through an extremely cold area, like generally speaking. Uh, therefore, it uh, actually cools it down inside of the insulated gas pipe and that works in this case perfectly in our favor and we are not gonna do a damn thing about it. Very good. FIFO says not talking about politics is a big part of the problem. And I agree with that. I do agree with that 100%. Uh, you know, that's why you have a very, very small minority that is the loudest. Because they don't care about what other people think about them. And therefore they just yell their garbage out into the void all day, every day. And that's literally their one purpose in life. But yeah. What I'm talking about is specifically my stream. Um, you know, we're playing Oxygen not included. I am not a... I don't know. I would give you some examples. I'm sure there are some guys on the left and on the right and all around uh, out there that are doing nothing else than stream and talk about politics all day long. Um, that's just not here. Right here. You want to play some games? You want to talk about some engineering? About some physics? A little bit of math here and there. Um, but still, again, as I said earlier, that doesn't mean if you do want my opinion on something or you are interested, not necessarily in my opinion, but in my point of view, I'm happy to give it to you. Um, you're going to like it or not. It's just what it's going to be. It's that simple, right? Uh, Doc says, nothing wrong with direct. I hate it when people tap dance around the subject. And again, that's probably my German heritage too, right? Uh, run the pipes through the tank. Lower the tank to incorporate the oxy uh, oxygen line. Yes, that is exactly what I am going for here. That's why I said I was waiting to see how much uh, we end up with in here. Um, nothing. 2.6 tons. Is that literally all we have? It seems so little. Um, we're going to come through here. One, two, three. Hi. That's fine. Um, probably going to just come along here straight and uh, dig most of this stuff here out as well. Uh, something like this. And then right here we have five high. So let's make it one more right now. And then we're going to get all this ice here as well. I know this is not brine ice. Um, but I'm also looking at uh, the level of this tank right here as well. So trying to fill both tanks a little bit. And then I am going to expand the tank and run the radiant uh, liquid pipes or radiant gas pipes through the brine in here. That is, in fact, the plan. Let's see. Let's take a look at the F4 overlay. Um, fortunately, I don't know from the top of my head what brine ice actually looks like what color it has. I guess we could go to liquefiable only. You are ice, you are snow. You are ice, you are snow. Don't we have any more brine ice? Nowhere on the map. 
nothing to dig up. Apparently not. Is it just me or did I just hear new printables? I'm sure you did because I heard it too. <laughs> uh, Gunnar is back with his insane attention to detail. Uh, I love it every time. Um, just wondering, was there a course in your school that talked about American propaganda? Uh, we did learn a lot about American history. I did in school. But the truth is suffocating. Oh, suffocating. You are going to die, Mason. You are going to die. You're not going to make it out of here. I don't think you can. Um, unfortunately, I can't see behind this damn thing here. I could just cancel it. No, you are going to live. You are going to live, Mason. Don't worry about it. Just got to build yourself a ladder right there. I thought you were all the way down. You're fine. No problem. Um, again, about American propaganda. I mean, the question is, um, what exactly do we classify as propaganda? We did learn about the history, of course. We did learn about the founding in 1776 and all the good stuff, right? Of course, not only in, um, in our history class, but also in our actual English classes. Because, I mean, why wouldn't you talk about England as well as the United States if you're already trying to learn their language? So that makes perfect sense. Um, that's why it's done, most likely. Um, again, the question is, what do you classify as propaganda? We did learn about the actual history, yes. Oh yeah, we haven't looked at this thing here in a while. Is this still working? I guess it is. Making us a tiny, tiny little bit of energy, of course, using way more than we are uh, creating. Uh, but it looks like we are making some wonderful water here, bringing it out at 95 degrees. And in case you guys can't remember, that's actually the third input. That's precisely why I built this thing here the way I did. We have three inputs right here. We have uh, two cool steam vents and that uh, one water geyser up here that all feed this infinite storage right here. <coughs> and of course, Gunnar was talking about new printables. Let's take a peek. We have a pip. We do have a pip. We are going to take the pip. And since we happen to have a uh, empty storage unit right here now, that is where our pip is going to live for uh, right now um, until we have something better to do with it. So uh, let's see here. Uh, can't do that, really? You don't know yet that we have one? Oh, we already had a pip earlier, that's right. I forgot that you exist, little pip. Uh, critters, pips, pips, squeaks. We're gonna put you in here. Our hatchling eggs right here. We're just gonna say hatchling eggs just forever. Uh, we don't care. What are you doing up here? How did hatches get in here? Sometimes I'm really curious about what the hell is going on here. Here, wrangle that hatch and get rid of it, damn it. And those eggs right here, we're gonna make some wonderful omelets out of it. And then the critter feeder. Let's see. I don't think I ever kept the pips actually just in here. Do they actually eat anything? Oh, they're only eating arbitraries. That's right. I keep forgetting about that. They cannot eat anything. Um, we don't have arbitraries and we don't currently have similar reads either. So. I guess we will see how that goes, or for how long, because currently I have nothing to do with them. It just is what it is. Um, I think they don't care, though, if they don't eat as long as they're wild. Is that correct? Like I said, I don't think I've ever just put a pip into a, um, a stable, it, even temporarily. <coughs> just for the sake of having it there. Usually I go plant something with them right away when I find them. Uh, just we don't have anything right now. My brain still rebels when I see water floating on oil. Do we have water floating on oil? I mean, it does it in the game, yes, of course, but... <laughs> um, supposedly, yes. If they are wild, they're gonna live as long as their lifespan. Um, yeah... Fortunately, on a pip side right here, by just throwing him into a stable, I don't have any experience with that whatsoever. 
are they going to reproduce if they're just wild? Like, what is their cycle? I have no idea. I guess we could groom the big boy right here um, and just see what the hell is going on with him. Uh, the pipsqueak is going to stay wild anyway um, up until we... Well, actually... I'm going to only... Yeah, let's see how this is going to go here. I would like to only get the big boy here. Um, yeah, they're also going to go back there, aren't they? Not that it matters because we don't get anything out of them. It's just going to be a little bit more labor on the dupe. Okay, we will see. Again, that's not really anything that I've ever done. Usually I just leave him wild and I just throw him into a uh, an area to get stuff planted and then hope for the best. Um, don't groom them yet. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, I just want to groom one of them, this one here. And I want to get his wildness down. This one here cannot be groomed because it's a baby. And it should stay one for four cycles or four more cycles. Uh, so we should get this one here to um, be okay. And we will see what its actual breeding behavior is. And feeding behavior and what it, what it, all it needs. Uh, we will see with uh, the little guy here. The little guy here we are going to leave uh, a wild. If necessary I will relocate him over here or something. But at the moment we should be good. If tamed they will go looking for food eventually and die. Okay, but what about their reproduction rate? Does anybody know what their reproduction rate is if they are wild? This one here is 59 years old. And it has been running around around our printer here exclusively, and I don't see an egg. So I'm assuming they are not reproducing at all if wild. Um, let's see, do we have... Arbor tree seeds. Uh, we do have arbor acorns. We could do something like that. Um, as I say, I think they lay one egg at cycle 75. Did you already say it? Oh, sorry, Jay. I did miss your message. I think they live 100 cycles and wild laid their egg at 75 cycles. You know what? That is a theory that we can test. Um, we're just going to disable this building right here, so you're not going to get groomed anymore. We're going to leave you wild. You're already 59, and we will see very shortly here, one way or another, uh, if you lay an egg. It's that simple. And uh, with the little guy right here, we can always create a new area right up here somewhere where we can pop in some um, arbor trees. Like I said, right at the moment, I just want to keep him somewhere safe uh, so that I don't get eaten and die. Uh, that's That's all that I'm... Worried about right now that we lose them somehow, that they just die without reproducing, for example. Uh, but I don't have any immediate plans for them. Later on, though, I'm sure we will find something. All right. Let's keep on digging down here. Um, just going to give him the command, and then we're going to go back over to Smelina. Actually, let's dig first this stuff here out. Five high, and yeah, it's a little bit too high, I guess. Four high will do. Let's get to a couple of pieces of abyssalite as well, it doesn't matter. Can get up there, no problem. And why is there ice laying around that is not... Okay, that's why. We are full to the brim. So actually we are going to stop this here. We're going to leave this completely alone. And we are not going to worry about it. Um, this one here is still totally fine. It's 60 degrees. I, I really don't care. Uh, because our base is still so cold, even if a few packages at 60 degrees make it through here, it's uh, not going to harm anything. It's going to do good of anything else. And in here, we are also at 32 degrees with about 74 kilograms per tile. Uh, it will be a long time before we encounter any problems here. Good. Uh, they can sleep on a ceiling. Never noticed that. I don't think I paid attention to that either. And Gabriel is back. Welcome back, Gabriel. <laughs> Um, breed a cuddle pip. We could breed a cuddle pip eventually. We can, we can definitely do that. Uh, Lancelot the Chust says, bless you. Appreciate that. <laughs> but pips lay one egg at 65 cycles. So now we have 75 and 65. We will find out who's right. <laughs> We're going to make that a very quick process. Uh, pip power is free arbitraries. Pip eggs, uh, omelets is better than pip meat. 
yeah, I'm not after their meat or anything. I'm, I'm going to plant uh, something with them, most likely arbitraries eventually. Um, it's just not on the immediate agenda. Arbitraries, mealworms, pips and hatches in a wild forest park. Yeah, that's also a good idea. I like that. 60 cycles plus the 5 cycles of being a squeak, 65 cycle. Uh, so people fast increase more or less with the wiki, okay. Scrambled eggs, Sin likes it, of course, not surprised. Oh yeah, we still have our spore kid right here, don't we? Almost forgot about this little guy. Almost just dug right through him. I was just like, I'm going to uh, connect this here up to let the oil drop down here. And eventually get rid of all this stuff here, so we can get to uh, this side here as well before we hop back over to Smelina. But we still have a problem to solve, don't we? Oh yeah. What are we going to do with you? We could do something like... What are we going to do here? Let's see. Simple liquid lock. We can literally just dig it out. Um, something like uh, this here. No, yeah, that's one too low, though. Um, should be okay still, though. If I dig it out this way, I can dig it out this way. Can leave this one here in. And then the dupes can walk along here. I'm going to leave this one too high, this one too high. Uh, so the dupes can come along here, come down here. All we need is a little bit of oil in those two tiles here, which we get by default, literally just by dropping it down. Just need to put one tile right here. And we're going to open it up. We're going to kill the spore kid. We're going to put in some radiation and call it a day. Uh, do you have any story traits enabled? I do have all of them enabled, but I don't know anything about them because I've never done it. Uh, the Spore Kids thing, we just found it right here. And I honestly don't know how it works. I do know that you need to get uh, like Spore Kids planted and you need to get like uh, zombie spores in there. That's about as much as I know. And then we have this guy right here. Um... We already knocked on his door. Maybe we can do something with him here, huh? He only needs 60 watts of power. Let's give him some power so he shuts up about it. Let's see what happens. Um, improve nearby the core. That should also be relatively simple. Um, and then I hopefully... Does it tell us what food he wants? Deliver three unique food items. Quality must be great, plus four or higher. Okay. We can take a look at that as well. Um... Not entirely sure what we have ingredient-wise laying around, but we can definitely take a closer look at that. So he wants to have it nice around his uh, little hut here, so let's build him a nice hut, I suppose. Um, gonna get rid of most of the stuff around here. Or high, gonna get rid of this here. Food from a gas range, effectively. Yeah, that's basically what that means, 100%, yeah. Um, we need in furniture, let's plop him down. A couple of large sculptures left and right. Uh, let's give him a little bit of a canvas, maybe here and there, and let's see if that is already enough. Not entirely sure if that is going to be enough. Um, probably if we um, if we pick up the debris, it should be enough for sure. Well, not for sure, but most likely. Uh, let's take a look here in the uh, overlay. Where are you at? Not exosuit overlay. Decor overlay right here. It's not the best I've ever seen, but we should get it up with those here for sure. All of the in-game food, he's quite picky. Yeah, I see that. Uh, let's take another look over here. Okay, the dupes are building. Slowly but steadily, it almost looks like a volcano tamer. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Slowly but steadily, we're getting there. Germs. Almost down to zero. Basically negligible thanks to our deodorizers at this point. Something else we should check though is sand. How much sand do we have left? 20 tons? Okay. Uh, not too worried about it. As of right now. Yeah, they are slowly but steadily building along here. Like I said, it just takes forever. Due to... Well, there are only two dupes. We have an automation wire right here that's built out of gold apparently. Can't have that. We don't have any. So, uh, let's... uh. Cancel only automation. I don't cancel the entire automation, but just the wires, please. Uh, that actually works. Good. But let's put the wires back in. Just this time, made out of something we have. Anything at all, iron will do. Uh, you right here, you right there, and you over here are 
also, of course, how else would it be? Made out of um, gold. So let's put it in. Out of iron. Very good. Slowly but steadily, like I said. Okay. Oh, with his 60 watts, he turned on his uh, little Christmas lights right here. Of course, why wouldn't he? <laughs> That's funny. Um, total decor is already 120. So, picking that up was actually not even, uh, not even necessary. Turn on festive lights. Connect this building to power. Oh, okay, so there's a timer on it. 2,700 seconds. All right. Very, very much. Um, other than that, you need food, you said. Let's take another look into research. We do not have the gas range yet. We just ignored it outright so far. Um, because our morale is good so far. So I didn't really pay too much attention about it. Uh, we're going to get it. And then... Somebody remind me when it's done, please. <laughs> that we start more research. I'm so bad about researching stuff up until it's like, oh crap, I need this. Honestly, the best thing to plant with uh, pips is symbol read, especially early. Yeah, that would have been a good thing. We just didn't have any pips early, unfortunately. Uh, like up to cycle 100, since it just keeps giving away more refire. Yeah, I mean, I agree. We came up with a different solution because we didn't have any pips, though. Um, we have now still 303 laying around, and if at all necessary, we can always pump this stuff down here, heat it up, and feed it back in here and start it back up if we need to. But I agree, an early pip, that is the number one thing to do. <clears throat> uh, this build is getting huge. Which build? Uh, do you mean this one right here? It's just a standard sized volcano tamer. Nothing crazy about it. Alright, looking good. Gunner says we'll do if I catch the sound. Oh, I know you will. I have 100% faith in you. <laughs> uh, you are the guy with the attention to detail. I like the research queue mod. I do too. I do too. I don't think I have it, do I? Let's see if I click on a, this here. I do actually have it. <laughs> I actually have it installed and I didn't even know about it. So yeah. Um, how the research queue mod works is you click on one just by clicking on it and it just selects the one that you click on. But if you are on one and you hold shift, uh, you can just select several at once. And it puts it into the queue. Um, that is not the right queue though. So I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Uh, we still need this here. And we need... Where are you at? Am I blind as a bat again? Right down here. We need, like, the cargo tank. We need advanced caffeination. Uh, meteor blaster. We don't need it yet, especially since the data analysis research. We don't have enough yet. We need to be very careful with that. A large solid oxidizer tank. Gonna turn that on. Transit tubes. Don't need those yet. We could cover metal blocks eventually, though, while we are at it. Let's see, anything else here that we really need badly? I don't think so. I think we're doing just fine with what we had just selected. All right, good. Doc knows is I consider that one essential. He's talking about the research queue mod. I would agree with that. I just keep forgetting that I even have it. I'm telling you guys, it's uh, it's hard to believe, but live streaming is harder than it seems. <laughs> I'll try to complain or anything. I'm just saying. <laughs> um. Jay says, I'm the opposite. I always research everything after the space research quickly and then wait until I get around to building rockets. Yeah. I, the truth is, I do that usually, too, if I'm by myself. It is, like I just said, live streaming is, is, is more difficult than, than people expect. Because having to pay attention to chat, trying to do something somewhat interesting on screen at as many times as possible. Um, uh, always is obviously not possible. And taking care of research, skills, priorities, consumables. 
it seems it's it's harder than expected. Not gonna lie about it. It's it's more of a uh, multitasking component. You know what I mean? But yeah, we will get there one way or another. Thankfully, we have some highly skilled dupes that can pump something out in a heartbeat if we need it right away. So that's also a reason, quite honestly, why I'm not too worried about it. All right, Smelina dupes, how are you doing? Um, we have down here a... Can you please stop? Thank you. A conveyor bridge made out of copper ore that we do not have. What do we have? We have cobalt ore. That's just as good. Uh, there's no complaint about that. So we're going to plop that in. Uh, very nice. Uh, we still don't have our liquid lock here that we need to pump this here empty. Okay. Um, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to take a look into the germ overlay. We still have a few pieces of slime lung, but they're going to be dead here in absolutely no time. We're going to get rid of this deodorizer here. We don't need it anymore. We're going to go into plumbing. And we're going to grab us a bottle emptier right here as soon as we can. Up to speed. There we go. Yeah, the ladder has to go too. And that one is not even gone yet. I love it when they stop doing what they're doing in the middle of doing it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jay here is asking about the temperature of the water in the main tank. It's too low for the tepidizer to work, so it might not melt all that ice or it might take forever to do so. Uh, well, the tepidizer is barely in water anymore right now. Uh, the thermal sensor right here is set up to uh, below 22 degrees. We're currently at 21, and it's actually measuring air temperature. Um, let me go back to all here. It's currently measuring, actually, the temperature of the carbon dioxide above it. Uh, so we need to melt it a little bit more, but the temperature is at about 20 degrees, so it's not that big a deal. We are going to get there. We are already at 1.6 degrees with those, 1.2 degrees here. We just plop them in basically at the same time. So a lot of them, like, uh, those three right here, are basically going to explode at the exact same time. It's going to be an extra 18 tons. So we are going to add more than one whole row to our tank. Ooh, all right. Smelina. And another one right here that I missed. Uh, going to make it out of iron. And that should be it, though, right? That should literally be it, I believe. I, I, I believe we're getting there, guys. And hardly believe it myself. You never even hooked this one here up. <laughs> just, ah, okay, I built it here and then forgot it existed. Of course, that happens. Our power. Eventually, we'll have to come out here. I'm not too worried about that right the second. Before we have our liquid lock, before we have our vacuum, before we have our water. I mean, there's a lot more stuff that needs to be done here. So uh, we also need to get our um, polluted water in here. Polluted water, speaking of the devil. Currently, we have no pump. So let's plop us a pump in. We also have a very limited power supply. So that's also going to be an issue. Um, insulated pipe, come out of here. Actually, maybe I shouldn't build it that close to water because with my luck, it will suck up water. Let's build a little bit further over. Those extra few resources for uh, a few extra tiles of insulated pipes, we have those. So, not like uh, we have to be extra careful with that kind of thing. There we go. Let's put here first. Oh, the dog alert is going off again. And hook it up to power. We're not feeding it to anything yet, so it's not going to turn on. It's not going to cause any issues. All right. <laughs> Since says I'll admit it looked bigger when I glanced. I've been distracted by tons of stoners at my job. Looked bigger when I glanced. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, couldn't help myself. That one had to be. <laughs> Doc says, we got your back. I appreciate you, Doc. And of course, everybody else as well. You guys are definitely helpful here. Um, I cannot deny that. There's no question about it. I would have missed so much shit without you guys. So, yeah, I appreciate it. And you guys know it. I don't mind it at all. I do know that uh, you streamers and whatnot uh, get all their panties wet when uh, viewers tell them how to play the game. I personally enjoy it. Because that is part of real-life engineering. You know, if you think you're the only one who knows it best and everybody else is an idiot, you will never get anywhere as an engineer. And it's the same with oxygen not included. 
Yeah, that's just the truth of it. Alright. Bottle empty here. Level 9. Let's put some crude oil in there. Don't need a lot. One bottle. Gonna be enough. Um. Chase says, I only stream games to my friends on Discord, and that only rarely. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I've been a streamer for six-ish years. Oh, damn. You're doing fine, buddy. Appreciate that, Sin. Is it better to use liquids or metal blocks for debris coolers? Metal blocks. Uh, the answer is uh, equivocally metal blocks. Let me take a look at this metal tile right here. Into properties. A specific heat capacity of 0 0.9 and a thermal conductivity of 205. 205. And we now look at, let's say you want to use polluted water. We are at a 4 in the 0 0.5. We are way worse off with water than we are with a metal tile. So you want to cool down your metal tiles with water or with a liquid, but you want to use actual tiles here to cool down your debris. Uh, Firepower to left of liquid lock on the gold tamer. Uh, you mean down here? Yeah, we could put one in there, but uh, dupes probably are not going to uh, come back up here around very often once it's finished. So they just need to please finish it, dupes, damn it. Um, let's build it here, here, and then let's keep on going along here so the dupes can actually reach all the stuff here. But it will take him probably forever. Where's our third dupe, by the way? Here's one. Here's Doc. Here's Barris. Ah, oh, over here's Brandon. Okay. I was like, what happened to our third dupe? We used to have three over here. I'm quite certain of it. <laughs> uh, thank you, taming a volcano right now and trying to make sure I'm cooling that igneous rock enough for my hatches. So... If you're doing that right now, let me help you out just a tiny little bit. You want to do it like this here, uh, preferably. How you actually tame your volcano doesn't really matter too much, but how it gets out of your steam room will always be the same. The most or the best method, in my opinion at least, is a conveyor meter. You put a conveyor meter up and you start out with a limit of 2 or something, and then you slowly increase it until you have reached the temperature that you need. In this particular case right here, um, we have our igneous rock come in at about 150 degrees Celsius, give or take. That's what we have here. And when it comes into our um, cooling loop, uh, it's not even a loop, it's actually just a cooling lane, I guess. On the first tile, we are down to 81. On the second, we are already down to 0 0.8. And at that point, we are basically just staying the same. So theoretically, with this amount right here, you could get away with two tiles. I wanted to build six just to be safe um, because if this one here gets completely stopped up we can increase this here and we can be sure enough that we can still get the debris out of here and especially if you use something that has not a fixed rate or at least not as fixed as this here um, because we know exactly how much uh, igneous rock we are getting in here right we just gotta look at this thing here in f6 we are getting exactly 999 grams per second fixed it will never be more it will only be less so we can work with those numbers 100% of the time and we know what we will end up with. Um, if you're building the standard um, version uh, that we were talking about earlier with the two mesh tiles at the mechanized airlock somewhere above it, however you want to do that, or even more mesh tiles, right? That is a viable option as well. It may not be as consistent. So you got to be careful for that. Uh, that's why you want to make sure you have a conveyor meter at your output. That would be... Uh, my personal advice. Slowly but steadily getting there. Dogo wants some attention. Popper. Yes, the dog always wants attention. <laughs> that thing is insatiable. I'm telling you. <clears throat> Other side ladder by sink for pole. Oh, here. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I like it. We'll implement it right away. Good call, Doc. So how is gas range research going? We should be ready with it. Yep, it is completed. But now I'm not too worried about it anymore because the next one should start automatically. Did it not take it? No, it did. Um, here we are. 
So it's going to do now our large gas, uh, large gas cargo canister. Good grief, that's a tongue breaker right here. Um, next, then it will come down to what's our number two right here? Uh, advanced caffeination, gas distribution, and high culture. So yeah, we are on track as we should be. Any diseases? Oh, wait a second. There was one. There we go. 94 germs left. <laughs> as long as it's not more than that, I think we're doing just fine. Not worried at all. Uh, we can get now rid of those deodorizers right here. We don't need them, need them anymore. Uh, there's no more polluted oxygen or anything going on here. So we can just say goodbye. Does this mean you can build a gas range? I would hope so. I can build one. We will build one re really quickly. I just want to take a look at this one here um, and see what is going on. We have our power wire going through everything here. That is fine. That is good. Uh, so we can just close this here off now. We have a total of three uh, metal tiles right here. Gold doesn't need a lot. It's uh, not a big deal. Mitsosi says, wait, what? What are we waiting for? <laughs> Why the deodorizers have a range? Oh, they have a range. They always have a range, you just can't see it. Um, what's a good way to show you? I guess up here. Maybe not. What is a darker area? Dang it. Ah, right here. That's its, that is their range. Two in each direction, plus one diagonal. That is the range of the deodorizer. Um, again, um, show building ranges is the name of the mod, I believe. Um, I can highly, highly uh, recommend getting this. It is helpful in a lot of things. Like, it shows you ranges for basically anything that has a range. Uh, let's see here. Pumps are a good example, right? Um, what else does it show? I guess we have filter gas pumps right here, which have the exact same one as the liquid pumps. Any building that has a range will show you its range with that mod. Uh, the steam turbines are at the moment not connected to the power grid. Yes. Uh, the reason is that we don't have a power grid. Sounds <laughs> stupid, but it's true. At the moment, I don't know what I should connect them to. Um, I also don't know a good way to create power over here, to be quite honest. I don't see any geysers that we can exploit. Um, yeah. This one here is another minor volcano. Do we have anything else here? No, let's take a look at the star map, as a matter of fact. Smelina status. So we supposedly have a natural gas geyser somewhere. We also supposedly have aluminum volcano somewhere else. So we found the gold volcano. We definitely found the volcanoes here. <laughs> um, we should have aluminum volcano and we should have a natural gas geyser somewhere. That would be helpful to get our power production a little bit up and going. But what it looks like right now is we may have to go back to Cold Yell and get us uh, some of our 167.5 tons worth of coal over there. Um, that's probably an option. Or, Doc has a good idea, we could try solar power. Uh, that would also be an option. We have a glass forge right here. How much glass have we produced with it? I don't think we did a lot here, did we? Well, 1200 kilograms. In power, I can't remember the value. 200. So we could already build six of them. Uh, that's not too shabby, as a matter of fact. And the solar panel gives us up to 380 watts. As long as we build a nice um, uh, power storage facility, we could most definitely try it on Smelina. Let's see. Ah, but we do have Meteor, so we will have to build like an entire uh, Meteor infrastructure as well. Which is not a problem, it's just very time-consuming and we don't have the dupes to do it. <laughs> or use the volcanoes to get power, yeah. Eventually we will do that, I'm, I'm talking about something more short-term. How do I get power now? Not in 100 cycles with three dupes, you know? Um... It will probably come down to coal in the short term. In the long term, we will come obviously up with a better solution. There's no question about it. But in the short term, we will probably coal it. Um, 
It's the simplest and fastest solution there is. And therefore, it's the best. That's what it comes down to. Um, question is just how and the where. Those are two questions we need to answer. And I will probably build them somewhere low. Where do we go? We could just come down here. So we have the supply teleporter input available as well. We have some polluted oxygen down here. Nothing we care about. So let's come down here. And while we are at it, let's put in a fire pole as well. We have plenty of cobalt sitting around. So let's come down here. Come over to the right side here. And then once again, bit more ladders. And more fire poles. We're going to come all the way down to here. And then probably going to uh, put in power down here. Here I want to go lower on purpose. Uh, because we already have a bunch of heat that is going to come out of here. So as further away as, uh, as I can put my heat producers, the better it's going to be in the long term. So yeah. Are there any non-building power battery on a project? Like there's a model for a volcano tamer which is meant to store excess heat in a pressurized steam room, not connected to the turbines. Uh, I'm assuming something like that would be doable. I don't see why it wouldn't be. I also don't know why we are not building those pipes right here, dupes. What are you doing? Other than sleeping right the second, I understand that, but there's really not a hell of a lot happening between three dupes here. I mean, seriously? Take a look at our skills here. You have plenty of morale. You are good at digging, and we will need you down the uh, applied research um, um, pass right here, so we can go ahead and get this gold volcano faster, so you're not going to do a damn thing. But Brandon right here, what is up with you? You're a mechatronics engineer. We're going to give you improved building or improved construction too, just so you can finally get something done here, please. And Doc, we really um, need you to step up your game here. We need you to level up. But other than that, hey, I need a table and a bed. You do have a bed, but you don't have a table. You are correct. I built four beds, but I built no tables. Maybe to use the steam room as a heat battery, which injects then heat to the turbine steam room. Let me think about this. I mean, theoretically, there's nothing really that could stop you from doing so. I mean, all you're doing is basically um, building a mechanized airlock. We're basically building the same thing again, more or less, that we have over here already. We're building something like this here. We're building a heat exchanger. We have a steam room where we can feed magma in. We are going to heat this here to... Doesn't matter, 500 degrees for all we care. Um, and then we are opening or closing this door here based on if we need heat over here. I mean, that's effectively what we are doing, right? Um, shouldn't... I don't see the actual benefit from it over something like this here. Uh, that just does it constantly. Obviously, this here will stop, as we discussed earlier, because we're going to run out of magma here very, very soon, actually. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't see the benefit over it. Because what I can do here, if I do it in the old-fashioned way, um, if I use a temperature sensor in here to gauge if I am going to put in more magma, I can put those steam turbines here on a battery, on a smart battery. And I can just control when I turn my steam turbines on or off. Would be the same result. So yeah. Is it possible? It's definitely doable. There's no question. I just don't see the reasoning for doing so. <laughs> God, over here on Smelina, everything takes forever. We gotta find us a new project over here on Cold DL, though. Because otherwise, we are going to go nuts. Taking forever. Um, our natural gas storage is empty. Because the natural gas geysers... Okay, one of them is actually just turning back on here. It looks like. Let's take a look here. We are in F7. We have not a damn thing in here. And we don't have a damn thing in here either. 
So we are not using our natural gas generators at all. But we are using our hydrogen generators. And apparently we are also not using our coal generators for anything. We have no more carbon dioxide in here. Let's take a quick look at that. Our smart battery right here in automation. So you're connected to here and you're set to 95 and 15. And you're set to 95 and 10. How about we bring you up a little bit? And you are you are set to 25. That is the problem. So if we are now going to use our gas range, we want to keep a little bit of uh, gas left over for us. So we're going to put this one here at the lowest. Uh, so our natural gas generators turn on last, not first. I think that's the best course of action right now. To keep a little bit of our gas in here. We can first fill this thing here up at a thousand kilograms. That's fine. Well, why are you turned on now though? Oh, you still had a green signal, most likely. Until we get up to 95. Why are you running? Now everything turns on. We should then hopefully turn these here off for good. Or not. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, how about I set you to 90? Okay, there you go. And now these here should fall faster, right? There we go. That's what that should look like. That's better. That is much better. Leave those off. Fill out the gas reservoir. And then we can use the excess gas that we have up here for our gas range that we are going to build. Well, right around now. How about that? In our room overlay, we do have a kitchen. It needs a spice grinder, a cooking station, and a fridge. Where do we have space for something like that? Let's see. I'll just put it down here. Nothing stopping us from doing that. Let's see. Plop in two doors. Let's come over here straight. And get rid of all this nonsense. While we are at it, this nonsense here as well. Then all we need is one more pneumatic door right here. Uh, what is actually the size requirement? I didn't pay attention. 96 tiles. Is that bigger than that? No, nowhere near. You're good. Um, take a look at chat again. I have done a steam room to store power. Just keep adding water. Uh, when I got above 200 C with, a, with, a, with the aqua tuna. Then I have a gas pump to pump it out. Uh, ceiling collapse. Okay, that's right there. Um, and I have a gas pump to pump it out to a steam turbine or open the door. Okay, yeah, I mean... True, that makes sense. But that only works to store the energy output from the volcano. How would you insert power into such a system? I don't know. Again, it's possible to do. I just don't see a good reason for it. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, now the result is different because if the temp of the steam exceeds 200 degrees, the turbines delete the full temperature difference but produce the same amount of power output. If you are exceeding 200 degrees, that is absolutely correct, though. If you are exceeding 200 degrees, that is more than correct. Yeah, I guess we can do a little bit of testing with that kind of thing once we build the other one right here. We still haven't decided what we're going to do with it. Well, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. Either I'm going to build the, uh, the bottle emptier uh, system, or I'm going to... Um, uh, built the standard version um, with the mesh tiles. If we built the standard version with the mesh tiles, we can definitely try around a little bit with it. I mean, what's stopping us, right? We can do whatever the hell we want. Um, I will try a design on a test map. Yes, von Rheinland, please let us know. And um, I believe, uh, von Rheinland, you are also in Discord. If you have something viable, if you want to share a picture on Discord or so, I'm more than happy to show it on stream. Unless you mind, of course. So that is also certainly something we can do. So if somebody wants to build something fancy that we are talking about on stream that I can't do because we are in the middle of an actual game, um, feel free to uh, to post it on, on, uh, on Discord. Let me know. And uh, we can definitely take a look at it. I don't mind that whatsoever. 
Okay, slowly but steadily we are storing more natural gas. How long is this sucker here dormant? 25 cycles. Oof. How much longer are you active? 84 cycles. Okay, so we definitely have plenty of time to get that in there. It's it's like slow mo over here. Even on three times speed, it's absolute slow mo over here. <laughs> it's insanity. Uh, down here on the bottom, yeah. We are just gonna go right ahead and uh, use this area right here. We could also, yeah, that's just going to take too long again. We could just use the magma that's down here on the bottom and build us a uh, um, natural power source out of the magma. That would be not too big of a deal. But still, though, with the dupes, uh, we would have to build um, um, suits and everything. So, yeah, we, we're going to stick with the original plan. We are going to go with uh, coal power. Simple, fast, effective. And we will come up with a better solution once we have more time on our hands for our dupes here. Uh, Keone says, uh, lower the high threshold. Um, already did that. We got it. Uh, they ain't providing enough power together, so the natural gas generators keep turned on. Yep, Gabriel, appreciate it. You're correct. Maybe not turn them on until zero. That would also be an option. Uh, Jay says, it's aimed at capturing the maximum possible power from a full volcano, not remotely needed for a miner. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> um... I says, uh, wenn du aus Melin eine Schneckenform baust und, und den Wasserstoff auch benutzt, hast du jede Menge Strom, eine geflickte Schnecke produziert 1600 Watt. Uh, yeah, so um, what I says is, he says, we could build a, um, a slug farm over here. Um, we wouldn't need hydrogen for that. But if we can do that, then we get eight times 1600 watts of power. That is certainly something. Do we actually have any hydrogen available? Not really much, do we? Uh, right here we have a little bit. That's actually a good amount right here. That's a total of uh, 10 tiles, 9 tiles, 9 times 1.2 kilograms. That's not too shabby. Do we have any more, though? Um, That's all phosphorite. Right here we have a little bit more. It would probably be the easiest to just get it over from... Uh, um, over from coal deal since we have plenty there let's take a look like i told you before i don't really use uh plug slugs too much honestly never really had a good reason for it okay yes you're correct um metal is the input and hydrogen is the output not the other way around How much power do they produce, though, when they are tamed? Uh, does it tell me anywhere? Probably not. That would be too easy, wouldn't it be? Life span crowded when a room has less than 12 cells. Yeah, it's all good. Eats basically anything. Yeah, I can't recall what they are making when they are actually tamed. I do not remember. But yeah, it's certainly something we can take a look at. Um, I have never looked into plug slugs. Never in my life. So I guess I will have to come up with something from scratch here. Um, we can have a total of 8. They need 12 tiles each. So we even need a 96 tile uh, farm. And we need a place to get out the hydrogen. But only the hydrogen. Which we can do very easily, uh, thanks to the um, filter gas pump. We can't just set it to hydrogen and get it out of here. That would certainly be an option. 1600 watt if tame. Oh, good grief. Happy and fed, 1600 watts. About 1400 watts, but only at night and make hydrogen. And they only eat ore though, right? Did I see that correctly? Gotta look at it again. It's all ore. No, they're also eating refined stuff. So they're eating 60 kilograms per cycle. And the question is what the output of this uh, molten gold volcano or this gold volcano here is going to be. Uh, definitely not enough to keep eight of those things alive here. That's for sure. 
Yeah, we can take a look at that. We can certainly take a look at that. I mean, to build a 96 tile wide, or better to say, big um, area for the plug slugs should be relatively easy with the hydrogen gathering on the top. Just need to find us a space for it somewhere. It's just kind of hard because everywhere are bloody volcanoes. <laughs> uh, yeah. What about something like here? I build it four wide. I have 96 tiles right here. I'm not actually going to build it. I'm just going to put it in here. We could literally build it something like this here. What do they need? We need to have basically down here on the floor on those four tiles, um, a grooming station, which is two tiles, a feeding station, and a drop off. We don't need a pickup because we're just going to drop them off. We're not going to pick them up. Then the hydrogen is going to gather itself up here. We can also build it five wide and maybe not as high. Also an option. Let's see, what does it look at? Let's say six wide. You could build it all the way up to here. That's 96. Um, yeah, that should work. That would actually be rather easy to do. 60 kilograms per, uh, per cycle per slug. That's a lot of metal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying. Maybe eight is a little bit overkill. Uh, maybe the three that we have here would be more than sufficient for a while. Because that would still be 180 kilograms. Uh, eight wide, so all uh, the slugs can go onto the cable. That makes perfect sense. Didn't consider that fact. Of course, if we actually have eight in here, then we also need to have it at least eight wide, which would look something like this here. Uh, so the slugs can go up here at night and sit just right beside each other. But again, that would be for eight of them. Um, that's a lot of metal that we do not have access to. Just as an idea, our iron volcano right here has an average output of 314 grams per second. Let me do the math real quick here. 314 grams per second times 600 makes 188,400 grams. So that would be 188 kilograms. So this iron volcano right here would be barely enough, on average at least, to keep three slugs alive. And then we have 8.4 kilograms left over. So yeah. That is... um. Questionable, to say the least. To spend literally the output of an entire volcano on that. On three slugs. But it is a lot of power. I mean, three slugs, if they're putting out 1600 watts per night and we have enough batteries that we can actually contain this stuff, which we could do with a, with a rocket battery, right? We could do it with a rocket platform battery, would also be an option. Then that would be a lot of output. I mean, 4,800 watts. Wider would allow a critter condo. I have never built one of those. <laughs> they didn't exist when I played last time. <laughs> um, I have seen them up here in research, but um, we can probably plop them in there. Um, I have never built one. That's well, definitely going to be a good idea, though. And you get power from the hydrogen when they fart as well. So we could make this area down here a hydrogen uh, station. Or the um, flux slugs. Let's see, how much did I put out? I didn't pay attention. Oof, it's only 3,000 uh, grams per cycle. So they literally eat 60 kilograms of food to give us 3,000 grams. That is almost a negligible amount. That is uh, not optimal. Let's take a look here. In power, the hydrogen generator needs 100 grams per second. So we could let this thing here run for 30 seconds. One of them with one plug slug per cycle. That's not a lot. That doesn't sound too efficient for what we are getting back, honestly. Well... We may come back to that, but for right now, we're just going to put in what we absolutely need. And what we absolutely need is in tiles. 
some uh, something like this here. And then in power, we need us some gold generators. Um, one of those things here generates 600 watts. Uh, let's build us uh, 1200, keeps our aqua thunder running. The entire system over here needs 1400. The rest of the base together needs 500. So that's 1900. Uh, we would need up to uh, four of these. That's probably also what we're going to do here. And we're going to build four of them. Uh, let's come up here, right above it. Bring them over. Let's leave in a little bit of extra space here at the end. Four high. Dig it all out. Uh, grab us the cold generators above, above, in base. Gonna grab us a storage bin here and there. And then uh, while we are at it, we can probably also automate it because our dupes already have more than enough to do. An auto sweeper. Uh, damn it, for an auto sweeper, we need to go one higher. My mistake. Forgot about the auto sweeper. One higher. Copy and paste. Just like that. Dig it all out. And that should do it. Now we can go into shipping, grab us the auto sweeper. And yeah, once this here is dug up, um, somewhere right here, I can't remember exactly, but it's more than enough to get all of these here going with one sweeper. Her. Uh, the slug morphs are not that good. Can't say I have ever done anything with slug morphs either. I just ignored the slugs outright. Uh, <laughs> that's sadly the truth of it. So, yeah. I'm glad for you guys' with input, though. Once again, I appreciate you guys helping me out here. Um, I have... I cannot say that I have used every critter for everything. Uh, that would be an outright lie. There are a bunch of critters, like, for example, those plug slugs that I have just completely outright ignored because I feel like there's just always a better mousetrap than using them. Um, like, I'm sure I have looked at this year a long, long time ago and decided, but oh, that doesn't make much sense, and just ignored it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here to use no wrencher, says Sin. Sin is 100% correct, I'm not. <laughs> um... Jay says, I don't play the DLC, so I haven't really looked into it, but no one seems to speak highly of plugs like wrenching. Um, I, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Just looking at the numbers and the stats, it just does not add up. That's just what it comes down to at the end of the day. Um... Kionis says that is a sad con uh, conversion. They need some balance there for sure. Yeah, I agree. That, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, in my opinion. Um, I only used the plugs like early game. Towards the end was meh, other than eggs and meat. Auto sweeper to load. Doc, yes, we will have them. Uh, plug slugs are fine if you make uh, a starvation range. The exit still makes power till death. Starvation range? Oh, that is something I could get behind, maybe. <laughs> I uh, just found out the main problem of the heat battery. You won't get the igneous rock out of it due to overheating the auto sweepers. I mean, it depends on. I mean, obviously I haven't tried it and I'm just uh, talking straight out of my rear end here. But if you have your uh, chamber, something like this here, right? Um, and you have your drop of some kind coming through here. So basically right here is where your igneous rock lands. You could. Get it through the corner. That would be possible. Um, what are you go then going to do with it, though? That's another question. You would have to actively cool your auto sweeper, most likely. And other stuff like that to consider. But there should be a way that it's doable, I would assume. We're going to set this here to coal. And we're going to set it to a uh, high priority. So as soon as the coal comes through uh, the teleporter, which we haven't done yet, uh, we will just immediately plop it in here. Um, let's see oh, what other messages have I missed here. Uh, it's the slug morphs that are not so good. Okay. Uh, Sin says, I'll be honest, most people who ranch and only want to ranch, it's how they, uh, how they cycle their resources. It's more about what they can, uh, 
what can be renewed or not, at least in my limited experience. I mean, some things just make sense to have, right? Um, like, for example, if I have hatches available, I always do hatches. They give eggs, they give meat, uh, they give you refined metal early on if you need it. You can feed them basically anything between all the different morphs. So I'm a big hatch fan. But other than that, there are not too many things that I really ranch outright. We will go for a um, starved poke shell wrench eventually. That is going to happen just to get the molt out of it. I'm a big fan of that as well. But, you know, usually I'm a big fan of it. If it is a really good ratio of what you put in compared to what you get back out. And I just don't see that right now with the, with the plug slugs. I would have to do a, a lot more testing. Um, probably into sandbox to see exactly if, if what makes sense here and what doesn't. But right at the moment, just quickly glancing at it live with you guys here, of course. Um, I just don't see the benefit. But okay, we do have our power generators. So let me put in one more row up here. This row right here is going to be in power for our smart battery. That is always important and always a good thing to have. Not made out of steel, though, please. Are you crazy? Iron is more than good enough. Um, we will need some automation wires, once again, made out of iron, not out of steel. What the hell was that? <laughs> once again, what was that? There we go. Now we're going to put it all in here. Um, in shipping, we are going to grab us those auto sweepers, once again, made out of iron. We can see we could even feed one more if we had to. But we're going to build it ready for that if we should ever need it in the future. One here and one there. And then we're going to go back into power, grab us a heavy water wire, the heavy water wire straight out of here. Probably just going to come straight up to there, straight out of here. Going to connect also these here straight up to it. No problem at all. No extra wiring required or anything along uh, those lines. And then a power transformer or two. Um, probably one here and one there. Something along those lines. I'm uh, going to come up through here. You want to then come up through, save it. There we go. And then, last but not least, we are going to start with conductive wires. We will need some metals over here, though. Uh, we need to build them out on the left and on the right, so we can put in our conductive wire bridge here and there. And then we can come with our wires over to probably right here and probably right there. Something like that is what that should look like, and that should provide basically all the power we should need for right now. Um, yeah. Pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I kid you not, 8 slugs will fill 24 to 30 large batteries in a night. I believe that in a heartbeat. I believe that in a heartbeat. I mean, if you get for 3 hours 1600 watts, that's a lot of wood. But you only get 1600 watts if you also feed them, so it's just a lot of metal. And I really like to have metal around. <laughs> um... Even if you use thermium and add water to increase thermal mass. I mean, thermium would maybe be an option. An extra 500 degrees. I no, what is thermium? Thermium is extra 900 degrees overheating temperature, right? But I mean, first you need thermium at that point. Uh, the video I saw was clear that it wasn't designed to allow the recovery of the igneous, but I thought it could be tweaked. I'm sure anything's doable, right? Anything is doable. Very few things are absolutely impossible and oxygen not included. There is always a glitch somewhere. We have Francis in the chat. Francis says hello. Hello, Francis. How are you doing? I'm glad you're here. Okay. Doing fine. We have another blueprint right here. <laughs> Speaking of slugs. <laughs> we're going to take the eggs. If nothing else, we're going to eat them. Um, even though we really don't have to. We have 134,000 over here. We have 200,000 over there. The food problems are most definitely in the past. When Rhineland says he has a design, maybe it will work. That's always good. Always good. Come on, guys, get it done. On Cold Yell, meanwhile, we can give him some wonderful coal. 
Let's just put over there. You have 164 tons. Just bring it. I don't care. The more the merrier. Not going to cause any issues. So, and right now, right here. Uh, this minor volcano here, it does say rising pressure, but it's not going to erupt because we are in the dormancy phase. Which means uh, this system here is now just shut down. And it's not going to do any harm. Um, even if our steam temperature here were to drop all the way down to uh, the temperature where our water, well, our steam becomes water again. Uh, thankfully, we thought about that, or I guess I did in this case. We need to have our radiant liquid pipe come in in the bottom. That is highly important. It can't come in in the top. If it comes in in the top and we have a long dormancy phase and for some reason we are just losing heat energy because we mess something up. Let's say we put on accident a... Um, um, where are we at? A liquid bridge in here that looks like this for some reason. And we didn't notice. You know, something like that can happen in an absolute heartbeat. Or you, you did it something like this here, right? And you lose your heat in here and uh, all your steam condensates you need to make sure that this pipe right here is in contact with water or steam at all times if it's not it will break immediately <laughs> so yeah that's just a tip from my side if you ever wanted to build something like this here yourself um again it works you just need to be very precise with every single step because otherwise disaster will strike very very quickly All right, 158 tons of coal left. I felt like that was a longer time. Apparently, I was wrong. Um, Keone says, you should see the metal routing I've been working on to make a 16-bit integrated and fire neutron in 32 millimeters, <laughs> 32 nanometer technology. <laughs> I'll be starting on, up on updating that layout soon. I thought about this while we were routing the power wires. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, that's child's play in the meantime here, that's for sure. Let me get rid of this door here. I just hate... I don't know. Is it just me? Those Gravitas doors here? I just hate that design. It just looks so bad. I, I just, yeah. Here I left them because they make a room, but other than that, let's get rid of those. Uh, let me turn around real quick. Grab another drink out of my fridge. Very, very good. Everything's going to plan just very, very slowly, unfortunately. We're bringing more and more coal over. Better too much than not enough. Like I said, if we have 100 tons left over here, I'm more than happy. Absolutely not necessary in any other way, shape or form. Dupes can get over here, of course. Uh, we did that earlier. We're going to put one tile right here, which will enable a liquid lock. And we are golden. Very nice. Over here, though, we should really do something about this. Uh, what are we going to do? How do I say, if in doubt, throw power at it, right? And I will stick true to that. We are going to build us a wire in this general direction right here. Not sure how far yet. Of course, we can't reach it. I'm aware. Um, we're going to do the same thing over here as well. I'm going to go once again, just with a wire straight into this general area here somewhere. We will get... All the resources back, except the power, of course. So, not to be worried. And then... Um, Temperature-wise, we're at negative 39, and over here we are at negative 3. To get to this solid crude oil over here, we need to do something. Um, just need to figure out what exactly something is. <laughs> Uh, let's build us a new row of ladders over here. Just straight through. Every other tile. Slowly but steadily. And then right here the dupes can come down. Walk along here. That's then fine. Don't need this tile anymore. Save it. There we go. Very, very nice. This year we now have it. So all we have to do theoretically, depending on how much we have up here, is... Uh, Basically, dig all this stuff here up. We're going to get rid of all of it. Matter of fact, going to do our old ladder trick. Just every other tile. The dupes will slow down. Uh, but at the end, it's uh, overall much faster.
And of course, you guys already know what's going to come here. I'm just going to plop in a liquid tepidizer, um, probably for a rather short period of time. Uh, shouldn't take too long to melt most of this stuff here with a liquid tepidizer right in front of its nose. So we should be okay. Of course, you duck this side up first. Can we go in uh, G, maybe in middle number nine priority here and middle number seven here? So we kind of roll this way here. That would be nice, not the other direction. We don't need a lot. That's all we need, as a matter of fact. We're already golden. So now at this point, we should have... Let's let it settle. A wonderful liquid lock right here. With those two tiles. Which means we can come here. Take this stuff up. And then we can go ahead. and make a nice airlock. Made out of uranium ore. And as a matter of fact, plop it right there. That should do it. Simple as that. Waka says only good thing about the Gravitas doors is the Somnium synthesizer doors are made of steel, enough to tame a natural gas geyser early game. Really? Didn't we have that thing? They are made out of steel. Are those the only ones made out of steel? I don't think I ever paid too much attention. But oh, these ones here are made out of copper ore. And die while you're at it. I didn't know that those here are made out of steel. And I also have never even clicked on it. Um, oh yeah, that's the dream analyzing thing. I have read once about it, and I've been told that it's not worth it. Your guys' opinions on it? Um, let me know what you think um, about the Somnium synthesizer. I I've been told that it makes basically no sense. <laughs> uh, cinema. You're in America. Be careful how loudly you say the crude O word. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> I know, because otherwise they will deliver me with some democracy, right? <laughs> Helldivers 2 style. Don't know if any of you guys play Helldivers 2, but... <laughs> uh, what do we have here? Not a 50 of steel. Can't hurt. It's a good story trait if you have an absolute ton of dupes. You can also deconstruct the window tiles for glass. That makes sense. Okay. Come on, dudes, get down here, build this, please. There's Jay. Of course, Jay himself is here. The sleeper basically requires a few sleepers to give a benefit uh, benefit to other dupes. See, I read something along the lines of um, it doesn't really. Um, how should I describe it? It doesn't really make sense until you have like a certain amount of dudes that are basically constantly sleeping and they're then doing basically nothing else. If I remember that. Bifo says, um, my opinion of all the story traits are that they get in the way of my building and are best turned off in the beginning of the game. I would almost agree with that, really. I have just turned them on because I have never done any of them. So this time we actually did one of them, which is the ancient specimen here. Which is actually quite interesting because you can convert 1000 grams of diamonds to 100 kilograms of fossil. Which in turn, uh, you can then slap into your rock rusher right here and make a lime out of it. 5 kilograms. So you're basically converting... Um, one kilogram of diamonds to five kilograms of lime. I mean, that's what you're effectively doing. I think that's not too shabby. And truth be told, when we dug around here was the hot uh, fossil. That was actually pretty fun. Um, I did enjoy that, trying to figure out how we get in here without creating about 600 metric tons of sour gas. So... <sighs> Uh, honestly, it's lore and story that's fun for some and not fun for others, depending on your focus. I mean, do I care about the lore and story of Oxygen included? No. No, the answer is no. <laughs> not in the least, to be very, very honest with you. Uh, there are a lot of games where I really enjoy a good story and a good lore. I mean... Um, uh, the Detroit game was really nice. Uh, I enjoyed Horizon games, for example. 
uh, mainly for their story, not necessarily for their gameplay, because they're just good written stories, right? That, that's how I look at it. Um, this year, this is an engineering game. I don't care about the story. I don't care about where the dupes are coming from or where they're going to. I just want to make sure that they have what they need or be tortured. It's going to be one or the other. Um, um, um. Bring these dupes some freedom. <laughs> it says that it unlocks their dreams. Well, then maybe it should let us see their dreams then. I would agree. Is it weird I'm in cycle 514, but without any rockets? And I don't know how to make one. Is it weird? No. Absolutely not. You can spend thousands of cycles only on this one planetoid. There is usually plenty to do. Especially if you have the trade turned on, or if you're not the trade turned on. If you're lucky enough to have a bunch of vents and volcanoes and, and stuff around. I mean, you're not going to run out of stuff um, to do for at least 2,000 cycles, and you have never even been to your second planet to it. It's that simple, in my opinion. So, no, don't be worried about that kind of thing. If you think that, um, that uh, that's weird, absolutely not. You have three natural gas geysers. Okay, well, those are rather easy to tame. Truth be told, that's usually something you can do in a few minutes or in a few cycles, better to say. But still, though, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially if you want to play on your own pace. Who, who am I or who is anybody else for that matter to tell you that's not the way to play this game, right? Uh, it's got to bring up the old discussion again with the infinite storages and, and no infinite storages. I mean, if you like infinite storages, who am I to tell you not to use them? And if you don't like them, who am I to tell you to use them? <laughs> right? There's nothing wrong with that. But you're saying you don't know how to build rockets. Um, that is going to be on the agenda, probably on the next stream. We're just going to build a research rocket. And um, once you figure out how to build a research rocket, everything else is basically just a few modules that you switch back and forth. It's literally that simple. Once you figure out how to do one of them, everything else just falls into place. And I'm talking specifically about petroleum here. Like if you want to go for uh, uh, for the big boy back here, the hydrogen engine uh, that needs liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, uh, we need to dig a little bit deeper there. But also that is not too big of an issue, honestly. You know, um, I'm just considering just closing all this here off with tiles instead of having the mechanized airlock there just to speed up the process. Because yes, does it work? Of course it does. But we could just build some tiles in this entire area here and we can just annihilate all of those spores in an instant. Does it matter though? Epod says, I'm 3000 cycles into my current colony and only touched the two planets so, so far. Yep. Thank you, Depod, for speaking up, making my point here. Um, so... You can see me mitosis. I apologize for that mess up right there. <laughs> mitosis. Um, you are confirmed right here. There is no wrong way to do it. And you can spend thousands of cycles on those two planetoids alone without ever having to leave it. All right. Let's just grab some tiles and let's start filling in. Here are always those two tiles here across, then these two tiles, the last one will be this one, and all the zombie spores, poof, will magically be gone. Uh, Elfie says, I tend to use steam engines for between asteroids or research rockets, then the big one for long range exploration and mining. I usually just completely skip the steam rocket, honestly. Um, usually I skip everything, to be very honest. <laughs> Um, let me go into the research screen again. Usually I go straight for a small petroleum engine. Usually I just uh, research nothing that needs any kind of data analysis research and just use the data banks that I get to get to this point. Once I have that, the only other thing that is really, really important is the... Um, we already have it now. Right here, uh, the specifier module. 
and the nose cone, which costs us no data banks, which is very nice. And then further down, we need um, the last uh, large gas cargo canister, or you can also not use that one. That depends on how you build your rocket. I usually use it for the first one because it's fast and easy. Um, large liquid fuel tank. And last but not least, where is the oxidizer tank? Somewhere is an oxidizer tank. But you, what I'm trying to say is all you need to go to space, you can have without um, going through any of the other rockets. You can go straight petroleum if you choose to do so. I know for a fact because I do it all the time. That is my standard go-to. If you remember, we only built this bad boy right here with its beautiful, beautiful interior with the outhouse. Um, because Sin really wanted to go to space, and I promised him he would go to space, so we did go to space real quick. <laughs> Finished a tileable design. Give me some cycles to test it. 10 minutes or so. Volcano is represented by a dev pump. That works. Absolutely. Rhineland? Absolutely. We will wait until you say. You have a viable build. Seriously, so be it is right. Play how you're comfortable playing as long as you're having fun with uh, fun with it. Again, 100%. That is my opinion. That is my opinion. Jay says, Oni's victory conditions have always felt like an afterthought. It's not a game that you win or lose. It's a game that you play and look for new and different ways to solve the problems. Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. It's um, supposed to bring out your your creativity, but also your your logical thinking, right? It's it's a mixture between both, really. And that's why I always say, I mean, you have heard me say it now several times on stream. Yes, I am beauty of the German engineer, and the entire stick here is efficiency, right? Um. But the truth is, if it works reliably, it's much more important than trying to squeeze out an extra 2% on efficiency and that entire thing then blows up 15 cycles later or 150 cycles later. That is the truth of it. Uh, that is the advice that I can give you. Um, even though that is not necessarily how I will build it on stream because it will be boring for you guys. But if you ask me the question, I will always tell you, get a safe, uh, go, uh, go to safe route. It makes perfect sense. So let's slap one of those bad boys over here and another one. Probably right there. What is it? Why is it? Why does it keep doing that? <laughs> That's an insane bug. So that should, he, uh, that should be heated up here in absolutely no time. And then, um, yeah, what are we going to do here? Still don't know. I still don't have an answer to my own question how to get to this solid crude oil here. We are probably going to do something as simple as we can. We're going to come with a ladder straight up from here. We can't reach that yet. I'm aware, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to come up. Right here, we are going to... Let's see. How are we going to do this? I honestly don't have an immediate answer. Uh... The Abyssalite, all is cold, so it doesn't matter. I keep forgetting that we are in rhyme. Right here, two tiles wide over. Come down here, and then the dupes. We're just going to have you dig through the Abyssalite in a two-tile high way. Yep, that's what we're going to do. That'll solve our problem. Could somebody please build this here? Really? You can't reach that one tile? Good grief. And Cinema Night Entertainment is back with another two dollars. Oh man, and he says, uh, him, it's my special custom captain's chair. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it sure is. He also has some paper to take notes. At least I think that's what it's for. Okay, so can we actually reach this here? We can come down here, two up, over, up, over, up. Yes, we can reach everything without a problem. And somebody, for the love of God, built this here. Thank you. Ah, the liquid tapetizer made short work of the uh, crude oil that we had over here. That is not a surprise. It's not going to uh, be running very long. 
I'm just going to keep manually an eye on it. Of course, I could just put some automation on it, but uh, you're still waiting for shit to be done properly over here. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, we got it. And coal. 100 tons left. Exactly as I wanted. Couldn't be better. Let's disallow the manual use for now. And then when it's empty. Damn it. <laughs> of course, the moment I say it, it's empty. And another dude put something in in the last second. When it's empty, we're going to turn coal off. So I don't leave that on. I'm very bad about turning something on here that goes to the other planetoid, then just turn off, allow manual use, and then when I turn allow manual use back on, we are putting another 60 tons over there, so trying to avoid that as good as possible. In here. Our water is basically only used by those plants right here and by our showers. And even though we clearly had a few of those storage bins here explode out. And we're not getting really still more water in here. Which is slightly suspicious. Let's do some math again here. Uh, those things here need 20 kilograms per cycle. We do have a total of 22. We still have the uh, farm station in here, by the way. Are we still using this thing? Maybe we should turn that off already. Wouldn't that be smart? It's not like we need it. We have 210,000 kilocalories. Um, but once again, we have one of those here using 20 kilograms per cycle. We have a total of 22 of them. Uh, that should make 200, oh, sorry, 400, 440 kilograms per cycle. So 440 kilograms per cycle on bristle blossoms. That's about a half a tile. We should still gain more uh, through ice than we are losing, and we are not. Not entirely sure where my mass is off, but... Will you make a deep freezer for food? Eventually. But it's not really necessary right this moment. Um, all of our food up here is deep frozen just by sitting here. You know, it's not really needed. <coughs> MK1 works. Did the breed shiller not built, but it seems to work? It's always a good thing. Are you okay? No. <laughs> uh, dry throat. Too much talking. Not even gonna lie about it. But that's okay. Um, slowly but steadily. Getting there. The other one should be running too by now. Sure as hell is. Good, good, very good. Ladder coming along. Yep. Uh... Once we are up there, though, please go ahead and gut this here out. Pixar in Discord. Hydration check. Yes, I just took a sip of Coke. <laughs> I should really switch to water, not gonna lie. Let me check Discord real quick. Uh, real, uh, real quick. And let's see. So here we have on Rhineland's build. All right, let me pause the game over here and let's see. I don't think you can see that the way I have it currently set up. Let me switch that over. And let's see if you can see this here. Can you see Discord in the foreground of the game? Or is it just nothing? Uh, let's see if this here works. Because theoretically... It puts it behind the game, doesn't it? I believe it does on Discord. Oh, so Discord should be in the middle of the screen right now. But I don't see it in OBS. If I can see it in OBS, then you can see it on stream either. That's a problem. Um, how can I do this? How can I do this? It isn't. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like I said, I can't see it in OBS. But if I Kill this and kill that. I have it on display capture. If I have it on display capture, then why do you guys not see it? Huh. Let me try it differently here. Give me one second. I'm pretty sure. I mean, how hard can it be, right? Can I go window capture, maybe? If I say Discord... Nope. It doesn't want to show Discord on stream. 
Oh, that's why. Okay, got it. I found the problem. That is actually funny as hell. So Discord has a built-in streamer mode. If the streamer mode is turned on, I don't get any notification if somebody would send me a message or anything. Um, apparently it also hides it from OBS, which is insanity. <laughs> that's why I always stream from a second monitor and just stream the entire monitor. Yeah, I mean, that's the only reason I don't do this. So if there's like any pop-ups away from Windows or some garbage, it doesn't show up for you guys. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's take a look what we have here. I'm going to open this here in the browser. The browser, of course, should also show up here. And there it is. So this here is von Rhineland's um, build. We have a steam turbine up here on the top left. And then we have five steam turbines in a row in one chamber. And then we have all the rows down here on the bottom blocked off. Okay, I, s I see what's going on here. Uh, let's open up the other thing as well. He posted a second picture. I think that's it. There we go. So right here, we have the lava coming in, the magma. And he's putting it, just like I did, at 999 grams per second, I would assume, into those... Um, Hang on the tip of my tongue. What are those damn things called? <laughs> God. Liquid valves, of course. What am I talking about? And then... He's just feeding it up here. He's using super coolant. You can tell by the color. So it's definitely a, a late game build. And he is just cooling down his auto sweeper. Because the auto sweeper is going through the corner, like I suggested earlier. Very, very nice. And then over here on the left side... We are cooling down this area. I'm assuming there's probably a sort of picture where we are feeding all of our igneous rock through here. That would at least make sense. Other than that, we are just cooling down our, our steam vents, or our, our, not steam vents, but our steam turbines down. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. And in here, just with some slight automation, opens up the door whenever. I mean, that would definitely be a viable thing. I mean, this here is just basically the exact thing that I built uh, just with a def liquid pump. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Von Rheinland says, I think that you can also use a polluted water for the cooling. The, the breed chiller uh, is not ready. Uh, thinking about it. Oh, okay, you haven't built it yet. That's fine. That's totally fine. But I mean, yeah, this is definitely a viable solution if you have enough magma. I mean, theoretically, you gotta imagine that each blob right here is uh, 10 kilograms. So if you have a big enough volcano, a volcano that can support it, uh, which I'm not even sure exists in the game, though, uh, you can theoretically pump 10 kilograms per second through here and then just put 10 kilograms per second, one kilogram each, uh, 10 times out of here. That is definitely and absolutely doable. If it makes sense or not is another question, though. But yeah, it makes perfect sense what I see here. That's a good build. I like it. Good job. And you came up with that in basically no time. That's impressive. That is very impressive. Okay, all that's good. Our wiring should be in by now, I hope. Yes, thank God it is. Um, we will need more metal over here, though. We only have a little bit of iron left, a little bit of steel, and a little bit of aluminum. Basically, no iron. So, to finish up our build over here, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to, right here, um, before we do that, though, let's take another quick look into iron, into refined metals. That's what I was looking for. Refined metals, we have 117 tons of lead and only 30 tons of iron left. Oh, you're going to go with lead. Um, should never get that hot that we should have a problem with it, so we're just going to take out a bunch of lead and shove it over there. Simple. Very, very simple. There we go. Done.
I keep getting notifications on Discord. Now you can hear the little gudunk noise in the background uh, because just three of you joined. And of course, everybody who joins gets a beer. Thank you guys for joining the Discord. Of course, as I said earlier, I highly appreciate that. Sorry, it was me. <laughs> there is no need to apologize for joining my Discord channel. I appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, um, if you're not on Discord yet, feel free to join. Um, then we have a bunch of good people on there. Another one, Ekna007. Welcome to Discord. Um, we have a bunch of knowledgeable people on there. Uh, it's not just me that answers this question. We have currently 380 people, I believe, on Discord. Um, most of them are only players in one way or another. And if you should ever have a question, usually somebody is around or at least not too far away to answer your questions and help you out more or less on the spot. Um, which is what I love. Even if I don't see it myself, usually up until the point I come online and check my notifications on my phone and I'm at work or something, the person that asked the question already has um, their answer. And I don't even need to answer. <laughs> Of course, now it's unreachable because uh, that uh, solid crude oil here is molten. So let's put us three more ladders in so we can get over here and finish this up. And of course, while I'm at it, act now on Discord. It's a beer as well. How can I avoid the crude oil converts into sour gas? Well, yeah, it's a very fine line on temperature. When we take a look here, our crude oil uh, goes at 399.9 degrees over to petroleum. And when we then go to petroleum, that goes at 538 degrees over to sour gas. So you basically have 138 degrees to play with, uh, that your petroleum will be stable. It's, um, it's sometimes not easy, depending on what you build. I'm not going to lie about it. Um, a lot of people have made uh, sour gas on accident before, and I am one of those. And I'm sure basically everybody else as well. <laughs> oh, Sin. <laughs> Sin says, wait, if I join, I get a beer? <laughs> yes, you do indeed. <laughs> a digital beer, though. So, uh, yeah, here's the disclosure for you. That is really funny, though. If I join, I get a beer. Alright, we should have enough lead now to replace most of our wires over here. If not all of them, as a matter of fact. So right here, I'm just going to replace all of them so we don't have any problems later. I really hate it if I uh, accidentally forget one piece um, and it becomes a whole disaster. So we're going to just come through here, through the entirety of it. Is this power grid here very efficient? No, no, not really. It's just going around however the hell I felt like at the time. So there's that. But uh, yeah, right here. We are going to snip you off and we are going to snip you off. That's not going to cause any trouble, is it? No, it's not. And then we are going to take our second power wire right here. Once again, made out of lead. And finish up the rest. There we go. Let's connect it together. Come down here. All made of lead. All no problem. And then of course right here we still have our deodorizers. So actually this here is not going to be rebuilt with a different metal. You're actually going to be ripped out as a matter of fact. There you go. And also down here on the bottom. We're going to rip this here out as well. That's a lot better. And as a matter of fact I could go uh, even a step further. Let's take a, a look here. It could go down here. Your dog just set my dogs off? <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, um, Jesus, so I'm going to confess something and you may throw me out. <laughs> We'll see what that is. Um, um, where did I stop? There we are. That's a good idea. Have to get one. There you go. AK Beard here is lazy and wants to do, to do the work for him. I would never, never. Uh, yeah, gotta micromanage those temps with automation. 
or you might turn them into sour gas depending on your build yes yep we are like i said i am going to do something like that actually um unless we end up with a petroleum boiler but i mean we are we have all this oil down here on the bottom right beside the magma and when i look at the, all this frozen crude oil that we have left over all over the damn place i'm pretty sure that the entire bottom of the map's gonna be filled with bloody crude oil by the time we're done here that's what it looks like to me i mean look there, there's even more over here and i don't even know what's going to be over here probably more i assume so yeah might as well use the magma that we have in one place or another and try to convert our crude oil that way so we will see how that goes And Che says, I don't like the taste of alcohol and I don't like the smell of beer. And say, I don't like the taste since it's probably been at least 30 years since I tried it. <laughs> well, I guess if you make a confession, I make one too. My name's Beardier, but I don't actually drink much in any way, shape or form. Um, it is just what it is. The name actually comes from somewhere completely different. Maybe I'll let you guys know one day. But, um, yeah, it's not like that I am a big um, beer drinker or anything myself. If I drink beer, it's mainly in social occasions. <laughs> yes, Gunnar, immediately petroleum boiler time. Did I hear petroleum boiler? <laughs> That's funny. Could use those two uh, volcanoes here and build a petroleum. Or this one over here and build a petroleum boiler out of it and literally just bring the crude oil over and then feed it back through here. <laughs> that would be insane, but it would definitely be viable. Um, choose a blueprint. <sighs> I don't want another dupe in here. We have plenty of dupes to go around. Let's get us some food. We actually have more, uh, one dupe more than I wanted from the beginning over here, so. Is it the German band? I don't know if there's a German band that has anything with beer or tear in it, honestly. At least not that I can think of one off the bat, so no, that, that ain't it. <laughs> Everything's looking good, just slow as usual, you damn dupes. Once all this is ripped out, um, the reason why I'm changing it, and I'm actually ripping this wire out and not rebuilding it out of letters, because we don't need it. Um, we're going to come with our heavy watt wire just all the way through here, back all the way down and feed it back into our main system. That's the easiest, fastest, best solution right here. And it makes sense anyway, because we have to go somewhere with our steam turbine, so might as well go down to the, to the source. And since we are in a cold biome uh, that happens to have an anti-entropy thermo nullifier attached to it, we are going to make it as easy as possible. And we are just going to plop us somewhere around here a large power transformer in. Just as simple as that. 607 kilograms of slime are still in there. That's totally okay, though. Not too worried about it. But yeah, they're first going to rebuild all the wires made out of lead. By the way, speaking of it, I think we have enough lead now. Might as well turn it off real quick here. Allow manual use. Go away. Probably going to plop in a little bit more, as usual. Turn up the speed. Get rid of it. And that should be the end of it. Back on Smelina, we have a now in a lead, and it's not even all here. Oh, that's only... Oh, 13 tons here. Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. Oh, 13 tons of lead. That's uh, plenty. <clears throat> they are called beer tier. There is an actual band in Germany that, that, that is called beer tier. Oh, hold on a second. I gotta Google that. Beer tier. The German punk rock band. Holy shit. Are you serious? <laughs> but it does say here eight years ago. And in all fairness, I have been using the beer tier tag online even long before I had a YouTube channel for at least 
let me think about that. It was still in Germany. Like, at least since, like, 2005 or so. So, uh, if somebody has a trademark, it's the guy right here, all right? <laughs> Maybe I should sue him. I'm in America. Should be a lot of money in it, right? <laughs> he only says, so no, sounds like a copyright claim. That's what I'm saying here. <laughs> That is funny, though. I had no idea. I had no idea. That there is actually a band called Beauty in Germany. Holy cow. Trademark, not copyright. Yep. Can't deny it, you're right. You are right. And I can probably prove it with my Steam account that is still from, uh, you know, Half-Life 2 times, where my username was already Beertier at that time. <laughs> to sue a failed pa a punk rock band, you can't get blood from the regulars. <laughs> uh. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Slowly but steadily. Come on, dupes. Please, just destroy those wires. All I'm asking for. Uh, we're only destroying the wires, though. Not also the insulated liquid pipe. No, good. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Copyright claim would be if they were sampling clips from your YouTube videos in their songs. I mean, that would be hilarious, though. Imagine some German ass punk rock band and in the background of their music video uh, somebody's playing Oxygen Not Included. <laughs> uh, that is funny. I would celebrate it, not gonna lie. Okay. I'll be looking in F3. Still nothing. Over here. Still not getting much warmer. I mean, we're at zero degrees, but it's still not like hot, hot or anything. So we can just let it run. <laughs> yeah. Now, though, what we need temporarily, again, as usual, is going to be right here. A pump. Insulated pipe. And then right around here, a liquid vent. And then we're going to connect that whole entire shebang here. Do some power, just like that. And we are pumping the quote-unquote hot crude oil from down here up to there. And we are just flooding this area up until everything's molten. Easy. And Chase says, and honestly, wouldn't that just be cool if they were? I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. That would be insane. Wait, we have zombie spores out here? How did we get zombie spores all over the place out here? How did that happen? Seriously, though. How did they get out? You should have been destroyed when I put a tile right there. That is a problem. Thankfully, not a very big one. Um, the nice thing is they're literally just dying because of the temperature. So we don't have to do a damn thing and it's all good. Um, when Rhineland says turbines are working at max, but I think a second aqua tuner is needed for cooling. Cooling the debris? Yeah, I can see that. That one is probably not going to be enough to delete enough heat, even with super coolant. <laughs> Sin says... Don't become that American. We are embarrassed by how litigious we are. Well, most of us. I mean... It is what it is, right? That's apparently what the legal system is set up for. Be careful. Contents of coffee, uh, contents of cup may be hot. 
No, you say, literally the moment I say Che is posting it, the famous McDonald's hot coffee case is a horrifying example of this. <laughs> Everybody on this planet, I believe, knows about the McDonald's coffee case. It's just, just hilarious, though. Uh. But yes, you're not wrong. Everybody does know about this case. And it is hilarious, to say the least. We are still melting us happily through here, towards the left. Um, I'm just going to dig up this one tile here, not because we need this one tile of lead, but I want a dupe to come over here so we can see more uh, what's going on there. To be fair, it was overheated cup of coffee. Well, I, I still have a hard time uh, feeling sorry about that, though. Because no matter how hot the coffee is, you know what's in that cup, or you're supposed to know that what's in that cup could be hot. Potentially very hot, so. A lot of people don't know the real details about that case. Um, what are the real details about the case? Um, yes, but not everyone knows that the claim was extremely valid and McDonald's was 100% in the wrong. Their coffee was well above the legal temperature limit. They've received numerous citations. I mean, just that you have to have a quote-unquote legal temperature limit for coffee. I mean, I would argue that at the point when you touch the outside and it burns your hand, at that point it's too hot. Everything else is up to you. The woman received serious burns and was only suing for her cost. Didn't she receive like... I don't think it was a hell of a lot, but I think it was like... Um, like a, a low seven-figure number. We're talking less than 10 million here, right? Legal Eagle talked about it on his channel. I do know Legal Eagle and I love the guy. He's great. But I have not seen his uh, piece about this particular case, though, honestly. Let's rip most of the stuff here out. We don't need it anymore. We can also release the oil a little bit. It's uh, getting higher and higher over here. There we go. Oops, can make it through again. coffee was almost 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately, I don't know what Fahrenheit are. <laughs> 180 Fahrenheit should be roughly about maybe 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. Is that right? Let's see here. Is that stuff here melting? I need about a 180 degree hot oil right now to melt this shit, honestly. McDonald's coffee is the perfect heat source for a petroleum boiler. <laughs> In all fairness, I cannot say that I ever had a cup of coffee from McDonald's. Oh, there's that. 140 is normal for very hot coffee, and that's still enough to burn the shit out of your mouth. Uh, 210 boiling, 82 to 88 uh, Celsius. Hey, that was not a bad guess then, I guess. She had to have plastic surgery to correct the damages. I mean, I understand all that. But still, though. It's just hard for me to get behind the case that um, you had something hot in your hand, no matter how hot it is, you know it's hot, and then you poured it over yourself. You know what I mean? It's like I'm working with hot plastic every day, right? And we are talking, I don't know, in Fahrenheit, but we are talking about 250 to 400 degrees Celsius. If I get that stuff on my hand for a split second, it will, I will have 30 degree burns too. Do I know that beforehand? Yes, 
But even if I let a fresh coffee out of a coffee machine, I'm trying my best not to get it over me, right? I, I don't know. It's just hard to make a company responsible for that, in my opinion. Like in Germany, that wouldn't fly, I guarantee you that. That case would get thrown out <laughs> in a heartbeat. Imagine having your little bear burn so bad you needed to have surgery to make him work again. She didn't pour it over herself. It was served to her at a drive-thru. Wait, are you... Are you no, wait a second. Now we're getting somewhere. Did the drive-thru personnel pour it over her? That is a good question, because if it was the personnel from McDonald's, now the story changes. In my opinion, at least. Again, not a legal expert or anything, right? Um, how about you chill out here for a second? You're not even in oil anymore. Thank you. John says, do they, ha uh, do they now have a warning to not put the ca cup in your lap? I mean, that would be the next good question, right? <laughs> Where do the warnings stop? Right? Yes, but the coffee fresh out of the machine wouldn't cause third degree burns. Probably not. Can't say I've ever tried that. Again, I don't know. I'm not a big coffee drinker, so I, I honestly don't know exactly um, how hot coffee is. Um, I get my coffee in, usually in uh, more of a Red Bull form than a coffee form. I think it's Fahrenheit at a 9 divided by 5 times C plus 32. Yes, it is a stupid formula like that that I just absolutely refuse to use. And if I live in this country for the rest of my life, um, that is another point that I, or that is a hill I will die on. <laughs> uh. We either use Kelvin or we use Celsius. Nothing else. <laughs> They failed to secure the lid properly on an overheated coffee. Hot Red Bull in the morning, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it was spilled during the handover and it spilled all over her lap. Now that, in my opinion, again, not a legal expert, just my honest opinion, does change uh, things drastically because if uh, the employee handed it to you not properly and then poured over you and then on top of that is being uh, hot enough to cause third degree burns now we have a problem in my opinion right gabriel says i'm tired uh see you guys later good night gabriel Thank you very much for joining. I hope you have a good rest of your night. Have a good one. Dreadup says nothing wrong with using C in the US. Oh, I know. Um, at every company that I have worked so far in the United States, Celsius was always the standard. And that also makes sense because it's used everywhere in the world. So in basically almost every industrial setting, Celsius is the standard anyway. Um, at least if you have international cast, uh, international customers or uh, you potentially even being owned by an international company. They still have their coffee machine set extremely hot. They lobbied to change the law and it's no longer illegal. See, I had no idea there is a law how hot I can sell coffee for. I had no idea that is a thing. <laughs> Alone, that's, that, that is insane that you need a law for that. I mean, just think about that. That you need to have a law that dictates how hot of a coffee you can sell. That's crazy. <sighs> I 
Eric says K1 is the one true temperature. And I will agree with that statement all day long. 100%. I can get behind that. Unfortunately, unless you are in a highly scientific environment, it's not being used by anyone. But the nice thing is, if you do know Celsius, you automatically also know Kelvin. Uh, so that makes it very, very easy. Did we get this done by now, guys? Yes, we got it. Ah, looks like we got it. Couple more steps to go to get this thing here up and running. Almost done. It feels like this uh, well, uh, tamer right here is uh, moving like molasses, honestly. Uh, we can come with this wire here, though, straight through here and straight along there. Definitely can do that. Give me the heavy water wire. We are going to come down over and then right here. Straight. Or maybe not straight. Maybe we need two bridges. I thought we, going, we can just go straight through. That is apparently not the case. But all of this here needs to be built in one way or another. You will have to have these two here dug out to reach it all though. That should be good. Since it's a beer, I bet I could convince you over a conversation better than a chat. That may well be. I just don't have all the information available, obviously. It's also not something that I have ever looked too deeply into. It's just a very famous example of, a, uh, of an insane lawsuit in the United States that's basically known all over the planet. But there are many, many more in that, right? Um, where you can basically sue anyone for anything. When I worked at a place that served coffee, managers would test the temperature every so often for that reason. Crazy. It's a, uh, it's a consumer protection thing. Also, most companies want to limit their potential liability, which is why you can't get truly hot coffee at Starbucks. Okay. Uh, Kelvin and C are only different by 273 degrees. Exactly. The, the scale is the exact same. It's just a shifted scale. That's the difference between uh, um, Celsius and Kelvin, for example. Uh, sorry, Celsius and Fahrenheit, I mean. Uh, it's a completely different scale. It's not just shifted. I use Kelvin all the time. What do you use Kelvin for, Kionis? I'm truly curious because... I mean, obviously I know how it works and all, but it's um, it's not something that I ever use in, like, quote-unquote, normal life. <laughs> I use ranking just to be different. <laughs> just to be contrary, that's funny. Uh. Uh, I says, is that too viel Öl beim Gold Vulkan? Oh, shit. Nobody has noticed. We're too deep in lawsuit territory. Nobody here has noticed that we have uh, about a gazillion tons of bloody uh, oil inside of our volcano tamer. I never turned off the bottle in here. Yes, ice. You're correct. There is a little bit, just a little bit too much oil inside of the volcano tamer. Oh, good God. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but also at the same time, maybe even slightly helpful. Um, can we heat this here up a little bit? Because the moment we put water in here, it will become ice. There is no question in my mind about it. Um, this uh, block of granite right here has a mass of 1,840 kilograms, and it's at negative 7.5 degrees Celsius. So the moment we put uh, water on top of it, it will probably freeze. Negative 40 Celsius is negative 40 Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's another reason why I hate that scale, because it's not even linear. 
Should I sue Papa Chance for the pizza burning the roof of my mouth? You may have actually pretty good chances to win that suit. Who knows? Yeah, if we worked in cryogenics, we'd use it a lot more often or in color temperatures and such. But since that stuff is all black magic and fairy dust, we won't get to use it very often. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're in working in, in one of those fields, right? That's why I asked Keonis what he's using it for. About energy calculations, temperature of antennas, that makes sense. Energy level in dielectric material, I see that as well. Um, BSE Semiconductor Physics does uh, many calc uh, calculations using KBT. Okay, so you actually are in a field where you use it. That's awesome, though. I love it. That's great. Uh, dupes, are you going to mop this here ever? Probably not during night, but still, at some point, it would be nice if you would actually do something. There's oil everywhere now. He puts so much oil in here. <laughs> oh, God. We put all the oil in here. Literally all the oil. Okay, guys. And once again, we got too deep into a uh, certain conversation. No, no matter the topic, doesn't matter what it is. It just happened to be uh, McDonald's lawsuits at this point, I guess. Uh, that we completely missed collectively. But especially me, since I'm actually playing the game. That this thing here was still running the entire time. Ball empty here, number nine. Come on, guys, get that thing built so we can plop our oil back in where it belongs. Reddit says, okay, now I'm curious, since there is only about 50 ish people watching, what does everyone do for a living? I would actually be interested in that too, not gonna lie. <laughs> Dex says, hey, look, a squirrel. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened here. That is precisely what happened here. Down here, we have 391 kilograms. If I dig through here and dig this here up, then hopefully we can uh, mop it back up. Actually, I need to dig one lower. Yeah, all this here needs to be dug up, including this tile. That should give us enough on the bottom. Oh, come on, bears. Uh, you do know you can't get out of here, right? Okay, good. You have a pocket of air. He is not happy being down there, is he? Oh, it's still too much liquid. Oh, come on. We really need to dig this here up as well, just to extend it a little bit. Uh, now we do need a ladder, though. Uh, let's bring it down. And now, are we able to mop it? Yes, now we are able to mop it. There we have it. Now it's all good. It will be set to crude oil and nothing but crude oil. With a priority, that should do the job. Okay. Status quo is restored for now. This here is okay. Two more things to do down here on the bottom. Yes, this time we're going to do it right. We're going to snip and snap and snip and snap. And then come straight through. There we go. That will get the job done now. So power is connected as well. And now, finally, we will need in ventilation a gas pump that we will put right there, because that's totally fine. We will come with a insulated gas pipe straight out to right here. Yep, that will destroy this tile right there, but we do not care. We are going to replace both of them while we are at it, just so we don't make the mistake later once again. And then in ventilation, a gas vent right here as well. Our pressure is comparatively low, so it doesn't matter too much. Is the slime lung back? Seriously? No. I thought I just saw slime lung somewhere. Yep, there are a couple more. Oh yeah, that's fine though. They will die all by themselves. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have... Um, since I work at a gas station as well as part-time at a PR firm. Um, Waka says, at work... All of our European machines are in C, and the US machines are in F. I don't care which uh, which is used, 
Just that all were the same. Yeah, exactly. I mean, since I'm the lead engineer, thankfully I make that decision. <laughs> and it's all in Celsius. Uh, simple. What else do we have here? We have... I was a pro photographer for a short time, but I'm on disability now. A pro photographer. Sounds interesting. Retired Air Force and student of electrical engineering. Awesome. Calendaring plastics. Hey, you're down my field. Uh, data management software for materials testing in CAE. And Kionis is transitioning into graduate teaching assistant. Okay. Uh, didn't know that you were becoming a teacher. That's awesome. Small engine mechanic. Ain't no gas in it. <laughs> oh, John. That's funny. That, that is funny as hell. Oh, God. I'm sure that is probably the case or the problem, quote unquote, 99% of the time. I didn't. <laughs> uh, was Lena says, I'm doing my household if I can. Otherwise, gaming, I'm almost 60. Seriously? That is amazing. I had no idea um, that we have uh, that age group here in the chat. That's great. Lena, welcome. That's awesome. Threaded started as a machinist and then worked my way into aviation. I became a mechanic and now I run a fairly large FBO in the Northwest US. Uh, probably one of the most notable things um, I've been involved. That is really awesome, though. Um, it's not like that I work in the field or anything, so don't understand me wrong, but I am a, a huge um, aviation enthusiast, if you want. I mean, I love everything um, that has to do with flying, anything from the mechanics to the physics uh, to the different crashes, why they happened, what exactly happened. All of that is, is personally, to me, highly interesting. What else do we have here? Uh, Sin. Oh, I'm also a streamer, but that doesn't make much other than being annoying at tax time. <laughs> I don't know how it works in the UK, but I do know. So um, I don't know if you guys know uh, Luma. Luma plays his channel. Uh, him and I are um, uh, somewhat good friends, I would say. We talk relatively often. We play some other games together and whatnot, you know. Just hang out and have a good time. And of course, we also talk about our YouTube channels. And it's a disaster in Germany, supposedly, um, from a tax perspective to, to be a streamer. Um, like if you, what did he tell me? I can't remember. I think if you set up YouTube memberships or something, you have to register as a TV station or something along those lines. It's complete insanity. So, yeah, I don't know how it works in the UK, but uh, in Germany, it's a disaster. Um, slime lung is in the base side. We have slime lung in here. We how what how what what what? How did that happen? How did? Oh, what am I missing here? How did the slime lung make it all the way over there? We have our wash basin right here. It shouldn't have. Unless they carried something over that was infected with it, maybe? Well, thankfully, it's not that big of a problem. We have the hydrogen gas right here. It is happily living on it for a long, long time. Um, so, yeah, that is a problem. But other than that, in F4, let's take a look. Let's get rid of every last piece of polluted oxygen that we have. And that will solve our problem really quickly. Everything else we are going to clean up uh, with some wonderful, wonderful radiation. Uh, you know, it, that's my go-to for basically anything. If there's a problem, just throw some radiation at it and call it a day. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Where else do we have a bunch of stuck? Up here on the top, we have some. And maybe even something like this here. For that, we need to replace this PC with an airflow tile, though. And once that is done, we can plop the other riser on top. Let's hook those here up to power that need it. And that should be then hopefully at least the end of it. And probably just to be on the safe side, let's put one more deodorizer down here. 
because we do have this slime right here. I should have probably done something along the lines of a manual airlock here once we had it all in there, because we're not going to get any more anytime soon. I just didn't. And that is now coming to haunt me. As a matter of fact, I could do it completely different and just take a deodorizer and slap it right here. And an airflow tile. That should take care of it. Or good. Anything that's coming out will not be a problem anymore. It's going to take this wire right here. Make it out of lead, please. Thank you. And bring it down. All right. Let's get this here done. Uh, I'm a carpenter. Second oldest profession. That is very true, Pifo. And that is actually pretty amazing. Uh, cannot underestimate some awesome woodwork. Uh, Dreadip says, uh, with us developing air tankers used in wildfires. I've also worked on several celebrities' personal aircraft. Katy Perry, Che Leno, Ed Norton, and some NFL guys and local bureaucrats. That's really awesome, though. Did you get to meet any of them, though? Or did you just work on their aircraft? Not that it makes a difference. I'm just curious. Uh, Puzlino says, I'm from 1966, so I'm 58. Thank you. <laughs> and Drex says, right there with you age-wise. That's actually uh, quite crazy, um, if I may share that. My dad was born in 63, so yeah. But again, I do not discriminate by age or anything else for that matter. Well, I'm just glad you have time uh, to hang out here. That's awesome. What's the oldest profession? Oh, you know what the oldest profession is, Waka. We all do. Uh, Dex, you're also following Echo. We're talking, of course, about Echo Rich Gaming. Uh, I have watched maybe a couple of his streams personally, but um, I like his uh, his older videos more. I don't really like his uh, stream personality too much. It's a little bit over the top to me, but again, nothing against the guy in any way, shape, or form. Not here to hate on him. It's just my personal opinion. Um... We'll have to ask Jack what it is like in the UK. I also love to watch people. They know how to play the only game. Uh, watch people? Yeah, Oxygen Not Included is a game that does take just a lot of time to, to master. There is no question about it. Okay, now we have these here. The only thing that's missing, of course, is a little bit of power, which we do not have yet. Uh, we need to figure out where to put that thing. Let me do that real quick. What is a good location, uh, if any? We're going to do a large power transformer. We're going to go big or go home here. Um, is there anything stopping me from putting it right here? The answer is no, other than this piece of ladder, which we're going to get rid of. So let's get rid of it, and then let's try this again with our large power transformer right here smack dab in the middle. Um, what else do we have here? You broke the liquid lock for a while. Apparently that was enough. I thought I looked at it. And we had slime lung up here and we had oxygen down here. And I thought there wouldn't be a problem. Apparently I was dead wrong. Thankfully, it's nothing that is not fixable. So it's not that big a deal, thankfully. But yeah, I thought... Um, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, Sin says, I'm on Facebook. It counts as an independent entertainment contractor here in the US for me. Oh, wait, you're in the US, uh, Sin? Oh, I thought you're in the UK. I must be uh, dead wrong. Or did you mean UK? I could have sworn you're from the UK. What do you use to reset the conveyor meter? Uh, the conveyor meter is actually connected to itself. It's uh, very simple. Once the amount right here hits whatever you set up, like let's say three in this case, it will just reset itself over and over and over again. You don't need anything for that. Um, what else do we have? Actually met uh, Ka uh, Kathy and Ed Norton. Oh, Ed Norton, that's awesome. Shot the shit with, <laughs> with Leno while he waited for his taxi. That's awesome, Dredd. That is really cool, though. Uh, Chase says his edited stuff is decent. I tried to watch Echo Ridge stream and it wasn't, and it was indeed too much for me. Again, that's just my personal opinion. You know, and I make a video, I'm just me. 
if I stream, I'm I'm the same dude that you see in the in in my videos. There's no difference. I talk the same. I do the same thing. Obviously, it looks all completely scuffed because I'm live. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> and obviously, there's not much laughing. For example, in my videos, because I mean, if you just talk to yourself, it's uh, not really that funny, I guess. All right, large power transformer is up and running. Now we just need to slowly but steadily get also into this anti-entropy thermal nullifier so we can keep this cold area here actually cold. Uh, that will be important as well. Yeah, 1,000 hours for the basic. I mean, you probably... 1,000 is probably slightly over the top, but... Um, a few hundred? Yes. I would say a few hundred is a good estimate of, of the amount of time that you need um, to get good at the game and understand the, the mechanics that, that you need to do basic builds, right? Um, to get to literal end game, like we we're talking space grade materials and stuff, you probably need a thousand hours here. When Rhineland says double the cooling and turbines, but I think maybe two to three turbines per heat chamber would be better. Uh, Sin is 43 here, okay? In okay, case so you guys are wondering, I'm actually surprised that nobody has asked me yet how old I am. Um, I am 33, uh, just so you know. Um, I agree with your assessment of Echo Ridge Life. The videos and tutorials are in bad, though. Agree? 100%. His tutorials are... are Top notch. There is a, not a damn thing to complain about. Muslina is Dutch. That's awesome. I love me the Dutch. Good old Holland. Thanks so far it works, but I had to keep manually resetting it. Yeah, yeah, you just need to put a wire in here and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. English is not my main language, so I need to translate all so... I was needed uh, 1,000 hours. Yeah, I can see that, of course, right? Especially um, um, if you don't use English a lot. I obviously don't know what you're doing, right? But if you are not using English a lot, then especially uh, the words and the stuff that is used in a game like Oxygen not included, like a specific heat capacity. If you're European and you're not from the UK, and you don't speak native English, when would you ever hear about it? Right? It's just a, an example that comes to mind. Or igneous rock. Like, what the hell would that be if you have no idea? So, yeah. Sin says, you said your age two streams ago, you silly millennial. <laughs> that may well be... But I would assume that two streams ago, we didn't have the exact same people here that we have right now. At least not all of them. That's why I said I was uh, surprised that none of the other people that haven't been here two streams ago um, haven't asked yet, because that is, I feel like, a common question. I have a problem. I found a carbon dioxide vent and it outputs 500 degrees Celsius. Wait, what? A carbon dioxide vent that outputs 500 degrees Celsius. Yeah, sound right. <laughs> Treat up says, okay, since we are sharing, what's everyone's social security number and mother's maiden name? <laughs> That's funny. Oh my. We have all this ice right here. We are probably just for right now plopping the ice into um, storage bins over here. We are going to put it into the polluted water and I do not care about that in any way, shape or form. It is totally fine for right now. If a worse comes to worse, we can always separate it later. Um, or should we make an extra tank for it? You know what? Let's just screw the ice for right now. 
and let's finish our tamer first before we do anything else. Let's screw the debris, at least the debris that's out, uh, the debris that's inside the tamer. We do need to get rid of that, though. That has to happen. Um, our gas pump right here is ready to roll now. Now we just need a little bit of water in here. Uh, yeah, once we have the water, we are golden. And we can create a vacuum. Finish the top, finish the bottom, and we are finally done. Good grief. Cycle 541 on Rhyme, my first record shows up. Oh yeah, speaking of the devil. Um, don't want to dupe. We could get some fertilizer, probably over on Coldiel, though. Let's do that. Over here, printing pod, choose blueprint. We're going to get us a fertilizer over here. Three tons, definitely a good thing to have. In F3, oh yeah, oh yeah. Over here, we are slowly but steadily getting into the realm where we, act in the realm where we actually heat up our crude oil quite drastically. So uh, let's come through here. So we can get this crude oil here molten. And also in the meantime, let's snip this here off. Not that I really care about the power, but we also don't need to boil the living crap out of the soil here for no particular reason. So, might as well come even further because there's more solid crude oil right there. Let's do that. Uh, let's take another look. We have a few pictures on Discord. So, let's see what you guys have going on over here. Let me put Discord back onto the screen here. We have on Ryanland sharing. My goodness, a lot has happened. Ego says, I think this is good. Yes. No. Okay, so there are a couple problems here. You have a problem. You have actually... Okay, this right here I assume is a vacuum, so that's totally fine. Um, as long as you have a vacuum there, the door is not going to hurt anything. Um, yeah, you can literally leave it as is. But up here on the top, if you don't close off your steam turbines, you're just releasing the cold into the area. Um, just to look at it. Uh, down here on the bottom... All this here looks perfectly fine. I don't see a problem with it. We have the output right here and you're just dropping it on the floor at negative 9.8 degrees. Yeah, like I said, just up here because you don't have this here closed off and because you don't have this here closed off, uh, you're uh, wasting a lot of your energy uh, by cooling down basically your entire base. Does it matter too much? No, as long as it works, it's totally fine. No problem whatsoever. Good job. On Rhineland. Uh, let's see what we have going on here. I need to open that in the browser. Oh my goodness. That is a, a lot of igneous rock. <laughs> <laughs> also, you gotta say, now you have you had it probably accumulated down here on the bottom. Um, that's probably not what it necessarily would look like if you like restart it. As in, you already have all this here built, and then you introduce your magma. That would probably an, uh, be an idea. Let's see. What else do we have going on here? Oh, grief. Okay, so you built it a hell of a lot bigger. As in a hell of a lot bigger, you built it probably for 10 exactly as I said earlier. <laughs> Without counting it manually. Uh, that is a lot of mass to cool, though. An insane mass to cool. Yep. Standard setup for our um, automation right here. Up here on the top and down here, we're just opening up the valve. What's your output temperature? Like on this particular picture here, the last one that we just looked at right here. Can we get this bigger? No, that's not how it works. Uh, right here, I'm wondering what your output temperature is. And how cold is your super coolant? Since you can go much cooler than negative 19 degrees. And what else do we have here? We have the carbon... Oh, okay. I was thinking of the uh, lower vents that are coming out really, really cold. Um, the thing is carbon dioxide. Uh, let's go back into our game here and let's find us some carbon dioxide down here on the bottom. 
has an extremely low specific heat capacity. It holds basically nothing. Um, so to cool down that carbon dioxide is uh, very easy peasy. There's really no good use for it. Um, what could you do? You could do something like I did over here. You could literally just uh, have a couple of temp shift plates in the back here and run a pipe through it, an, a radiant liquid pipe, uh, with some kind of water that's slightly colder. Like here, I'm running here with a, a 92 degrees through it uh, to cool down the steam. And that works like a charm. No problem at all. But uh, actually, it is slightly overpressured. We may need to cool down the water just a notch to get a little bit more uh, cooling out of it, maybe. But for carbon dioxide, that would work without a problem. Absolutely no issue. Carbon dioxide basically holds uh, no heat at all. How is this here going? Do we have any more frozen stuff around here in the bottom? Bunch of diamond. Oh, there's another big batch back here. And up here on the top, we are still feeding in... Yeah, we probably need to relocate our insulated pipe here. Uh, probably all the way to the back. Just so that this here works out. There we go. Let's get rid of all this nonsense here. Uh, what was that? Fix. Deconstruct. And we are through. Liquid vent, deconstruct, and done. When Rhineland says the output is 250 degrees and the Ignis rock is at 30 degrees. Okay then. That works like a charm, I would say. That's really nice. Uh, let me take a look at chat. Yes, they have them, but they don't put out much mass. Yes, exactly. They don't have any mass in it, so it's easy to cool them. Uh, Dex is absolutely correct. Um, Capita never touch it again. <laughs> yes, that would also be my advice. Not gonna lie. But a CO2 vent, either leave it plugged or build walls around it and fill it with water. Also a good idea. Um, uh, what else do we have going on? I'm Gen X and I stand by it. The baby boomlet, aka the millennials, were the baby boomlet, aka the millennials, were the first defined by people who turned 18 after the year 2000. Hence the name. No, wait a second. A millennial does not go after the year 2000. That would be uh, Gen Z. That would be after the year 2000. I was 18 and 99, so you are in fact a Gen Xer, I believe. I was born in 91, and I am most definitely a, millenn a millennial, and bloody proud of it while we are at it. Oh, who turned 18 after the year 2000? I'm sorry, I misread it. Turned 18 after the year 2000. I, I thought you meant born after the year 2000. You're correct, Sin. What should I plant with my pips? I have mealwood, mealwood, and mealwood. I will go with mealwood then, probably. We tried mealwood, yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. We have our bottle empty here. We have uh, rotten sleet wheat grains right here. We probably have nowhere to put this stuff though, do we? No, we do. Okay. So let's bring some water over. Just water, enable auto bottle level 9 or priority number 9, better to say. And then let's turn this here to everything. We're going to take everything out of here. Let's set up our... Um, Convey rail thermal sensors and other stuff like that. Let's see, it didn't freeze immediately, so that's very good. Apparently we took enough uh, cold out of uh, this one tile of granite right here. Because that is something that does like to happen quite a lot, as a matter of fact. Uh, that you have this one granite tile in here in like a cold area, and it's at like negative 30 degrees, kind of like this one right here. You pour water on top and it immediately freezes. So yeah, there's that. 
thankfully this time we were saved from this problem. And right here we have a 30 tiles. We want to have kind of like on cold yellow about, about 50 kilograms or so in that thing. Here we have, let's see, again, it's kind of moving around just under 50 kilograms per tile. That is what we want to hold true. Basically for every one of those version three uh, volcano tamers, uh, 50 kilograms is a good number to have and you should never have a problem with it. So we have here a 30 tiles um, down here on the bottom though. And pay attention we have 10 tiles well that makes the math easy let's see yeah can you bring us a little bit more than five grams though that would be nice you have access to plenty you have 2.2 tons in here come on where did you find those 15 grams you just put in there since i uh, gotta say i like the beauty reviews well, I do appreciate it, though. <laughs> I have a DLC colony approaching 13k cycles and a base game colony over 9k cycles. I'm experienced in the mid to late game stuff, but need to work on the beginning. <laughs> That's insane. I don't think my PC will handle 13k cycles. Yeah, you need a beast for that thing. That's for sure. 250C is the output, the Ignis rocket is at 30, we already got past that, I'm also busy with the base game, almost on cycle 800. Uh, can I use steel for the radiant pipes to cool the carbon dioxide? I mean, yeah, sure you can. Uh, nothing stopping you from doing so. Uh, let's take a look here, if you use aluminum, you have a thermal conductivity of 410. And if you use steel instead, you have a 108. So, you are basically uh, four times on the lower then you are with um, aluminum, but again, it's carbon dioxide. It won't matter, I promise you that. It's totally fine. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Milano is like 1981 to 1996. It's something along those lines, I believe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. My sips are millennials, I think, but they are barely, they turned two in the year 2000. <laughs> Pretty sure to make some Gen Z. <coughs> Depends where you look, but most say 81 through 96. I mean, I'm counted as a millennial born in 83. And I guess they are C, but if that's so, uh, we would have a new co uh, cohort already. Good grief. Yeah, not entirely sure. I just know I'm I'm a millennial, no matter at what scale you look at. And that is okay. <laughs> the first designs are not working. They're currently in a meltdown. <laughs> That's what we have the sandbox for. Uh, when I made my tutorial videos for taming and whatnot, I had a lot of meltdowns. You know? There was a lot of trial and error involved. And then, you know, having the game run at 10 times speed and go to dinner, come back two hours later and take a look at it again. And then hoping that nothing broke. <laughs> 160 kilograms per tile is more than sufficient. Gonna get rid of it. So, once again, we have a total of uh, 30 tiles that we have to cover. We have about 150 kilogram per tile on the bottom, which will be divided by 3, which should get us just above um, 60, uh, sorry, just above 50 kilograms per tile, which should work just fine. I would really like to get this thing here started. That would be nice, that would be a good stopping point for today as well, honestly. Let's close it off. And this thing right here is still idle. It is going to erupt. Um, I need to turn this pump here on before I do anything else at all. Uh, let's get this through here. And then while we are pumping out, I also want to, in F6, grab us some of that sweet, sweet polluted water. I'm going to just come up and to the top. 
that should get it in currently this sensor here is set to above six degrees i'm gonna set it to above 500 uh, just so we don't turn this thing here on yet i don't want any steam in here yet that is highly important uh that is highly highly important uh, as long as the gas pump is running we can do that once we are past the point where we have our um vacuum established not a steam turbine once that is done we can close this here off that's going to be done we're not going to put any liquids in here or anything uh the oxygen around here the atmosphere is totally fine speaking of it though how is the slime lung looking already getting a hell of a lot better most of the areas that we were concerned about are now done for so that's good and um, probably should go ahead and dig up the polluted dirt and stuff so we don't have constant outgassing all over uh, the easiest way to do that is probably just put it into the water down here on the bottom. Let's build us a couple of storage bins, not for the ice. Uh, once again, that is going to be for a polluted dirt and stuff like that. This dupe here doesn't look too good. How are you doing, bears? Not entirely sure. Oh, contact with slime lung. That's probably why you're hopping along here like you're dying. We need to see here uh, dirt. We're going to put the uh, polluted dirt in there. We're going to put mud in here. Polluted mud. All that kind of good stuff. Everything that's laying around. And we're going to put it to a relatively high priority. So whenever the dupes have nothing else to do, I want them to grab all this stuff off the floor and get rid of it ASAP. You probably have more than those two bins, so we will have to expand it. But for right now, it's okay. All right, the pump is pumping. Very, very good. This thing here is currently rising pressure. Once that is done, I think we will use the opportunity and try to get in there, dig up this tile right here, and then go for it, as in analyzing it as quickly as we can. So, uh, let's put that up there with a number nine priority. Also this year, analyze number nine the moment we have it. I need you to analyze right away. As a matter of fact, we're going to go a step further. Wait, you're still complaining? I thought you were just erupting. I guess we will find out. You here, number nine. And build me this wonderful piece right here. I really hope Barris is up to the job to get this here done. Uh, before it erupts again. That would be a neat. We did build this thing out of steel, did we? That is important. Steel, 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 and uh, this one here doesn't even need to be steel. This one here not either. It's okay, though. Better one too many than one not enough. It's all good. All the stuff here is going through. And let's take a look at our automation real quick. Right here, we are saying, um, go around... If the temperature is above 200 degrees. So if you're above 200, get up and around, which we are not. So it should theoretically feed it all back down. Uh, but it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Oh, what am I missing? You should send a red signal. Uh, you should send a green signal if you are above 200 degrees. Oh, we don't have an output. <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. Uh, let's go through here. All the way through here. That's going to be a lot to build for the dupes. The two dupes that we still have, to be very precise here. Uh, let's come down a notch here. There we go, that should be reachable. All right. That's good. Sin says, great stream beer. Appreciate that, Sin. Thank you very much. And Chase says, um, that pump won't vacuum out the right side because there is a liquid lock. Oh, you meant in here. Yeah, I, I was aware of that. I was just waiting for this thing to stop. So we, uh, we can hopefully analyze it as quickly as possible. Even though Barris here doesn't really seem up to the task. 
Uh, Barris, can we do you anything good to uh, help you out here? Unfortunately, this here doesn't give us any science and it will put you above the morale threshold. We need to be a little bit better to those dupes over here pretty soon, I think. Um, generally speaking, though, they're okay. It's actually a good thing that currently our conveyor rail is full to the actual brim. That means when the gold volcano here erupts, it will fall straight into the water. And the water here will hopefully, uh, hopefully suck up that kind of um, heat in no time without actually becoming steam. So we may be lucky here. We do have the water available for cooling though. It's coming in. So that's also very good. Let's take another look into our mini pod. A hundred kilograms of aluminum ore. <laughs> That's going to be helpful. And we never unlocked another blueprint. That's right. I completely forgot about it. Print it. A denim jacket. Really? And we have another one. Shouldn't that have been our last one? If I'm not completely wrong. How is that not our last one? We are, that was the third one, correct? I guess we will uh, unlock another one. Maybe my counting's off today. Some lime glovelets. Risk coverage is so overrated. Because I didn't stream last week. Did he just summon 100 kilograms? Yes, I sure did. And apparently we also have a, uh, um, a vole here that is just digging around. That is okay. We already have a nice storage of hydrogen up here. These things here have been eating out of here, whatever was in here. So. <laughs> did Doc finally get his hat? Yes, I did forget his hat earlier. I'm so sorry, Doc, if you're still here. I did forget your hat. Are we out of plastic or something? I thought I brought a bunch over. We still have 1,800 kilograms, so... The dupes are just deciding to do something else first. Oh, yeah, the conveyor rail. Come on, Barris. Get it done. Let's take another look here. Need to get Discord out of the way again. We have another new member on Discord. Welcome, Nifx. Or however you will pronounce it, I guess. Either way, welcome to the Discord channel. How are we looking in here gas-wise? Oh yeah, almost there. Come on, bears. Have at it. I know you're cold, I know you're hurt. But I need you to pull through on this one. I can't change my name on the Discord, so I guess it's Nifx over there. <laughs> that is totally okay. A lot of people in here actually have different names on YouTube uh, than they have over on uh, Discord. Right, Jay? Or should I, or should I say words, words, words? <laughs> I didn't know for the longest time that that's you, Jay. Not gonna lie either. Okay. Does this here work? It should. We have gold in here at 400 degrees, but our water here should be able to soak up a lot of that heat, I hope. Without becoming steam, preferably. I'm also going uh, going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this pump here back off. We have now plenty of polluted water over there. We don't need any more, that's for damn sure. So he made it about, I would say that's maybe 40% through. Uh, in one in, in one eruption, so that's good. Gas masks, mi gas masks might be useful sent from Coldier. Yeah, we will do that for right now, though. We're going to be okay. We're only at 37 degrees water temperature. We're fine. We can survive a couple more eruptions without anybody getting hurt badly. Uh, I think we are okay. M shift plates also at 37 degrees. All good. We 
can set your name specifically for an individual Discord server uh, by, selecting, uh, by selecting edit server profile or something like that. But only if the server admin allows it, which beer has not. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. So that is something I can certainly look into. That is most definitely something I'm, I would be happy to look into, yeah. Not right at this moment. I will do that either after the stream or tomorrow, but um, I'll take a look at that, guys. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'll make a post on a Discord, just in the general channel or something, if I figure out what the hell I missed up there. Oh yeah, Brandon's hard at work on the conveyor rails. And vacuum is also achieved, so we can also go ahead and get rid of this gas pump right here. In F7, uh, we can rip out the pipe, the vent. And of course, in F2, uh, we definitely don't need this random wire going everywhere. I was about to say, people change their names all the time on my Discord, so I don't know. I mean, I don't have a problem with that at all. Actually, people do change their name. Yeah, you know. Hold on one second. You should be able to change your name. Um, if you have watched any of my shows, or any of my shows, <laughs> any of my videos, uh, then you should have seen uh, Chemster, I'm sure. Uh, Chemster is uh, a really funny guy on Discord because he watches my videos with subtitle and every time I say Chemster, the subtitle is auto-generated and the auto-generation has no idea what Chemster means. So every time a new version of uh, Chemster comes up in the auto-subtitles, he changes his name on Discord <laughs> to whatever the hell uh, the auto-subtitle came up with. So it should be possible to change your name on my Discord. Okay, so the gold is coming out now, and it's about to erupt again. Our water temperature is at 37 degrees. Um, that is slightly a problem here. I may have to go ahead and uh, just going to snip off this thing here. Let's see if that makes it better or worse. It goes at a 96% with Barris. Yeah, Barris is not very happy right now. You will have to survive it though, Barris. I can't help you right now. You need to get this job here done and then you can chill all you want. Right at the moment, it is what it is. <clears throat> Let's see, what is your trait, Barris? Um, is that in bio? I believe it's somewhere in bio. Uh, shouldn't it be here? Am I blind? Very productive, he's a vomiter. That is, of course, the worst case scenario. A vomiter. I just need to keep an eye on him. The last 4%. Can you do this here in 4%? Please, for the love of God. Let's see. 97. Ninety-eight. Yeah, that is not gonna work. I need to take Barris, and I need to move him. Probably... What are we gonna do with him? We probably have to hold off on the entire thing and build us in... Where is that at? Is that in medicine? I believe so. A massage table. Temporarily, just somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And hook it up to power. And then we're gonna take Barris right... Aren't you down here somewhere? And move you straight to over here. Gonna build this here at the highest priority. 
just like the wire. And then we're gonna let him have a quick go on that thing. Don't run away again. Stay here. There you go. Just have a quick stint on that thing. Let's get you back down at least a few percentage points and then you can hop back in here. Up until then, I think our water is able to just suck it up. I at least hope so. If we can get you down to 90%, at 90% you should be able to finish it. Should be okay. Nisk said, you don't have permission to change your nickname on this server. You may have to be a, a level one. Let me check that. I'm going to give you the uh, level one engineer role. Can you now change your name, Nisk? Let's try that. That may well be that I set that up so uh, completely new people that never say anything can do that. Uh, because I have a bot set up on the server, um, you only have to write a few messages to become level one. <laughs> Mitosis says it was a bad idea to open that vent without a plan. <coughs> That's usually how it goes. That is, in fact, usually how it goes. <laughs> um, he's down to 88%. So, let's come in here, snip this off, and let's send him back to work. Once you don't have to go in and out of this area anymore... I believe you should be okay again. I just need you to finish this here ASAP, please. Thank you. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so that is apparently the reason. Um, I will leave you as a, as a level 1, but at least now I remember what I did. I mean, I set this Discord up, what, two years ago, and I haven't changed the settings since, so I honestly can't remember. Not even gonna uh, lie about it. But yeah, uh, so there's a leveling and XP system. There's an XP system um, where you uh, get XP for uh, just chatting, just doing normal stuff that you would do every day. And uh, once you get to level one, I think level two and level three are literally just cosmetics, if I remember correctly. I don't think you get any more rights or anything else. As a level one, you can post pictures and all that kind of good stuff. I used to use my name that was my username since the late 90s, but people got confused as to who I was, so I had to change my name uh, than other people could. <laughs> Lucky me, I have sand. Speaking of sand, we should be running low on sand over here, right? No? 35 tons. I thought it's worse than that. Can we also, while we are at it, rip this stuff here out, please? Water is at 55 degrees Celsius. Still no big deal. Come on, Barris. Get her done. Who is suffocating? Wait, what? What in the hell are you doing? What? Oh, what in the hell? Oh, you dupes. You gotta be choking right now. There you go. Oh, you dupes. Seriously, though, how did you get out there without a suit? What went wrong here? Can you please get back in there? I don't... Uh, it must have... I don't know. How the hell did they get out there? It must have had a tile right here, right here, and right there, and then they just jumped over it because this one here was entombed. That's what must have happened. 
That's the only way that I can explain it, how they got out there without a suit and almost died. Oh, the stupidity. Yeah. Dupes. I don't know what else to say. They're dupes. Oh no. Where's Bears? Uh, Bears? Lay back down. We have it, though. We do have it. So we can just close it off right there. And that should be the end of it. Stress vomiting? Yeah, you can vomit down here. That's fine with me. I don't care. <laughs> Please don't build it from the inside out. Oh my god. Uh, we should be able to hook this here back up. Also the data bank should hopefully go in here. Yep, it does. And then we can go ahead once we finally have those walls here. Please build those walls. Yes, Barris. Let it all out, Barris. It's okay. The old way to make water, stress vomiting. <laughs> it's true. That is very true. Okay, and now uh, we can turn this one here to a more modest negative 5 degrees. To turn on our... Now, or maybe not. Come on, build this a bloody tile right here. There you go. Now we can actually run our thermal aqua tuner. And uh, start cooling down our water that's currently running around at 15 degrees Celsius here. So, yeah. Uh, why are you completely stuck right now? Like, what happened here? What am I missing? Oh, you got stuck. Oh, because of the, of the data banks. I see. You didn't like that, did you? Now you're working the way you should. Let's turn the speed up here. Uh, what's the best way, uh, what, what's the best material to use on a normal pipe if you don't have the resources to build a radiant pipe? I want to distribute some cooling. Well, if you go into your plumbing overview and you just grab yourself a pipe, you can just take a look around here, right? Um, between all the materials you have. So in this case right here, you want to have a high thermal conductivity. Um, we have wolframite here with a thermal conductivity of 15. That certainly would be good if you have it. Um, the next best thing would probably be granite right here at a 3.39. That is most likely what I would choose on a normal liquid pipe. Um, all the others are at a 2.9, 2 I guess, sandstone. Um, if push comes to shove, but granite, so it goes sandstone, granite, and wolframite in that particular order would be the best ones. <coughs> All right, the first steam has developed. Well, one more thing is, of course, left right here. We need to uh, close this off as well. Who is starving? Doc. Um, why? I still see slime lung. Where the heck do we still have slime lung? I mean, we have it up here, I know that, but... Have you been up here for any reason? Up here we still have a little bit of polluted oxygen. We can just build us another one right here and bring it down. That should take care of that problem. Um, other than that, we have a little bit up here on the top left. This we ignore completely. Oh, down here on the bottom, we have a bunch. I would do it. Probably because we still have not set up that second storage bin, and we probably need more than that. Am I going insane, or did I just hear a dog bark? Yes, you definitely heard a dog bark. <laughs> I don't have that display on my menu. Well, there's another way to look at it. Uh, so this is actually a mod. Um, I don't know what mod it is, though. I, I honestly can't remember. 
something with thermal in the name. I do remember that, but uh, I have to look it up. Um, the other problem is, or the other solution, better to say, is you can literally just take a, a, a piece right here and just build it. Build one here. Build one there. Build one there. And once you have that done, you can just go into your F6 overlay, find yourself the pipe, and then click on properties over here on the right side. And it will show you the same value. And this here is not a mod. It will show you the specific heat capacity, and it will show you the thermal conductivity. And that works for any and all materials in the game. So, um, I guess I just showed you the quote-unquote quick version. But yeah. Oh, thank God. Yes, you're normal. <laughs> I do have a uh, standard poodle. His name is a Baron. Um, and he does like to make himself heard. That is for sure. Here on the top, pressure, hydrogen gas. Unhappy, that's okay. Here, copy settings to everything. I think I got everything. Is there anything else? I have mud, I have polluted dirt in here, right? Mud, polluted dirt. I guess we can put rot pile in here as well. Um, let's set it to all. And we should be good. Our gold volcano is now doing its due diligence. It's, uh, the Sun Echo Tuner is, of course, still running right now. Probably not for too much longer here. And this thing here... will go dormant in 22.6 cycles, so we are going to extract a bunch more gold out of this thing here. 327 grams per second on average. That is not too shabby, I would say. Alright, I mean, we are looking really, really good now. Um, it took forever to build this thing here, I feel like. Actually, I know that it took forever because we have been here for... Let me take a look at my OBS. 7 hours and 11 minutes. But, yeah, we finally got it done. And I still think that this thing here is, uh, is pretty neat. Because you can basically tame anything like that. Anything that has an, a liquid output can be tamed with the same method here. So... And as long as you're meticulous enough, it is uh, pretty simple to build. I mean, you don't really need too much. You don't need any fancy materials or anything. As long as you have a few hundred kilograms of steel laying around, you are golden and ready to go at any point. Next activity in 5.6 cycles. Uh, probably should have taken another look down here. That thing's probably at 400 degrees now, isn't it? Uh, not exactly 400, but it's nice and warm. Uh, our pump is also pumping for nothing. That's the problem if you have so much power that it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you just stop caring. <laughs> um, but we should probably go ahead and dig ourselves a little bit further in this general direction here. So let's just go straight through here, too high, and let's see where we end up. All the way through, this is solid crude oil, this is solid crude oil. I don't want to dig up a single tile of solid crude oil. I don't see one. Just gonna get over here real quick. I want to see what's there. And then we are going to call it a day here. Here we have carbon dioxide stuck, which doesn't really allow the solid crude oil here to melt. So we need to get rid of it in one way or another. And the easiest is to go up. You know, there's zombies for still over here. Really? Okay, absolutely negligible. The cold is killing the last few germs right now. There's nothing else we have to do. Uh, completely, complete self-annihilation. So that's pretty easy and straightforward, thankfully on Rhyme. If in doubt, just freeze it to death. Okay, so we found the edge on the right side. That's good. So there are a couple more pieces up here on the right, and then the big chunk right there. And that is the end of it. Very, very good. Uh, let's dig one higher so the uh, carbon dioxide can escape and our oil can actually pro uh, properly flow in. And then on the left side right here. Trying to get through here as well somehow. Um, let's build our liquid tepidizer a little bit further up. 
Let's bring the power wire through here as well and rip the rest out that we don't need anymore. There we go. See if we can get that done real quick here. Once the tepidizer is up and running, this stuff here should be evaporated in absolutely no time. So next time around, I uh, definitely want to do something with this oil. No, we are not just digging around for the fun of it, <laughs> even though it currently uh, definitely looks like it. But there, there is a method to the madness here. Uh, the question is just what is the method based on how much madness we have? So we will see how that goes. But that is the plan for right now. I, again, I don't know yet exactly how we are going to do it or better to say where we are going to do it. I have a pretty good idea how are we are going to do it. But yeah, we're starving again. Doc, what is your problem? All you have to do is walk down here and get yourself some food. Chill out. And we have $2 from FIFO. Thanks for the great series. Thank you very much for the $2. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I'm, gra and I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, for Rhineland says, Chi Chi will try to post in the next day is the design of the volcano heat battery. But at the moment, it's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, that's how it usually goes, right? You're not trying to build the most efficient version right away. You're trying to build something that works, and then you're trying to minimize it. Uh, that's at least standard proce a procedure. Sin says, you are awesome, FIFO. Sin, you are 100% correct. He definitely is. And so are you, by the way, Sin. Thank you for all your donations. I, I like I, uh, As I like to say, you're completely insane, and I love it. When, life's, when life gives you gators, make Gatorade. In this case right here, if life gives you crude oil in absolute unlimited un abundance, make petroleum out of it. So that's the plan. Uh, right here, let's dig all the stuff here out. I just want to see the left side. That's basically uh, all that I have on the agenda for today. Once I see exactly what's going on over the, on the left and how much more, more bloody um, oil we have left to melt, uh, we will call it a day. Just need to get through here a couple more pieces again. I don't want to dig them up. As soon as these here are molten, which should happen in seconds, we are good. <laughs> and Redip says, that's a bit of oil you got there. That's an understatement if I've ever heard one. The entire bottom of the base is full, which is uh, why I'm wondering where exactly am I going to build my bloody petroleum boiler because everything's already full of crude oil. So I first need to kind of like find me a place and pump the oil out or something. Yeah, something along those lines will have to happen. Come on, heat it up. The oil is at 1920 degrees, so it will go through here like a hot knife through butter. No problem at all. Once we have these last few pieces here molten up, uh, we can just go straight over here. Something along this line right here is what I would like to do. I feel like that might take some time. Going to need a few pumps. <laughs> Probably, yes. Probably, but first we do need some kind of empty space here. If we like it or not, that has to happen. On the bright side, though, it will come with a uh, built-in vacuum because it's already covered with oil right now. So if we just build any kind of like a uh, wall around it, like um, something like this here, let's say, ignore the pump here. Let's say there are walls right there. If I pump this out, what's left over is a vacuum. So definitely not the worst thing in the world either. Let's build our way up to right there and come straight over. None of this is frozen crude oil, right? No? Good. And then in F6, we are just going to take this pipe right here and we are going to... I don't know. Doesn't matter too much, really. Just come along here with it. Because we are going to do the exact same thing again. We are just going to build along here, straight through. I'm gonna come up here. Then gonna go all the way into the corner and build us a liquid vent. We're just going to pump the hot oil from the left over here to the right, drip it on top of the solid crude oil, 
to get it to melt. A very, very simple procedure. Maybe you here can go chill out now for a little bit, though. You like that's slightly uncalled for right now. Let's see, we don't need any more either. Is everything reachable? Yeah, looks like it. Good. And over here. So everything's gone. The dupes just need to dig through here and we can see what's going on. Just need to vent all that lava into space. <laughs> I guess that would be a, a valid idea, Sin. Way to see that or learn about democracy, that's right. <laughs> um, yes, I pump out the oil. I'm now busy to get my magma power. Yup. Definitely. Which is really nice because eventually if you like dig into this area here and actually use the heat from the magma, it will become igneous rock. It just freezes, so eventually the entire bottom here will be frozen. And there are two more volcanoes. Look at that. Wouldn't you look at that? There are two full-blown volcanoes down here on the ground hidden. Interesting. Alrighty then. Uh, show me where cover a vent to not die for high temp. You mean how to cover a vent and not die to high temperature? I mean, it's pretty simple. You just put a uh, insulated tile around it. Preferably two layers if you're worried about the heat and call it a day. Easy. This is also more magma than oil? Yes. It is. We will see. We have a bunch more shit to melt around here. Everywhere. 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 Oh, God. Literally everywhere. Everywhere I look is solid frozen crude oil. It haunts me in my sleep at this point, I believe. So, yeah. All right. But I think uh, let's go right here. Cycle 420. Literally. Look at that. And today is 420. Isn't that something? <laughs> okay. Right here. We have all this good stuff going on. We have a plan for next time around. We will have to find a way to convert our crude oil over to petroleum. There are several ways that we can do that. We are already using one of them, which is an oil refinery. We're going to do something slightly more fancy than that, though. Uh, today, we finished up our um, minor volcano right here. And you know what, just for the fun of it, let's let it run one more time so we can see this thing here one more time erupting before we call it completely a day. But I think that was a pretty nice build here. Like I said, I've never built this before in an actual game, life or not life. Uh, only ever something similar, at least the top part here in, um, in Sandbox. Down here on the bottom, that was more or less improvised to see where the hell it fits in. But I think we did a pretty decent job here. And right now the magma comes out, and it just turns back on like nothing has ever happened. That's... That's pretty neat. Not gonna lie about it, I like this a lot. Idea, open up the magma biome and let the crude oil do its thing. Uh, no. <laughs> If you guys want to, though, we could save. And we could dig in there real quick to end the stream and see what happens. How do you feel about that? Should we just send a dupe down here and just dig straight down and see what happens and not use that as our next save file when we start again? Let me know in the chat. Mitosis says, I am dumb. No, you're not. You just made a little mistake, and that happens, and that is part of the learning process. Uh, the right thermo aquatuna is still connected, by the way. The right thermo aquatuna. I don't know what we are talking about here. Sorry, Kionis. No idea. Um, if you got any machinery that needs a loop, you got it covered. Yup. Plenty of that. WD-40 is going strong here, that's for sure. Uh, yes, but it will take 5k cycles or more to, uh, to magma to igneous rock. All of it. Yes. All of it for sure. 
But to actually get, let's say you dig into right here, to get this here to turn uh, from magma into igneous rock, actually doesn't take very long. Uh, and then the next two tiles take a little bit longer, and then you can dig one further down, and so on and so forth. But yes, it does take an insane amount of time. You are 100% correct with that. Dreadup says, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> OM, OMG, please. Um, obviously, yes. Let's see for science. Okay. All right, you got me. Let's just uh, speed up our game real quick. And right here, we are saving in cycle 421. That's the autosave. And I'm going to save it as a lucky or luckless sewer number eight. And going to, not the main menu, resume. And this right here, we're going to go to options. We're going to go to game. We're going to say never to autosave frequency. So we don't have any, or I don't have any more autosaves that I have to delete later. And I say, we are going to go with a ladder down here. Just going to make it too wide. We are going to come with our ladder here, straight down. And our fire pole while we are at it. And maybe a third position over here on the left somewhere. Might as well, I figure. Right here. Dig straight down, dupes. You will need a ladder or you will complain. The ladder will melt too, but it's okay. All right, dupes. Let's get it done. We will see if we can get a great finale here. And we will see how quickly our entire base will be covered in bloody sour gas. <laughs> uh, just so you have a, a before and after comparison, I guess we can go straight to gases. That is what it looks like right now. Carbon dioxide everywhere. Uh, we will see if it still looks like that here in a few minutes. It's already starting to produce crude oil and sour gas. We didn't even make it all the way down there yet. Not even close, actually. Same goes for over here. Uh, just from the temperature of our abyssalite here alone, that is enough to already create sour gas in here. We are going to take our fire pole and we are going to make it out of steel. And we're going to come lower. We're going to take our ladder and we're going to make it out of obsidian and we're going to go lower. We will need... No, that should work, actually. Well, the sandstone will, of course, melt. Sour gas is happening. Temperature is drastically increasing. Surprise, surprise. You could have seen it coming. Have a little bit of sour gas right there. Kind of stopping the magma from directly touching it. Well, let's tell the dupes to come down here. We will have some dead dupes here probably in a second, but that is totally okay. Our ladder right here has to be built out of obsidian or it will melt. Here we have a natural tile of igneous rock. That didn't used to be there. <laughs> Maybe I should turn down the speed just a notch from 10 times. Sour gas is breathable, right? Yes. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Totally safe. All the FDA approved and stuff around here, you know? I mean, I certainly uh, don't want to hear any more complaints that we don't have enough petroleum, all right, guys? <laughs> so that is now at three times speed. It's still nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be, to be quite honest. I mean, right here, we do have a natural choke point that we more or less created, but it's still nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be. Um, and let's get us a obsidian ladder and let's plop it all the way down to the ground. And then let's get us a, a fire pole made out of steel and plop it all the way down to the ground. Over here is at least no uh, neutronium in the way like it is right here. Not entirely sure why there's a random natronium in the middle. Curious how much pressure it will create. Not a hell of a lot right now, honestly. And you can see that the entire uh, storage of crude oil here has already been heated up nicely. Over here, it's uh, not heated up nicely. Now it's hot, hot over here. 
We have a little bit of sour gas up here, though. Just a little bit. Just about a... Half a ton per tile or so. Look at what's going on down here. Jay says, oh, I was distracted. Sour gas aplenty. <laughs> It is a lot of pressure, though. 650 kilograms, and it's getting more and more. It's not going to get any less anytime soon. Let's take another look back here. And most importantly, over here. I mean, here we are literally having freaking Mason Ray here just digging down like a madman. Like, no regard for his own health. <laughs> He's like, I, I have a job to do, guys. I got it. Didn't know you were planning to break the biome. Well, you said you were distracted. Um, we made a save at the beginning of cycle 421 that we are going to use in the next stream. And we just decided to have a little bit of fun and see what happens when we take all of this bloody crude oil right here and uh, put it straight into the magma and see what happens. So, yeah. So, this is what a dumpster fire looks like. You know, one accidental dick command like this and you're done for. <laughs> On my crew biome, there are tiny cave at 490 kilograms of natural gas. That's really nice. That certainly comes in handy. This here is a lot less uh, violent than I expected it to be, to be quite honest, over here on this side. Now let's keep on digging down here a little bit, huh? Let's grab us our ladder once again, made out of, out of obsidian. And let's make our way just a notch lower. And maybe right here as well. Actually, we can go all the way down here. That's not neutronium. <laughs> over here. <laughs> oh my god. 150 kilograms in F4. The sour gas. So we started this entire insanity at the beginning of cycle 421. We are about to be in cycle 424. And the first few pieces of sour gas just made it up towards the bottom of our base. So it actually took like three cycles, three full cycles to get somewhere. And Durf is here saying, finally made it to your stream life. I really appreciate you joining in. You're just at the very, very tail end here. Uh, I've been live for 7 hours and 30 minutes. So we are about to call it a day here. We are just currently uh, have a little bit of destruction going on. Uh, nothing too crazy. Just a tiny a little bit of petroleum. That's the new version of the petroleum boiler. Oh, goodness. So it actually drops all the way through the magma down to the floor and then comes as a uh, sour gas back up to haunt us. Crazy. Let's see. Can we dig this here out? The speedy boiler. That's right. I want to see Francis Sean do it this fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I think we all expected something more. Yeah, it is uh, more anticlimactic than I uh, figured it would be. I'm not going to lie about it. I mean, there is a bunch of sour gas in here. But at the moment, as we stand right this second, if I were to close all three of those entrances off, this would probably be recoverable. Like, at the moment, it's not really, you know, anything that would kill the base in any way, shape, or form. Would it be annoying to deal with? <laughs> Hell yes, it would be. But is it the end of the run? No. Definitely not. 
little croc here is a little bit hot around his ankle, but other than that, he's doing okay. I guess I have a few hours to catch up. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true. There are a couple of hours that you missed. But yeah. Sin is 100% correct. It is a uh, little bit anticlimactic. I expected it also to be a lot more violent, especially a lot more heat. Like, the heat is still stopping right here. Like, this sour gas here has not a chance in hell against a rhyme. At all. It's actually crazy to me. How little it does. For sour gas to become a liquid mess and be in negative 161 degrees, probably not gonna get there. Probably not gonna get there. Not even on rhyme. But other than that, it's doing not a hell of a lot. Close off pump, uh, close off and pump all the sour gas to space. Exactly. Or you can just put it into a uh, infinite storage uh, temporarily, like we have a lot of it. And then once you have the means to cool it down to a negative 161 degrees, do so, and you get liquid methane out of it. So I guess it's supposed to be a really poor conductor, isn't it? Don't know. 0 0.018. I guess you could use it as an insulator. Specific heat capacity of 1.89. That's not too shabby. Who did we lose first? Not Jay! Not Jay! Duplicants have died. We lost Jay. But we made a, we made a pretty big dent into the uh, magma area right here in our sour gas, though. <laughs> the same here, good grief. And over here, we are still boiling crude oil. But yeah, guys. I uh, do believe we did expect a little bit more from uh, from this sour gas right here. But it is what it is. That would still be recoverable without any problems. Now we know. Accidentally digging with your crude oil into a magma biome is not necessarily the end of your run. As a matter of fact, it is most likely not going to be the end of your run. It's just going to be a minor or however you want to look at it major nuisance but other than that it's uh not that big of a deal there were still natural tiles for me to dig <laughs> oh, we also lost Alfie in the process all right well guys thank you very much for joining as i said before in case you just happened to join or, or didn't hear it we are not going to continue in this state right here with all these sour gas we are going to continue from cycle 421 right before we dug in here so we're going to be back on the status quo and once again thank you very much for joining currently my plan is to stream once again next week on saturday but i may throw in a uh a little bit of a shorter stream, maybe two to three hours on this Wednesday. Don't know yet what I'm going to do, but um, if I have time, if a work doesn't uh, change my plans drastically, we should see each other on Wednesday. And if not, then definitely on Saturday. And with that, I say thank you and peace.